Another glorious day in South East Queensland. Day two of the Torium Pro CrossFit Games semi-final 2023. And the official Oceania semi-final is right here at the Torium Pro. And what a day we had yesterday. Jeremy Austin and Pip Malone with you. Thank you for joining us wherever you are right around the country. And Pip, probably not the day we expected on paper coming in, but wow, it was exciting. No, not at all. It was full of surprises. Lots and lots of great performances put on by our athletes and teams. Some surprises. We always like that on day one. Oh, I certainly do. And I think the crowd really told the story because the weather changed about 400 times throughout the day. But we had the crowd and they were building and for Friday it was a great crowd. It was for a Friday, great crowd. Traditionally Saturday and Sunday are the packed crowds, but Friday Queensland did not disappoint and they were all here. And today, no different Saturday and we're wearing pink and we are going to paint the pro pink and that's for Hannah Clark, a very special competitor down here and someone that you know from way back when. That's right. On Saturday, we paint the pro pink for small steps for Hannah and her three children. And uh, Hannah was a big part of the Queensland CrossFit community. She was also a trampolinist back in the day. So we paint the pro pink for Hannah. Alia, Leanna and Trey losing those four a couple of years back. And we remember them today by wearing pink and the whole crowd's going to be wearing pink as well. Team competition. We didn't expect Tori Mayhem to be where they were after test one. And we got a bit of a surprise, but we really shouldn't have been surprised with Coach Kobe Mitchell saying that 6-4 Army Endgame, we're going to take it out. Not at all. 6-4 Army Endgame came out test one and did exactly what their coach said they were going to do. They dominated and took that clean sweep away from Torian Mayhem. Brandon Swan struggled a little bit on test one, but he bounced back test two. But the 6-4 Army Endgame, Team Pieta, Kendall, Clint, and also Kelly Benfi, our US athlete from Milwaukee, just putting on an absolute show for the crowd. PFC 3076, half the team from our side that have been to the games. But test one belong to the 6th Wall Army. Oh, and Kendall, take a bow. I'm excited to see the battle between 6-4 Army and Torian Mayhem on day two and the performances we're going to see for that third spot also. Nice and tight on test two and they went and I thought they were pacing a little bit Torian Mayhem at the start but they really ramped things up and took the lead and by the end of test number two they were only about five reps short of where the test record currently stands for AB CrossFit Mayhem. Their standings for our teams after the first day in the first two tests of competition here at Victorian Pro. 6-4 Army Endgame with that 10-point lead of Victorian Mayhem. Expect that to juggle around a little bit, but that third important bubble spot, this is where teams are going to make a move today. And there's a little bit of a gap between PFC 3076 and Concept Crew. Concept doing a pretty good job and they're down from your way down in Newcastle as well. Yeah, that's right. Concept crew flying the Newcastle flag and sitting on that bubble spot in fourth place. Lots of pressure on third and fourth place, but we're going to see some great performances. Women's competition just as exciting and this is probably the biggest division that I'm excited to see because we don't know who's going to qualify. And test one was absolutely brutal. Oh, test one did not disappoint at all. And Caitlin Van Zeel, wow, what a fit lady. She came out here as the number one ranked athlete after the quarterfinal. And she showed everyone why. Test one was hers for the taking. Dominant from the beginning all the way to the end. What is she going to do on day two? I think she's going to be hungry for it for another event win. Well, you think you put a target on your back coming in as the number one qualifier after quarterfinals. I think she's just silenced a lot of her critics and gone, okay, here I am. Test two was where it was for me because I wanted to see what a fit Jamie Simmons back on the competition floor looked like. She was streets ahead of any other competitor. Oh, that's right. I think you and I were both very happy to see Jamie Simmons do her thing. And so is the rest of the world. Jamie Simmons, third fittest woman back in 2019. 
She's had a couple of years battling injury, but Tess 2 really showed that she's back in full strength. Mum, Anita, Dad, Michael here to watch on from over in New Zealand. They'd be very happy with the girl and what she's done on day one of competition. We're going to see her back on the podium across the games, if not at Victorian Pro as well. And she currently sits in second on 180 points, eight points back from our leader, Caitlin Van Zeel. Maddie Sturt, she had a great day in heat number three. She'll get bumped up to heat number four today. Emily DeRoy, apparently, Test number one was her bad event, and she finished ninth. For her to be sitting in fourth position is great. Ellie Turner wrapping things up in that fifth spot position. But keep in mind, only three spots available for the Oceania region. Men's division, crazy as well. And the guy that came in in the backfield position for Ricky Garrard pulling out does some amazing stuff and finishes at the top of the leaderboard for test number one. Zach Thomas, I was absolutely blown away with his time of 21.51. Oh, the men were just a complete surprise to me. Zach Thomas really was a cat among the pigeons in heat number one. Just outstanding. It is not often that you see a top time from the first heat stand, and it, he was unbeatable. We got the time through, 21.51. Like, that's a test record worldwide. Okay, that's good. No one went anywhere near him. And for him to come in in that backfield position, and they do a bit of training together down in Wollongong, but Zach Thomas was really good. We go fast forward to test number two. Jay Crouch comes out of the gates very hot and really plants his foot, puts his flag in the sand and says, hey, you young boys, I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, Jay Crouch looked so good on test two. He had a, a bit of an upset at the end of test two, just copping some no reps. He still managed to redeem himself and hold on to the positioning that he needed in the test. But he's just so cool, calm and collected. I love to watch him compete just for his composure alone. Last year's champ doing all the things he needs to do. Bailey Martin, the Teenage Games competitor. He wants his first open ticket to the games and he came out of the gates hot in this one. And he made sure he put the hammer down and finished with 100 points in test number two. Followed closely by Pete Ellis for the bookends. Pat Rafter Arena doing the job with the Prince of the Pacific in the middle. One guy who's not too far out of contention either is that guy, Jake Douglas. Zach, four point lead on Jake Crouch. Riley Smith doing well in heat number three throughout day one of competition. Bailey jumping into fourth. Will Carney coming in as our one of our qualifiers at the top of the leaderboard after quarters. Looking pretty good as well. Jake Douglas, Zane Jellaby Healy as well, finishing in second in test number one. Doing very well. Flying the flag for Western Australia as well. Exciting day here, Pip. The breeze has started to pick up a little, even though the sun is shining here at Pat Rafter Arena. We've got a magnificent day coming up. The whole crowd here is going to be covered in pink. I can't wait to see a packed arena today. Oh, Saturday at the Torium Pro is always something really special. We're all in pink and it's always moving day traditionally as well. Lots of surprises. I can't wait to see what the athletes are going to do. Hold on to your hats, people. Day two of the Torian Pro coming to you right now. Torian Pro, an official 2023 Noble CrossFit Games semifinal, is brought to you by The Wildlife. Discover what you're capable of at thewildlife.com. Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Pro, don't weaken. And go wide. The mobility app designed for athletes. Day two. Victoria Pro, Pat Rafter Arena. Jeremy Austin, Pip Malone, Caleb Anfield with you. And as far as arenas go, Pip, I don't think you get much better than this. Uh, Pat Rafter Arena is really something special, especially on a Saturday when we paint it pink. I have plenty of pink splash across our competitors, our judges, volunteers, even our seats are painted pink here today. And we are getting into the first of our tests for day two of competition. It is test number three. 
Team test three, 400 meter run, 10 dumbbell bench presses, 15 unbroken single leg squats on one leg, 15 unbroken single leg squats on the other leg, three handstand pirouettes, and they have a 16 minute cap. You make it sound so easy. So roughly we're talking about four minutes per athlete. And if you're sitting on that time, you know you're gonna get out of the time cap, barring a few little glitches that may jump in. Yeah, that's right. The athletes will be completing this test. Female, male, female, male. Not an easy test at all. We've got some pretty decent dumbbell bench presses. 27 kilos or 60 pounds. We've also got some technical gymnastics, handstand pirouettes. I'm really excited to see this movement here this weekend. Adrian Bosman starts programming the semi-final because it's now programmed right across each semi-final and just throwing something different in every single time. Absolutely love it. Heat list for the start of competition for teams for Test 3. Steel Coast from Newcastle in lane 3. Creative from Melbourne in lane 4. Botany from Sydney in lane 5. And Picton MTRS lane number 6. Underway. We talk about Saturday, the middle day, some other semi finals around the world, and now got four days of competition, but they've still got a middle day that they are competing. And it's tagged, and it's very cliche, and it's a moving day, but it happens every single year. And we've got points on the board today. We've got 200 points for the team, we've got 300 points for the individuals. Anything to go by last week in North America East, the leaderboard is just going to be shaken up so much in the next couple of hours. Oh, that's what I love about the sport of CrossFit is I don't think there's any other sport out there where there is a day of competition that's traditionally known as moving day where you just have such a shake up of results. The recipes for success thanks to RP Strength. Recipes for success. Team member order, very important what order your team members go. Strong handstand position on those pirouettes and fast transitions. Helen Matushka about to finish off on that run. We'll get a first look at what's happening on the bench. And if we rewind time back to last week, athletes getting a taste of the dumbbell bench. Something that I had a little bit of a play around with last week once the test got released. And I love a bit of bench press, don't get me wrong. Oh, you do. The dumbbell bench was annoying to pick up off the ground each time. So dumbbell bench press, look, arguably some people find it harder, some people find it easier. The women have got 60 pound dumbbells or 27 kilos each hand, so not light at all. The men will be using 90 pound dumbbells or 41 kilos in each hand. Nasty. And just getting it up off the ground into that starting position is the first problem. And the third member of our broadcast team, Kayla Banfield, joining us for the first time today. Kayla, good morning. Good morning, Jeremy. I'm just freezing myself down here on the competition floor. You know, one of the great things of the open air arena down here in Brisbane is that we get to experience the weather in all of its glory. And this morning we are at a chilly 15 degrees, which is actually a little bit warmer than yesterday. It's roughly 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Although yesterday we had quite the change of season, so I'm hoping that we stay nice and warm today. Another thing worth noting on the competition floor, you mentioned, Jeremy, there is pink splashed everywhere. So. Good luck referring to teams today by saying the team in the pink. You guys are going to have to come up with some new ways to identify our athletes today, I think. Kayla Matushka. They call her Tush. And she goes by Tush. She's been on the floor. She was here last year as part of Freezing Hot, part of their team, joining Steel Coast CrossFit this season. What about taller athletes? And talk to me about single leg squats and distance of your limbs because the taller athletes you've obviously got to go a little bit further well the single leg squat is looking a little bit different this year we have seen previously that the athletes are able to alternate legs but this year they're not allowed to put that foot down they're staying on one leg 
and they're not allowed to put that foot down in between reps, just adding that little bit of complexity. That really slows it down because they have to balance and make sure that they stay on that one leg. And balancing when you're tired is hard. Exit MTRS. It's Caitlin Porter. First to kick up. And the pirouettes, the first time we're going to see them, Pip. And as a former gymnast, yourself, another aspect that we add to the mix, we just challenge these athletes and go, hey, here's something else you're going to play with. Look, we're going to see so many different techniques used for this handstand pirouette. And if there's any gymnasts watching, it might not look like exactly how you would do it in gymnastics, but these athletes, a lot of them have never done gymnastics before. And CrossFit is their exposure to it. Now we're talking about split times, and they've got a 16 minute time cap. So approximately four minutes per athlete. Caitlin Porter comes in at about roughly 4.17. Dylan Seely now onto the Assault Air Runner. Making sure every team member gets as many reps, meters, whatever it might be in that time cap, if not finishing. Yeah, that's right. We will see some different strategies used by these teams, but I'd say a lot of the teams are going to have their athletes that are really fast on this test, probably finishing out strong and trying to make up time. The single leg squats have really slowed the athletes down this year. Just that element of one leg at a time, no foot on the ground. I'll tell you what, Pip, this is not my jam. <laughs> <laughs> but you remember, way back when, Kathy Sergi finished out for Botany. Think way back when, when handstand walking first got introduced and the level of progression. And then it's, hey, we're going to do some obstacles. We're going to go up and down ramps and stairs. And then we're going to do some P-bar stuff. How complex are we going to get? Oh, as an ex-gymnast, I love it. I love that CrossFit is evolving and we're adding to the complexities, especially the gymnastics movements. Let's head down to Kayla Banfield. Just wanted to point out just how important it is for our athletes to stay warm. In these tests, we've got lots of different ways that the athletes are starting. In this particular test, you know, we're six minutes in and some athletes haven't even started yet. They've got to factor in 15 minutes of corralling and then also now potentially another six to 10 minutes of just standing there waiting for their partners to finish. And if you head over to the start line, you might see a few athletes doing some pistols. I actually saw one of the athletes doing some sprints. So he was doing some uh, back and forward shuttle runs just to make sure that they stay warm. Thankfully, they're starting on the runner, which is a nice way to warm up, but it's something that the athletes have to factor in that they don't get too cold before that event starts. Yeah, exactly what Kayla was saying about staying warm, especially this sort of test three, where we do have some more technical movements, handstand pirouetting, not something you want to do on cold shoulders and heavy dumbbell bench press. So super important that you're staying warm. Dylan Seely. Thankfully, they've got a really big box to walk around in. I'll be using the entire Pat Rafter tennis court floor, I reckon. You've got your little circle there that they're telling you to move around in. That's tough. And two down from Picton NTRS. Jennifer Vong now getting underway. Now, timing. We talk about it. Spot on eight minutes. We're at the halfway point of time cap. We're at the halfway point of their team. Yeah, fast transitions between team members. James Noonan now moving forwards onto the dumbbell bench. 
And if you're looking at this from home or around the world, or wherever you're joining us, and they look really big, you know, like those old plastic weights of those old school weightlifter guys used to be in the circus. They're similar to that, but they're just really heavy. Yeah, that's right. The males have 90 pounds each dumbbell, 41 kilos each hand, and the women have 60 pounds, 27 kilos each hand. That'd be more than what some of these girls weigh in total. Jake Hall last. Pirouettes. One of our oldest competitors in the field. And when I say oldest, I mean most experienced. Jake, done. Two down. Kate Gordon now on two. You talk about it. Experience not just in competitive, but talking level one CrossFit seminars. She's your girl. If you haven't signed up for a level one CrossFit seminar, get onto the link now crossfit.com and go to seminars and sign up for your level one you are going to learn a bucket load kate gordon's been around the seminars for a long time and just around crossfit in general for a long time lots of experience francesco Paco, he's there just onto the right hand side from Steve Botany. James Newton in the back left, getting through his single leg squats. 15 on the dumbbells, 10 through the single leg squats. Crossfit Botany, second hero went down. That dumbbell bench. It's just tough. Some of the individuals last week, Brooke Wells included, had a really tough time. Because it's not something that I think, I know that you do, because you think a little bit more outside the box with your training and you've got to do certain things. A lot of athletes use barbells because it's simple and easy and balanced and that sort of stuff. You throw in some dumbbells. It changes the game completely. That's right, Jeremy. Dumbbells really do show up any weakness that you've got, especially a dumbbell bench, because you have to stabilize on both sides of the body. You can't hide behind that dumbbell that is evenly distributed across both sides. If you've got an old injury or even one side that is significantly weaker than the other, it's going to show up on a dumbbell bench. It's like one arm goes up and the other one stays where it is. It's like, hang on a minute. James Noonan. It's like you got your own dance floor in your hands. Need some breakdancing music. <laughs> You'll finish this and go into a helicopter. <laughs> Kate Gordon now moving to the single leg squats. As we were saying before with the dumbbell bench about it showing up, any side that might be weaker than the other, we are going to see a lot of the athletes this weekend struggling on one side more than the other and honestly totally normal. Everybody has one side weaker than the other. Some athletes will struggle with it more than others. But that's what I love about dumbbell bench. It is so difficult. Aileen Horn moving Onto the dumbbell bench now. Jennifer Fong, Kate Gordon. We talk about gen 10 general physical skills of CrossFit as well and balance. We saw the balance yesterday with the individuals. That's right, balance, but on a single leg squat, it's not only balance, it's mobility. Having flexible ankles, flexible hips, being able to hit that full range of movement. Also while balancing because you can't put your foot down. Let's talk about position. Kate, very straight, very upright. And elite gymnasts would be going, why are you making it so hard for yourself? <laughs> Let's just add some tricks in there as well, Kate Gordon. <laughs> as a gymnast, I love to see a straight handstand. Love it. But in the sport of CrossFit, it's not always the most efficient for athletes to stay in that perfectly straight 
body line if they can't sustain it. We are going to see lots of beautiful handstands over today. But for a lot of athletes, bending those legs over does help with momentum. Reese Papworth, way too happy on that assault runner early this morning. He reckons he's a 12-year-old going on 22. Mate, I'm there with you all the way. Oh, I got one sitting right next to me here. Yeah, it's him. <laughs> Spencer's with the shirt now. First time on the Torian Pro floor. And state weightlifter as well, so barbells are his jam. Let's see if dumbbells are going to be his jam. Our last team member. For Picton SCRS, Zach McGuinness getting on. Chris Papworth about to finish off. Chris didn't muck around with that too much. On and off. He looks like the sort of guy that loves a little bit of dumbbell bench as well. Oh, just taking a minute to settle himself. Maybe went a little bit too hot on that run. Steel Coast CrossFits down there in Newcastle, the Steel City. 90 pounds, 41 kilos. And must start from the top of the movement. Come down, touch each dumbbell on your torso and then go back up. And probably something that athletes haven't practiced either is starting at the top. That's right, they're almost doing an extra rep, having to get it to the top before they start that set. The dumbbells also have to be angled off at a 45 degree angle so that that dumbbell touches the shoulders. Now we're at 30 seconds away from finishing. Heat one of test three. No wonder Reese Papworth was in a rush. <laughs> Dumbbell bench is not the sort of movement you want to do in a rush either. Trying to get every single rep squeezed out of test number three. Take the lead on the last second. And Zach McInnes. Manly trying to catch. Team. Hey. Picked an NCRS. Sealy signing autographs. The Tush did very well first out of the gate for Steel Coast CrossFit, but it was. Picked an CrossFit NCRS team. Doing a great job. And getting through everything bar the three pirouettes. As we progress through each of the heats, we'll find out how important that result's going to be. But a recap of test three, heat number one. Test three for our teams. Lots of complexity in there. Single leg squats, handstand pirouettes, our first look at those. But he, one of the teams, really impressed me on those handstand pirouettes. No one really seemed to have much trouble with them at all. The dumbbell bench press, though, I think is going to be where team members really do struggle over these next heats. Love to see a smile on the assault runner. Reese Papworth, they're looking very balanced as well. And he's got those dumbbells at a little bit of a 45 degree angle. Ah. His strategy coming into play. I thought they were just lifting weight. Heat number one for the team's test three. We have ticked that off for this morning. The sun starting to stream in here, but after arena. Heat two for the teams coming up soon.
Welcome back to Paddle Rafter Arena. We are painting the pro pink today, honor of Hannah Clark. And small steps for Hannah, great charity. Raising awareness for domestic violence and her three beautiful children, Alia, Liana, and Trey, tragically lost a few years back. You can see plenty of pink out here on the competition floor today as we hit test number three for the teams, and this is heat number two. Team test three is a 400 meter run, 10 dumbbell bench presses, 15 unbroken single leg squats on one leg, 15 unbroken single leg squats on the other leg, three handstand pirouettes, 16 minute time cap. The weight on those dumbbells, 60 pounds each hand for the women, that's 27 kilos. And for the men, 90 pounds each hand, 41 kilos. Not light by any means. Jolene Neville, I think she's pretty excited about some dumbbell bench press. Part of CrossFit Mecca, they're down in lane number two. Number one of our Kiwi teams, Aiden Poco, got the sunnies out again. And why not? A heat list for heat number two. Only three heats for our teams this morning. And a number of New Zealand teams in there, including Macron. Plus 6-4, plan B. And Papa Moa, Papa Pare in lane number eight. What about old heads, CrossFit Townsville? See if they can make a move today in lane number five. Big shout out to all the people up in North Queensland. One of our first ever affiliates was from up Townsville way. Townsville was one of the top 10 oldest affiliates in the country here. Underway for heat number two. No finishes in the previous heat. And we'll keep an eye on that clock as the four minute segments per person tick down. We saw in heat number one with Reese Papworth really getting onto that assault air runner and going for it because he was the last athlete and I'm sure they're going to have to do that to make sure they get through in time. And the recipes for success, all thanks to RP Strength. That's right, and as you were saying, team member order, strong handstand position and fast transitions are our recipes for success. The team member order, very important for getting through this test under the time cap. We're gonna see some of these athletes not go out too hard on their 400 meter run saving it up for the dumbbell bench press. And this is more like it, singing Mitai really going for it on that assault air runner. Sheree Myers yep. from Tribe. And Georgia Wellsman, she knows his competition floor as an individual last year. She is going to be the first athlete of the assault runner with Tegan Mitai down just to our left of screen. Ellie Rowan from CrossFit Townsville as well. Judges hand in here, but he's going to be Tegan first. And you go back and talk about people who have been around the game a long time. And sometimes you get these youngsters come through and they really make a splash. Athletes like Tegan, Dylan Mitoy have been around the game for a long time. Dylan actually coming up, he hasn't been in CrossFit competition for five years, and now he's back on the competition floor again. You don't lose that stuff. No, you don't. It's still in there somewhere. Obviously, you get a little bit deconditioned, but once you've got all those years under your belt, you really don't lose it. You just have to dig it back out again and start training it. We were talking about earlier the dumbbell bench and how difficult it is it does show up any weakness that you have had on one side more than the other now the important part of this dumbbell bench is not going to complete failure ellie rowan absolutely going to town in this first couple of minutes tegan not having a great time with the dumbbell bench now the strategy going in who do you put first? Look, if you've got an athlete 
that is going to really struggle on one of the movements. Probably smart to put them first so that your stronger athletes can try and make up some time. Last couple of reps for Tegan. But keep in mind, the male and female first athlete coming through are doing a different rep scheme to female and male too. Tegan now finishing up, so great job from her. She can now play a little bit of catch up. Cherie Myers from Tribe. Wow, look at her go. No problem on these handstand pirouettes and a really nice body position. She's not too arch over. Just enough to put that body weight through the fingertips so she's able to pivot. Now, Cherie Myers on screen, professional dancer. Hey, here's your dance floor. She looks very comfortable spinning around on her hands upside down. Oh, look at, oh. Wow, the balance. Oh, she'll be stoked with that. Four minutes, 10, that's not a bad split time. And big, Alessio Angelucci, games competitor. Ellie Rowan comes over to finish the CrossFit Townsville. And Alessio on the far left, a big hulking human of a man. Professional baseball with the San Diego Padres back in the day. Free Seganto off on a trot. <laughs> I love how athletes talk to themselves on the competition floor. Come on. You got this. And we were talking about not going to failure on those dumbbell bench press. That's a big part, is making sure you don't pick up those dumbbells until you're ready. Now there's an important point as well. Once you get through that first segment of the handstand pirouette, you can actually come down. Tegan doing exactly what she needs to do to make sure she gets through. Kyla McKenzie. Struggling a little bit on that bench. The pirouette and dismount. We can't dismount until you get back over that line. Important elements of this test coming up to bite some of these athletes. What we haven't spoken about yet is the fatigue from the dumbbell bench press and how that affects the handstand pirouette. All that pressure in the shoulders, if you're already struggling on the dumbbell bench, coming into the handstand pirouette is going to be burning. Tempany Hunt for EXF. Just pausing again as Alessio Angelucci from Tribe annihilating this bench on the far left at the top of the screen. Louis Foster jumps onto the assault runner as Tegan has got her last pirouette to get through. Lawyer by day, practicing handstands at night. got that really big bent over position, bent legs, but it's working for her. If that's how she can get her weight distributed to make her hands move around in the circle, then you do you. Now, cool story about Alessio. A few years back, shocked us all in the CrossFit community down here. Hodgkin's lymphoma. He goes away, has a lot of chemo, has some radiotherapy as well. Since 2017, the big man is back. And like, I couldn't be happier that he's back again on the competition floor because he has been on one hell of a journey. More on the competition floor, let's head down to Kayla. I'm standing right next to lane one, which is where CrossFit EXF is competing. And obviously no one's on the bench at the moment, but in this really close view, I just wanted to bring attention to the athlete's body when they are doing that bench press. When I tell you every single muscle in their body is working, 
I tell you, every single muscle in their body is working. This is not just a matter of strength. This is a matter of huge stability. You see their hands all the way down to their shoulders, especially their core, even to their feet is shaking to try and keep these dumbbells stable. As Pip said earlier, it's such a different game with our dumbbells compared to a barbell bench press. That's right, Kayla. Dumbbell bench press, a lot harder having to stabilize both sides of the body. It shows up any weakness, any old injuries. You see a lot of the athletes having one hand higher than the other because one's lagging behind. There's no hiding on a dumbbell bench. Georgia Smith ball now onto the salt runner trying to catch chocolate box, Mackenzie Woodhouse. And I tell you what, can't be the part, look the part. Dan Groot, really looking at the light. How do you handstand pirouette in sunglasses? We're about to find out. Also, Papa Mo are working through their handstand drills for teammate number two. Looking good here with the battle between Chocolate Box Townsville. PE teacher. Father of two, Dan Groot. There we go, Pete Blackson's going to cross the line. Second Torian pro for him. Cody Campbell joins Mackenzie Woodhouse. Mackenzie Woodhouse on the left, cross its chocolate box. Just missing out on qualifying as an individual. Crossfit Morph. And just about to finish up, and we'll see how she attacks this bench press with the dumbbells. Talk about roll back into position. You can roll back and obviously have those dumbbells on your chest. Can you roll back and keep your arms in a straight position to make it a little bit easier? Well, you could, but good luck, it's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> they have to start at the top. So you'll see a lot of these athletes bring it to the bottom first and then pressing it out, basically doing another rep. When we talked to James Newbury about this event the other day, he was wondering the same thing, if you could roll back with your arms out straight. Probably not the smartest thing to do. We might see some of the guys do it later on today, but for the most part, the athletes are going to safely bring it to the shoulders first and then press it out. I wouldn't be wanting to cop 60 pounds in the face, to be honest. Woodhouse making easy work. Ty Samuli, cross hit EXF. EXF having complete roster change this year. Most Patello injured this year, not able to hit the floor, so he's going into the coaching role. The fittest man in Tonga is on the floor dancing around on his hands. Now, Matthias has got 171 kilo bench press, so that wasn't going to be the challenge for him. Now, they've made up a heap of time. They've still got two athletes waiting. Today, Austin now putting the hammer down. She needs to move. Try and get Alex Heroini into competition before that 16 minute time cap. Mackenzie Woodhouse now onto the pirouettes. It's Georgia Smith ball. At the back of screen moves onto her second pirouette. So this will be a tight race between the two Northern Beaches, Sydney affiliates, Crosshead Chocolate Box, and Tribe HQ. And it's going to be. Tribe to get three athletes home first, which will put Tom straight on to the assault runner. Dylan 
Tai about to finish up his pirouettes. He's got one to go. And this guy, talk about being busy. He's just been prepping for the Torian Pro events. He got married two weeks ago. Congratulations to Tom and Ruby. Their three kids at Maya Mali and Samadhi. He's co-owner of Tribe. And I don't... Actually, I do know exactly why. I just got married three weeks ago. I was going to say, weren't we, we just watching you get married three weeks ago? Well, let's head down to Kayla on the floor. I just wanted to speak to the incredible programming by Boz, and especially in this particular event, because as we know, what makes a great crossfitter is how you, how good you are across all things, not just a number of things, right? And this is a great example of a well-spread workout. We've got a cardio element to start it. Then we've got a bench press, which is where our strength athletes will come out. And finally, we finish off with some gymnastics work. And so this is a great test of lots of different elements of CrossFit. And if you have one weakness, you could potentially hold up your whole team. Let's just say you get stuck on the bench press. Your team can't progress until you go through. So what great programming for our teams in this test. You gotta keep moving the goalposts every year. Keep them guessing. But just not keep them guessing, but keep them at a level where they're progressing and getting better at different skills and aspects. That's right. There is a lot of athletes out there that have been involved in CrossFit now for 10 plus years and they keep moving the goalposts. So there's always something to be better at, always something to strive for. And that's the beauty right, of our out, sport. You're never too fit, too skilled, too strong. Always something to strive for. Jolly about to finish things up for Chocolate Box on the bench. A great race between them still. Tribe HQ in lane three. Chocolate Box in lane seven. Tom Leatherby about to move forward as well. Chocolate Box, five single leg squats ahead of Tribe HQ. And splatterings of pink right across the stadium in the seats as well. Max Jolly, another of those rugby league players here in Australia going to CrossFit. Talking to him, he said he's really looking forward to a beer on Sunday night. <laughs> So are we, mate, so are we. <laughs> and this is going to be tight on time. Getting close to a time cap. And that will do us a chocolate box. Oh, so close. and Cherie very happy with the way they have gone about their business today. Yeah, that dumbbell bench seems to be slowing the teams right down. But the ladies from Chocolate Box having no problem with that bench press at all. Pete Blaxland, great yesterday. A little bit of work to do today. And let's head back to heat number two. Dumbbell bench, 60 pounds each hand for those ladies, 27 kilos. The order of athletes, as we saw, was really important to get as close to that time cap as possible. The chocolate box, just no problem at all in the dumbbell bench or the pirouettes. squats on one leg, just adding that bit of complexity to this test, the chocolate box, they were great in that test. 
Two heats down, one remaining for team competition for Test Reaper this morning. We'll be back soon. Thanks for joining us and welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena for day two of competition. We're painting the pro pink. And two great heats down already. Third heat, test number three. Team test three, 400 meter run, 10 dumbbell bench presses, 15 unbroken single leg squats, leg one, 15 unbroken single leg squats on leg two. Three handstand pirouettes, they have a 16 minute cap. Those dumbbells weigh 60 pounds each hand for the females, that's 27 kilos. And for the males, 90 pounds each hand, 41 kilos. Our test record just went off. Franco's Misfits, North America West semi-final. Beating the previous time from Crossing Krypton from North America East. Are we going to see that record fall in this heat? Our heat list for heat number three. And I am really excited to see the power struggle going on between lanes four and five. But especially those bubble teams at the back end of tomorrow that are vying for a spot through the CrossFit Games in Madison, Wisconsin in 2023 in August. Who are we going to see represented? Plenty of points on the board. One of our young teams, Jack's Pack East Tamaki. From Auckland, Zach Northling. The original Zach's pack, he's now coaching them. Had a good chat to him today. He's very happy with their progress. He said they've got a little bit of work to do. And speaking of work, let's get to our recipes for success. Thanks to Uppy Shrink. Team member order, strong handstand position and fast transitions. So let's talk team member order for a start. Do you put your weakest athlete on the bench press first? Do you put them last? The first two team members are doing certain rep schemes. The second two team members are doing a certain rep scheme. So the bench press is going to go from 10 for the first two athletes to 15 on the second two athletes. What's your strategy there? Look, for the most part, I think we're going to see most of these teams put their weakest athlete first. And by weakest, we don't mean literally weakest. It's just maybe there's a movement in there that the other team members are better at. And if there's less reps on that bench press, we're seeing that the dumbbell bench press really is slowing athletes down. You definitely want to give them less reps, save those bigger sets for your stronger athletes. Abby Osborne. One of those youngsters, 18 years of age. 
Oh, and no messing around. This team qualifies for the CrossFit Games this year. They've got a 16-year-old, they've got an 18-year-old, a 21-year-old, and the oldest is Sam Fowler, who is 25. And yes, the Fowler team name that you know about, there's Fowlers everywhere. The oldest brother, Sam, is in this team and guiding them. Imagine making the CrossFit Games at 16 and 18. That's Just crazy. Unreal. So much new young talent coming from Australia and New Zealand this year. Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Shop now, scan the QR code. Lisa Campbell, CrossFitorian. Heading things up as Barney Sykes pulls up alongside of her. Victorian Mayhem, Abby Osborne to the far left of screen. A little bit of a battle on the bench press. The single leg squats not proving a challenge at all. Alexandra Bulling from PFC, CrossFit 3076, joining them in the white to the far right of screen. Marty Sykes in the lead now. Like one rep. CrossFit play, star strength, having some issues. Brody Preston from CrossFit Concept. Trying to finish off those last two reps on the bench. In the top of the screen, she finishes up. Marty Sykes continues her progression. But keep your eye on Lisa Campbell in lane number two. She's going to go quick. Pole vaulter, ninja warrior. Oh, wow, Lisa Campbell. What is going on here? Lisa Campbell just using minimal hand movements to complete those pirouettes. Outstanding. And ahead, Torian one, Torian two. John Dunlop from the far left of the screen now on the assault runner. Joining Brandon Swan with no shirts. Swanny on a drip yesterday, on oxygen yesterday. In an absolute world of hurt. Obviously had a good rest. <laughs> Kel probably talked some sense into him overnight. Nate would have gone, hey dad, toughen up buddy. <laughs> Struggled a little bit with that sandbag, but Everybody in the field struggled with the sandbag yesterday in test one. Abby Osborne finishing up for Jack's pack. East Tamaki and Sam Fowler hits the assault runner. Alex Bullock, part of the team from 3076, coming in as our one of our top five qualifiers from the quarterfinals. Brady Preston now trying to catch her. And PFC 3076 are done. It's Tremaine Jensen with some CrossFit Games experience. Part of the CrossFit Arwa side team. Brody finishing up for CrossFit Concept crew. Jono Dunlop from Torian Black getting the jump on Brandon Swan. The position of dumbbell is important. Absolutely important. You'll see most the athletes with a 45 degree angle, the tops of those dumbbells have to touch their shoulders. Swanee's been around a while. Single leg squats are something he enjoys doing and he's very good at. This test three overall is great for Swanee. Good at bench, good at single leg squats. I don't think the pirouettes are going to be any problem for him. Lauren Fitzgerald from CrossFit Play Star Street finishing up in the background. Uh, Swanee now about Half a rep ahead of Jono Dunlop, who moved over from a hurt in the off-season. 
Because see Geo Star Strength are battling on their pirouettes. As Kendall Peterson moves forward now from 6-4 Army Endgame. Brandon Swan, the old dog. And I can call him that because I'm old. <laughs> First one through. This will be the second athlete, Victorian Mayhem. We predicted six from six Victorian Mayhem yesterday. They got bumped by six four Army Endgame. Oh, and the tight race. Oh, I'm going to give it to Torian Black. John o Dunlop, milliseconds ahead. But that won't matter on split times. It's all about the last athletes. Christy Hollard. On to the assault runner now, Ebony Simmons from Torian Black, trying to keep pace. And let's head down to Kayla. Jeremy and Pip, you spoke earlier in this heat about the importance of team order and how they send out their athletes. And something else that we have to factor in as well is that that last team member may actually not even get the chance to complete this test. We saw that in heat too. There were some athletes that didn't even get a chance to go out on the floor and you know we spoke about how important it was for them to stay warm just in case they they do go out but Pip I had a question for you if you were an athlete which you have been but an athlete on a team and you didn't get to go out and compete how would you what would you do after the test finishes would you cool down like everyone else or would you go and burn some energy Oh, certainly not going out and burning extra energy you would cool down exactly like your other team members because you've warmed up so even though you've stood out there and maybe haven't done as much work or any work at all, you just keep the plan going. You don't change it. 16-year-old Gabby Napper, 17th in the world in the 16-17 division. Worldwide, she's got a chance to go to the CrossFit Games. I didn't even know how I was functioning at 16, let alone here on the competition floor. One of those youngsters who is going to be that new brigade coming through who we're going to see a lot more of in the next 10 years. Ebb Simmons onto the bench, trying to catch Christy Hollard, who's in the background in the white and pink. A great battle, you think, going into training, Tests get released. You've got two Torian teams. You're obviously going to be doing the same thing. It's going to just depend on capability on the day. Both Torian teams going neck and neck, rep for rep. Torian Mayhem now taking the lead. So you think comparable times. You can't see it on camera, but Brandon Swan is walking up and down like a caged tiger down here in the sun. Getting a little bit antsy. I think also having your training partners out on the floor, friendly competition, hopefully friendly competition. I'm a bit the same. I'm a pacer. I've got to be walking up and down. Christy Hollard, that position of that leg out wide, enabling her to get down low. And look at that foot plant on the ground. Gymnastically, Christy. Awesome. She's on the Alliant Energy Centre floor at the CrossFit Games last year. Smashing stuff up with some gymnastic elements. And this is a quick time. 13-13 from the Francos Misfits from the North America West Semi. And Big Royce. He's going to lumber down this 400 meters and eat it up. So you think like the Jamaican sprint team and you've got your anchor legs and you've got Usain Bolt finishing off for you. If you want anyone to anchor off and finish team competition for you, who better but Royce Dunn? Oh, especially when there's dumbbell <laughs> bench involved. <laughs> You were talking before about if any of the athletes are going to roll back with straight arms. Maybe Royce Dunn will. Kelly Benby finishing up. 
So now into second place, 6-4 Army Endgame. All right, two bigger humans. Tell me there's bigger than Clint Cole and Royce Dunn on the competition floor. We're gonna have a bench off. <laughs> it's actually gonna be great. I hope they get there at the same time. They are massive. Picking up the pace a little bit. If you look at the tape marks, Pip, they're about moving at the same time. Royce getting a little bit of a lead though on Clint, but he is really hammering down. Oh, Royce. This is a warm up set for him. Making easy work, 90 pounds each hand. Torian Black have got three through. Jack Jeffries joining. PJ Tafiti from 3076 on the assault runner as Royce. Very happy to just dispense with those dumbbells. And for a big guy, Royce moves very well. That's right, he always has. I think that's what the fans love about watching Royce Dunn, is that he is one of the biggest guys out on the field, but he moves so beautifully. Great range of motion, great mobility. If you're joining the broadcast from around the country, around the world, or wherever you're joining in, thank you for joining us. But it's, you can be any size, shape, have different mobility, flexibility, it doesn't really matter. It's trying to get better at every component, make you better at life. Well, that's a test record from Franco's Misfits has been and gone, so that will hold 13-13, that's quick. And Royce will finish up about 30 seconds <laughs> later than that. 100 points again in the bag. Torian Mayhem. And have they poked the bear, the 6 4 army? <laughs> Not a good bear you want to poke. Clint Cole. And a no rep from Clint Cole, just putting his hand outside the box. So a challenge for these athletes is to stay inside that box. And it need not matter, time is very quick for 6-4 Army Endgame. Wee oui, wee! Oui. The Frenchman anchors. 6-4 Army Endgame. And 95 points six four army end game so we're gonna have a tight battle toing and throwing all weekend with these two teams who wants to grab hold of that third spot it's gonna come down to possibly PJ Tafidis 3076 well, well a Victorian black Jack Jeffrey trying to catch up some time Jermaine Jensen looks on. And Jack Jeffrey moving fast on his single leg squats. He's got some time. 30 seconds left now. Athletes sprinting on their assault runners. Jermaine Jensen trying to cheer on PJ Tafiti. Can PJ get through his last pirouette in the next? 12 seconds, 3076. They're trying to hold out fast finishing Torian Black. PJ Tafini, yes! Talk about cutting it, five. Millie seconds to spare. Torian Mayhem. 6-4 Army Endgame and PFC. Wow. A great finish for PFC. They needed to finish that. So much of a good job. But 
are they going to see the same sequence of that finish on the podium at the end of Sunday? Molly Heine, super happy with that one. I did ask her yesterday about chewing gum on the floor, and she goes, always. I don't know how you chew gum and work out at the same time. But as you mentioned, Pip, important result for PFC 3076 because they're currently in third. They maintain that all the way through. They're booking their ticket. Well, if they keep performing like that for the rest of the day, they're going to take a little bit of that pressure off coming into day three. Team competition test three in the books. Let's head down to Kayla. CrossFit Torian Mayhem, 100 points for breakfast on moving day. A lot better than yesterday. And Brandon, we saw that you were on an IV last night. How did you go yesterday and what happened? Uh, mate, uh, <laughs> just trying to keep up with these three extremely fit human beings. And I think I flew a bit close to the sun. So, um, yeah, had a couple of bags put in uh, between events. And uh, I wasn't looking to crash uh, for a little bit there. But, um, you know, you never know when your last time is going to be out here. And uh, it sure as shit wasn't ending on a, on a uh, stretcher bed, that's for sure. Got to get back out here and finish it. At least you gave it your all though, right? Uh, I definitely found my limit yesterday, <laughs> that's for sure. And Roycey, we're used to seeing you in the individual competition and now you're in a team. How has the season been for you leading up to this point? Fantastic. It's been the dream season. Uh, I get to share in the workouts every day with these guys, get pushed um, to go further. Um, you've got teammates who pick you up when you, when you don't do so well and you've got teammates who um, highlight when you have a good performance. So yeah, it's been the best year yet, I reckon. And not only do you have teammates to pick you up, but you have other teams as well. I saw you pep talking a couple of the other teams over the finish line. What were you telling them? Um, just, we're talking to our, our kind of sister team, Tori and Black, and just like telling them to keep, keep getting top five finishes, keep your head in the game. Um, they're doing awesome. And there's just such good camaraderie in this sport. I think as most people who do the sport know. And I mean, there's not any team here that I don't enjoy the company of. So it's, it's a really good vibe. I mean, we may be a little bit biased, but it's the best sport in the world, right? Best sport in the world, this is the best event in the sport. You are so right. Thanks so much, guys. Great job. Good start to day two, and we'll see you out here later. Thanks, Carol. Couldn't agree more, Roycey. The best event in the semi final series of Torian Pro and Heat 3. What a performance from Torian Mayhem. Awesome. CrossFit Torian Mayhem. Look, they gave everyone a bit of a scare in Test 1 yesterday, but. Bonnie coming out, feeling a lot better today. And look, there's no doubt left now. We may see them go five out of six. Six four Army doing what they need to do though, staying right behind them. Royce Dunn, always a pleasure to watch him move out on the floor. But PFC CrossFit, talk about under pressure, 10 seconds to go and you're upside down. Not ideal and they made it happen. <laughs> That's right. Important results for those top three and it looks like standings may stay the same depending on how the other results fall. But not too many teams getting that test completed and that 13-13 from Franco's Misfits earlier this morning in North American West what a time to beat. That's almost three minutes quicker than the time cap. Tony Mayhem, 13.54, 6-4 Army Endgame, 20.34 minutes. It was actually not as tight as I thought it was going to be for PFC. Oh, they had three and a bit seconds to spare. Torian Plack and East Tamaki Jacksman. Now that's an important one as well, because they were the top five qualifiers coming in. We knew they were going to be the five that were going to be competing for the three spots based on quarterfinals. Ooh, getting tight. East Tamaki Jacks back, 31 reps back. However, we'll see how that lays out with the other heats that went on previously. The crowd really starting to pile in, all wearing pink today in honour of small steps for Hannah. So if you are coming down today to Pat Rafter Arena, make sure you don the pink and bring your cheering voice as well. Team competition, test three in the books. We'll be back with more individual competition in just a little while.
just think it's such a cool shining light to see people that have navigated their life and still chosen to prioritize health and fitness in a way that isn't just something that's a passing interest when you're young. I think that's super powerful. I think it's really, really, really cool. And it's really important that you can look at it. I just think that's such a cool shining light to see people that have navigated their life and still chosen to prioritize health and fitness in a way that isn't just something that's a passing interest when you're young. I think that's super powerful. I think it's really, really, really cool. And it's really important that um, people can look to that and say, hey, you know what, that could be me. The intensity and the effort that the athletes bring to the test is the test. I use this analogy all the time. You have, you have a 100 meter dash. It's super compelling and super exciting, but nobody's concerned about the athletes making the distance. The challenge of the test on its face is not what makes it interesting. It is the intensity and the effort and the application that the athletes bring to it that makes it compelling. And I think that should be true for most of the events at the games. You and come, it's absolutely necessary at some times to put out a test that's a little bit beyond where the current field is and, and have them reach for that. But it shouldn't be all the time. The intensity and the effort that the athletes bring to the test is the test. The CrossFit Games are the answer to who is the fittest person on earth. And that applies to both the men, the women, age group divisions, teenagers, teams, adaptive athletes. But for any person, the CrossFit Games are the place you find out how fit you are. The CrossFit Games are the greatest, biggest stage of fitness where we find the best, most well-rounded athletes on the planet. The cool thing about the CrossFit Games is that you never know exactly what the test is going to be. So we literally test things from long to short to medium, uh, from heavy to light to no weight to odd object to traditional objects to things you may have prepared for or things you may not have prepared for. And that's literally what it is. It's a test of all of your years worth of work. I think it exposes a lot of people and, and the fittest are prepared for every element they're exposed to and the games test that. It's also a festival. It's also a great time to come and see other people engaging in a lifestyle that is supporting, embracing challenge. It's a showcase for what CrossFit does. 15 years ago, you had people that were strong or people that were fast or people that could swim. You had people that were good at the things they did, O courses, whatever they were good at and they showed up environment and you could very quickly see like, oh yeah, that's what that person's good at, but they can't do all this other stuff. And so then the world for 15 years has been doing CrossFit, it's constantly very functional, it's executed a high intensity, this thing that's just so amazing and so beautiful, but also so simple. Everybody in the room is interested in everybody else getting better. Everybody in the room is interested in, hey, it's challenging, but that's a good thing. And that's the, that's the philosophy that this community embraces. Hey, challenge is worth pursuing. Hey, it's gonna make you better. Hey, I don't know if I can do it, but it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, and that's the CrossFit Games.
Laughter Arena, day two action here. The Torian Pro, the official Oceania semi-final and part of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games semi-final series. Exciting day already with team competition out of the way for test number three. We turn our attention to the individual males. Jeremy Austin, Pip Malone, Caleb Banfield with you. And things are really starting to heat up, Pip. Just wish the weather was a little bit warmer. Uh, still a bit chilly here in Pat Rafter Arena, but it is starting to heat up. We have fire. <laughs> That's helping. <laughs> well, we have got individual test number three to kick things off for individuals for day two of competition here. Individual test number three is reps of 10 down to one, deadlifts, dumbbell bench presses and squat cleans, also known as a benchmark Linda. They've got a time cap of 17 minutes. The deadlift for the males, 295 pounds, 134 kilos. Bench press with dumbbells, 90 pounds per dumbbell, that's 41 kilos. And the squat cleans, 145 pounds, 66 kilos. And people, we talk about benchmark workouts. For those who don't know what we're talking about with benchmark workouts, Something that we can work on and test ourselves to see if we're getting better or worse at stuff. As we look at our heat list for the start of individual male competition. And we've got some fairly hefty individuals here. One guy in particular I'm going to look at is in lane six. Well, down in Christchurch, Luke Fowler. Part of the CrossFit Selwyn team last year that went to the CrossFit Games. Coming into individual competition this year. And John Champion. John Chairman, he said he was going to wear the sweatpants today. He hasn't disappointed us at all. Oh. Underway for the first of our four heats for the men. This is test number three. And put through the ringer yesterday with test number one. Some heavy loading. And now we have a rep scheme of 10 to 1, as I mentioned before, benchmark. So you set yourself a time or a weight, and then you try and beat it. And if you're not going to beat it, is, it, is there a variable that's causing you to not beat it or not get better? And if that's diet, if that's nutrition, uh, your anxiety levels might be up for the week, or whatever it might be, it's a good way to get results and compare to what you've done previously. That's right, and Linda, this weekend, the variable is that they are using dumbbells for their bench press instead of a barbell, which usually we would do Linda with a barbell. This year, testing the athletes on dumbbells, just adding that complexity. Most athletes will find dumbbell bench a bit harder. Absolutely no problem at all, though, for these guys. Now, succeeding in a test like this, important, and our recipes for success were thanks to RP Strength. Avoid failing bench reps, smooth barbell cycling and fast transitions on and off the bench. Our first point, probably the most important part, avoid failing your bench reps. You jump into competition here, you get a little bit excited. The adrenaline's pumping and you go, I've got one more rep. But you're better off some stages just resting, strategically breaking up those sets just to make sure you do get those reps done. And I think negative sets or split sets are probably going to be the most important factor here. And I'm not talking about negative split sets. It's doing something bigger and then something smaller so your brain gauges that a little bit easier. Do you agree? I agree. We saw last week with the semi-final that the dumbbell bench press really was the kryptonite for a lot of athletes. The, dumb, the deadlift and the squat clean posing no problem at all just cycling through those reps. But the dumbbell bench press is really where they need to focus on making sure their reps count and they're not doing more reps than they need to because it's gonna to add to their fatigue. Notice John Champion bringing those dumbbells to his chest before starting to press. Now, the starting position for the bench press is at the top. So you've gotta come down, hit your chest, come back up to the top for your first rep. So realistically, they're doing half a rep extra every time if they're bringing the dumbbells to their chest to start the movement. 
That's right. And transitioning the dumbbells from the ground to that position also adds to the fatigue. It's not as easy as just racking a barbell off a rack, having it already in that starting position. They have to physically pull those dumbbells into position. Top of the dumbbells and touching the shoulders and locking out at the top. I know we've got some new guys in the field, but for those guys, old heads that were still around back in 2018 at the regional in Sydney, they performed this exact test, but with some barbells instead of dumbbells. So those athletes who were still around, they get to test very similar benchmarks to this one, although the dumbbells are a little bit more difficult. They've got a time to gauge on what they should be hitting. There's three guys in particular, James Newbury, who came first in that event back in 2018 in 12 and a half minutes. Rob Watt, who came third that year, and also Jake Douglas, who came 13th. So something for them to gauge against as well. I think one thing to note about the dumbbell bench being different in Linda to a barbell bench is that dumbbells does affect your grip more than a barbell does. So that's gonna make those squat cleans feel different. It's gonna make those deadlifts feel different. So these athletes that are used to doing Linda with all three barbells, they might normally do the other movements unbroken. That might not be the case with the dumbbell bench adding to that forearm fatigue. A test record going back to last week. Fairly hefty from Sam Cornway, a 12.04. Absolutely outstanding. And John Champion, 45 degree angle. And he's got the beard of strength as well, so that always helps. He also had a sneaky little way of getting those dumbbells into position. He looked like he used his knees to help pop them up over his body. And let's head down to Caleb Banfield on the floor. Pip, you mentioned that this is a very grip-heavy test, and it really is. We go straight from the deadlift into the bench press and then the cleans. And one thing that you might notice when the athletes are doing that deadlift is that they take the alternate grip. So that's one hand over the top and one hand under the bottom. And I know when I'm training at my local box, my coach always says to me, in training, do both overhand grips so that we're training both sides evenly. But when we're out on the competition floor, it's really important to save that grip. And one way to do that is the alternate grip and, and oh, the alternative grip, sorry. And Jeremy and Pip, I wanted to ask with your members back at home, is that something that you would tell them to do as well? Or how would you coach them through a workout like this? Yeah, of course. And there's going to be a lot of people that train in their local affiliates that are watching the way these athletes go about these movements and it might be a bit different to how they do it in their affiliate but competition is always different these guys are trying to win essentially they're trying to work the most efficiently and fastest and sometimes in our home affiliate when we're training we train different ways because you want to train hard and compete easy when you come out here you do what you need to do to get the work done to the standard and always good to get some inside from Kayla Banfield on the floor. Luke Fowler going through the squat cleans and the movement that will take the longest are the squat cleans. Probably the most unforgiving as well. And we think about Linda as that benchmark test coming into the Torium Pro and you've got 10 to 1 reps. If you calculate all that up, that is 55 deadlifts, 55 dumbbell bench press, and 55 squat cleans. You get through the 10, the 9, the 8. You're just on that halfway point. Look, you might have a different opinion to me, but when I do Linda, I feel like I don't see the daylight until I hit the fives. And then I know that I'm running downhill and it's full speed ahead. But everyone's different, but I feel like that 10 through to 6, especially doing it with dumbbells, is quite grueling. I'm completely different to you. I see the light at once. <laughs> I like those fast transitions, short rep schemes. Jane has a party, CrossFit Botany. Partner Maddie in the crowd. 
and you'll hear his dad as well expecting child in the next couple of months he hasn't left the competition floor just yet so we know things are good Torangi Curtis, one of our youngest athletes in the field, and I'll tell you what, hefty. We'll talk about some of the athletes that aren't here this weekend. Like Peyton Brown and Khan Porter and Tia Claire Toomey, Kara Saunders. The old brigade, sort of that moving on, the transition. We can't get rid of James Newbury yet. He's still kicking around. We don't want to get rid of James <laughs> no, Newbury. absolutely not. But we've got these youngsters coming through and so exciting for our region because they've been to the CrossFit Games and no doubt they are going to be a force to be reckoned with in the years to come. champion shaking out the arms probably didn't have the start to competition that he wanted on day one but he's got his trackies out which means he means business on day two great to see him back out here he is a fan favorite and a commentary favorite if i say so <laughs> gotta be yep just think about nice guys in sports. You don't get any nicer than John Champion. And I don't care what anyone says. I'll argue till I'm blue in the face. He lives up to his name. <laughs> he certainly does. And he took about getting smooth in tests, in movements, in transitions. Is this any smoother than you could get? John Champion, he's a great mover. He's having absolutely no problem getting to the bottom of that squat, popping up nice and quick. He doesn't spend any more time in the bottom of that squat than he needs to. He's opting for the single rep approach and smart at this point of Linda. That grip would really be starting to fatigue from those dumbbell benches. no reps and dumping those dumbbells is they bounce around the floor I had a bit of a play around with how this would work a couple of weeks back once the tests were released and the hardest part for me was actually bending down each time to pick up the dumbbells put them into position get them at the top of the movement to then start and it's so time costly when you start to fail dumbbell bench because you can only sit there and wait for your arms to come back a bit so you can try again if you try and attempt the reps that you failed again too quickly then you're gonna just keep failing and this vicious cycle begins Torangi Curtis. Dumbbell bench press, absolutely no problem for him. First few reps. Now you talk about tactic on these big sets of dumbbell bench press. Important that you do what we call leaving a rep in the tank. So only doing a few reps and making sure that that last rep isn't getting too close to that borderline of failure. Luke Fowler, one of our shorter 
athletes. So the range of movement shorter. If you think about core to extremity, we talk about big muscle groups and small muscle groups. And if you start pretty much with your belly button work outwards, if you think about it basically that way, you've got to start this bench press, especially with dumbbells with that core locked on. Yeah, that's right. You don't want to be lying down on that bench with those heavy dumbbells with your midline not engaged. 90 pounds each hand for the males. 41 kilos. It's not light. Luke Fowler also a really proficient weightlifter. I'm looking forward to watching him on test four and five later today. But being a shorter athlete, just getting out of the bottom of that squat so easily, he doesn't have to spend much time coming up at all. It's our time to beat. 12.04, Sam Cornwaye. That's exceptional for the North American East semi-final last week. And Jaden has a party. The frustration, <laughs> he's asking for help from somebody. spoke about it with the teams with the dumbbell bench press with it really showing up any weakness that you might have on either side old injury or just one side that's significantly weaker than the other it really does show up especially on the later sets when fatigue starts to hit in you see the athletes have one arm lagging behind on their weaker side Jaden as a party. I think he's frustrated now. Wait till he has kids. <laughs> Jaden off to the Madrid CrossFit Championship later this year. Now, before we hit our time cap. <laughs> 90 seconds now. Eric Cavalli walking down the floor. There's a fair bit of training with young Bam Bam Bailey Rogers as well. No doubt Bailey watching on again as she was all day yesterday. Couldn't be with us this year, unfortunately. But hopefully those injuries sort themselves out. Another one with a lower back injury. But she'll be back with a vengeance. And one minute remaining now, Harry Cavalier going to have to move pretty quick. And this is where the transitions really start to eat into your time. The reps not so much. No rep from Kiko Tarangi Curtis, the front of your screen. It's Harry Cavalli. He's on to the ones, he's got 30 seconds. Former rugby union player as well, as you'd expect everyone from New Zealand is. National sports. And Pavley is going to run out of time, but gets all of the work completed, just not the 10 meters over the finish line. And you want a tough test, and you thought yesterday was bad. Welcome to day two of the Torian Pro. Test three for the individuals. We knew the dumbbell bench would slow them all down, and that it did. Jaden is a party. Having a personal battle with the dumbbells. 
And you've got to think, athletes are probably coming into this test going, OK, I'm going to start at the bottom like I normally do, and we're going to go from bottom to bottom. Whereas Adrian Bosman goes, no, 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 we're going to go top to top. So you've got a good starting position for the judge to see where you're starting at, which I think is exceptional. That's right. Competition standards often are different to how they're practicing it at home in training. And it just those little differences in standards can make the difference to the times that they're doing in training and then coming out here on the competition floor. Our champion wearing that small steps for Hannah shirt. We're all here to support the foundation today. <laughs> we head into our first individual test of the day. It is test three and it's Linda. Heat one of the men grinding their way through dumbbell bench linda harry was oh. very very good he didn't rush too many aspects of this i think that single rep tactic on the squat cleans just helps with that grip strength for the dumbbell press he really didn't look like he had it any reps getting away from him throughout the whole test. Just getting in on that time cap, just short of it, over the finish line though, but a great finish. And sun streaming through Pat Raft Arena. Yes, not big lights there, they're big gaps in the stadium roof. So an open air stadium here. Heat one of the men's for Linda is done as we welcome heat number two to the competition floor for the first time today. And shakers and movers and guys who like heavy barbells, we have that covered for you in heat two. And I'm pretty excited to see if any of these guys are going to go anywhere near that test record from Sam Conway out of 12 12. But it is Linda, individual test number three. 10 down to one reps of deadlifts, dumbbell bench presses, and squat cleans. They have a 17 minute cap. Their deadlifts are 295 pounds, that's 134 kilos. Bench press with 90 pound dumbbells in each hand, 41 kilos. The squat cleans are 145 pounds at 66 kilos. So I mentioned some heavy hitters in heat two. No more so than Darcy Hancock lane four, Benny Newland in the lane seven, and the boy from the west, Isaac Newman. Lane number two. As we mentioned before, it's not too much about your speed. You've just got to be smooth. Coach Mike Bergener from the US. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. There's Benny Newland there. And then Roberts to the left. Isaac Newman, a few deep breaths. George Regas in the purple. He had a great day one. Fit Adelaide. Sitting in 19th with a 14th and 21st, George Rigas, lane number three. Kayla's still got to be hooked on Cookie Bar from yesterday. <laughs> Owns a mechanic shop and some cafes. Busy, busy man. As we head into our recipes for success, all thanks to RP Strength. Avoid failing bench reps, smooth barbell cycling, and fast transitions on and off the bench. Ben Newland from Victoria. A couple of states south of where we are, if you're joining us from around the world. Thanks for your company. Jeremy Austin, Pitt Malone, Kayla Banfield with you. And a very exciting day one. Darcy Hancock from CrossFit CQ. Very comfortable with a heavy barbell in his hands. How does he go this weight? is about a quarter of what he's used to lifting for his max. 
Well, even though this weight on the squat cleans is light for most of these males, they're doing a lot of reps, 10 down to one. And not only that, they're fatiguing from the dumbbell bench. The grip really comes into play. So normally they might be able to do these unbroken, no problem. Add some heavy dumbbell bench in there. It is a completely different test. Smart to be breaking it up from the beginning and not blowing out the grip for those dumbbell bench presses where this test is one and lost. One of the guys we flagged earlier, Ben Newland, is the first one back. Top of the screen about hit his deadlift. The second one was Darcy Hancock, and he'll be second to the barbell. Now, speaking to Rob Watt out the back in the athlete warm-up area just before, and I said, how was your muscular fatigue after day one? Because we didn't think it was going to be too much. And he said, he's in really good shape. However, his quads are a little bit fatigued. And I thought that was really interesting that his quads are fatigued, especially with a heavy sled pull. So we'll see how that goes when they get to the squat cleans in Linda. Look, I always found competing, I would have things sore that were never sore before. And I, I would put that down to adrenaline and just that competition effort. You just put in that little bit more and it's just got that little bit different adrenaline out on the competition floor to how you've tried to replicate it in training. There's always gonna be something sore that wasn't sore before. Darcy Hancock getting a no rep, but really powering ahead of Benny Newland on the dumbbell bench press. And if there's probably one movement out of the three here, you don't want to be getting no reps on, that's the dumbbell bench. That's right, dumbbell bench failed reps. Really costly on time spent in the dumbbell bench, Linda. So you don't have a rack to rely on like you do when using a barbell. You've got to pick those dumbbells up off the floor and that's if you haven't thrown them too far away from yourself either. Ben Newland looking great. And able to speed up. CrossFit underway, Melbourne. And he is a journeyman. He has been right around the country. Started his journey under the watchful eye of none other than the original CrossFit guy out here, Matt Swift, at CrossFit Brisbane. Darcy Hancock. Looking really good once he gets to the dumbbell bench. Maybe specifically slowing down that squat clean a little. That's where Benny Newell is running ahead. Yeah, Darcy Hancock. Really no problem at all on these dumbbell bench press. Hitting those dumbbells right down to his shoulders. He's been really smooth with his transitions and also smart with his wrap scheme on his squat cleans, just saving that grip. Reese Machel. Another one of those competitors, he's just having some time at the back just to compose himself. Now, cast your mind back to last year, Darcy Hancock, he finishes 10th and he actually gets an event win from the Torian Pro 2022. And that was with the barbell complex. The fact that he's pulling ahead in the dumbbell bench press is a great sign. I think day two is going to be a very good day for Darcy Hancock. If he keeps going the way he's going in this test, we could see our first finisher. <laughs> Just getting us to shift back in the little bit of the middle of the lane. James Thomas, CrossFit Newstead. James Thomas, squat cleaning with no ACL. When I talk ACL, I'm talking the anterior cruciate ligament, which you need to sidestep. Well, we don't have any sidestepping in any of the tests over this weekend, but he's having no problem at all with those squat cleans. no ACL if there was any change of direction test that would probably pose a bit of a problem but 
not for this one. Darcy Hancock still making easy work of these dumbbell bench press. rep scheme 55 reps in total but it get progressively easier even if it's just one set at a time your brain calculates that and goes okay it's easier the next one the next one's easier the next one's easier. you get over you say that five mark where reps really start to speed up you're not spending as long on there and your brain's going okay this is getting exciting you flip it around and you go one to ten that's a completely different test altogether well you you say it gets easier but with dumbbell bench press I feel like those middle reps around eight seven six they should feel like they're getting easier in theory but they really don't those are the stickiest sets to push through and where a lot of time can be spent I like that it should <laughs> seven and a half down Isaac Newman taking a break. Johan Roberts to the far left of screen in the black and red taking a break. As Darcy Hancock, he is just ploughing through this. And we head back to 2018. Mr. James Newbury, who will be coming up in a little bit. Punches out at 12.25. I think I remember doing my first Linda 2007-2008 and I think I was sort of upwards of an hour. It took me a long time. That's probably because you didn't know it was for time. I, 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 I just couldn't lift the weight. <laughs> Rachel done with the squat cleans but he's got to roll his bar forward as George Regas rolls his. Darcy Hancock again. And you talk about sticking points in tests like this as well. It is a dumbbell bench. Darcy Hancock obviously has no issues with dumbbell bench. Darcy Hancock has been really smart with this test. He's obviously good on a dumbbell bench press. So he has gamed his squat cleans from set one and has been doing single reps to save his grip. And it's really paying off for him. liking that bounce out from Darcy Hancock at the bottom of the squat. He's got, he's favouring that right side of the lane as well. So that might be a pulling inconsistency maybe? He might be a bit tight on one side from yesterday. <laughs> but for those watching at home, if you're not sure why athletes are being told to stand and move in certain spots, the athletes have standards they have to follow and that includes Standing behind lines on the floor, it keeps everybody safe. Make sure that the test runs nice and smooth out on the floor and the athletes aren't running into each other or into their judge. I don't mind that from Darcy Hancock. He's well ahead. I'm just going to have a bit of a breather here. Seventeen minutes on our time cap. We are ten down. Rachel. Heading back as is James Thomas. Now fatigue starting to creep in for Darcy Hancock, but the rep schemes are getting that small that he's managing to get away with it. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good you are at dumbbell bench, that fatigue is going to set in. But the fact that he's managed to hold on without failed reps on those dumbbell bench press to this point does make a massive difference. He hasn't had to do any extra reps. It hasn't been extra loading. Barbell bouncing all around his lane. 
Now, I don't think we're going to see anybody go through a touch and go rep scheme unless we get to that sort of like three, two. Or would you just go the entire way doing single reps? I think it's smart to keep in the back of your mind that a dumbbell bench press can always go wrong. And a missed rep can be costly on time. So if your game plan is to go singles and you're speeding up towards the end, then fast singles. It's not worth blowing out the grip and getting to that dumbbell bench press and missing reps. Johan Roberts. Third across the games two years ago, 16-17 division. And he can go straight out the back and say, Mum, this is how it feels. Mum, Annika Roberts competing in the individual women's competition. We believe it's the first time we've seen that anywhere in the world. Mother and son competing at the same competition in the same division. And if you weren't tuning in yesterday, it was something that we have been absolutely impressed by. And we're still impressed today. It's unreal. Darcy Hancock, he's got the strut now. He's close. Transition time, obviously, is very important. The amount of time it's taking for Darcy Hancock to pick that bar up each time, it's about two seconds because it's bouncing around so much. That's the time you can cut down, but is that the time you need to rest? Well, the barbell bouncing around, it can make it more tiring if you have to keep shuffling it. If you're going to drop it, it's preferable to drop it in front of you and keep your hands on the bar so that it doesn't bounce around and you're not having to shuffle that weight around the bottom. Darcy Hancock doing it easy. I like that from Isaac Newman. Almost like, uh, what do you call them? Teeter totters in the States. We call them seesaws. And just leveraging the weight and just lowering them down nice and easy. Darcy Hancock just popping what I think is his first no rep on the dumbbell bench. They have to show control at the top of the rep and lock out. Hancock taking a breather. He's got about two and a half minutes left. The fatigue has kicked in. Another failed rep. Machel can hear the crowd starting to come into play now. <laughs> He's got a wry smile on his face as well. He's down to twos. Reese Machel. It's that raft is coming alive. That outside lane. And Darcy Hancock. Can't see it on camera, but another failed dumbbell bench press. It is going to be Machel. The sneaky outside lane, we see it every year. And Machel. One squat clean to go. Born in the same town as Luke McMahon. And the camera boy finishes up well under time cap. Hancock heading back. Has the damage been done? Jack Clark. 
How many does Darcy Hancock have? Must be better. Rachel, there you go, that's a bit better. Trains across at SFS in Hume, just outside the outskirts of Canberra. Nation's capital here, James Thomas. You can tell when they're getting close because they're running down the floor. James Thomas crossing, new step. Clark crossing underway. Darcy Hancock now on who is twos. 20 seconds on our clock. Darcy Hancock with that massive lead early is going to run out of time. Yeah, those failed dumbbell bench reps really showing the damage it can do. One or two failed reps and the fatigue just kicks in. Time is up. And Reese Machel, and I don't think I can say it any better than he did. That's better. All you want to do is get up that leaderboard. Two heats down, two to come. And Machel now has our new time to beat. James Thomas. I don't know too much about moving around without anterior cruciate ligaments and doing some heavy squat cleans with them. As long as you're not moving too much laterally, I think you'd be okay. Well, he had no problem at all. Heat two of the males for test three. Linda, Darcy Hancock, he had the early lead, looking dominant on those dumbbell bench press. But just a couple of failed reps at the end. And look out on the outside lane eight. Machel with the time to beat. Are you mentioned a pit that sneaky outside lane. Flying under the radar where the other athletes can't see what you're up to. Great finish for him to push him up the leaderboard and set a time to beat for the next heat of males. The results after two heats, we got two more to come. This is test number three on day two of the Torian Pro. Reese Machel, think 42. Ben Thomas and Jack Clark have only three finishes. And Machel with a seventh place finish last year. That's going to bump him up. And maybe push him into that top ten. Two down, two to come. We'll be back with more action from Torian Pro very soon. Welcome back to day number two, moving day here at Pat Rafter Arena. The semi-final for the Oceania region. And what a day and what a test to start things off, Pitt Malone. It is individual test number three and it is benchmark, Linda. Ten reps down to one of deadlifts, dumbbell bench presses and squat cleans. 17 minute cap. 
It is otherwise known as Benchmark Linda, the three bars of death, but this year they don't have three bars, they have two, and they're using dumbbells for the bench press. 90 pounds per hand, that's 41 kilos. The deadlift's 295 pounds, that's 134 kilos, and the squat cleans are 145 pounds, 66 kilos. A heat list for heat number three, a couple of familiar faces. Lane four, James Jubery, and lane seven, Rob Watt. Both of those individuals competed at the regional in 2018 in Sydney, and both have a score to reflect on, even though we've got that little bit of a change with the dumbbell bench. Rob Watt coming in third back then in 14.03. James Jubery taking it out in first place. Not only did he have a good time back then in 2018, he had the third best time worldwide. Very different test with three bars. The dumbbell bench press proving to be added complexity for these athletes and just so tough on the grip and shoulders. Third of four heats for our individual males for the start of our middle day of competition. The second week of the global competition that is the semi-finals. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games season underway. And this tough, tough test is called Linda. And these are the recipes for success, all thanks to RP Strength. Avoid failing bench reps, smooth barbell cycling, and fast transitions on and off the bench. Now we saw the last heat of males, an early lead throughout by Darcy Hancock that was taken away from him by failed bench reps at the end. He obviously didn't listen to you. <laughs> Can't he hear us from here? He's got a piece in. Don't fail your bench reps. And straight away you can see the separation. The dumbbell bench holding some athletes up already. James Newbury, obviously his training has changed a little bit to a more endurance based. So this will be a really good reflection on what he was able to achieve in 2018. Rob Watt, second athlete to the right. Coming in in a very respectable 14 minutes for Linda back in 2018. Was one of the first off that dumbbell bench. Look, it's very early in the test, rookie. It is 10 all the way down to one. And as we were saying earlier, 10 reps all the way down through to six really is a grind. And then you don't really start to see the daylight until around those five reps. And in the last heat, we really didn't see anyone break out until around the three reps with Machel coming out and taking the heat win. One of the happiest guys on the field of play yesterday was Andrew Sandbell, who's now in the back of screen. Believe it or not, loves poetry and playing piano. Just in his spare time. And, and the dumbbell position, the first time we've probably seen anything almost replicating what a barbell bench would look like. That's right. Sambal had his elbows out just a bit further than what we've been seeing from the other athletes. Been seeing lots of 45 degree angle elbows to get the top of those dumbbells to the shoulders. But as long as you're hitting the standard. So dumbbells must hit the torso and must come to extension. James. Just an absolute professional. And not throwing him on the ground, just resting him on his legs and he'll go back down and finish off his set. Let's head down to Caleb Banfield on the floor. Jeremy and Pip, you guys mentioned that James does love Linda and he did really well in this event in uh, 2018. And I think that's largely due to the fact that one of James's favorite movements is the deadlift. He's incredibly good at deadlifts and he also doesn't mind a bench press and he doesn't mind a squat clean. And what James used to say, one of the reasons why he loved deadlifts so much is that James has 
what we call in CrossFit long levers, and that basically means long arms. So if you want to test yourself at home and, and test your arm span, on average, we should have a similar arm span as, as our height. So if we stretch our arms out, it should be roughly the same as what our height is. So I'm 164 centimetres. Technically, that should be the same as my arm span. James has a 17 centimetre longer arm span than he does his height. So he has very long arms. So if you look at him on the clean at the moment, he actually doesn't have to bend down as far. Similarly on the deadlift, he doesn't have to bend down as far to grab it. So he has less further to go. So as we know in CrossFit, your body type and the way that your body is plays a huge effect in how much you enjoy particular movements. Yeah, Kayla, as you were saying about the long levers, 2018 they did use the three bars of death for Linda. This year they're using the dumbbell bench press. And the long levers might make that dumbbell bench press that bit harder for James. The standard is that it, those dumbbells have to touch his chest. He doesn't have a barbell to be able to move his hands out wider to get that equipment to his chest. With the dumbbells, he's got to keep those elbows in a bit tighter to reach the standard. It, it could hurt him a bit more on this version of Linda, but we will see. I agree, Pip. And Kayla, I get exactly what you're saying. The thing with James Newbury is he has been on this competition floor for 10 years and you've been there along the sideline for most of that and the progression how does he look in comparison to previous years on the competition floor that's a great question jeremy and to be honest i think james looks very similar there will be an athlete that lives inside james forever i think and you know no matter what he does in his outside life with business and travel james will always be an athlete at heart and that's something that i think makes him such a fierce competitor is that when he has to switch it on he'll absolutely switch it on and you know even though he says to me like oh i haven't really been focusing on training that much i know how important it is for james to you know commit time to his sport and i think that that's really showing itself this year as well he can put in a lot less time into training but there's something that he can access and a lot of that comes down to the 10 years of experience that he has and that helps so much out on the competition floor when you've been here before. Kayla, that's a lie. He spent a lot of time training. <laughs> He's just too humble for his own good. Newbury. Getting through the bench and placement of dumbbells. If they're on his legs or on the floor, he's fully aware of what's going on and Kayla nailed it. The 10 years of experience counts for everything when you're down here on the floor. You're never going to see James Newbury frazzled down there. <laughs> we saw that similar to Jay Crouch yesterday. He could have got frazzled, but didn't. We're six minutes down now. We've got 10 more to come. A 17 minute time cap. James having <laughs> an ongoing battle with these dumbbells, but remaining calm, remaining focused. If you're watching along at home, this is how you compose yourself on the competition floor. Do you ever get frazzled when you're out there competing, heat of the moment? Things didn't go your way and you went, ugh. Oh yeah, look, I, I am bad for being a bit of a frazzled athlete. It is something that you learn with time though. And everybody goes through it, everybody is frazzled at some point. And the most composed athletes you see out there, I'm sure it's because at one point they got really frazzled and it didn't feel good at all. So they have fixed that and worked on their composure. Sample taking a quick break from his next set of deadlifts. Let's shoot back down to Kayla. Pip, I couldn't help but pick up on what you said about composure and that word is so strong. That's something that James brings actually into his training as well. So even when he's not on the competition floor, he, I remember, you know, 10 years ago, he would always say to me, maintain composure, maintain composure. And I mean, I personally couldn't do it. I'm like you, Pip, when I'm in pain, everybody knows about it. But with James, it's something that even in training, he would always say to me, you know, if you don't have to lie down on the floor, don't lie down on the floor. It's all about how you hold yourself as an athlete. Something I've got to work on, Kayla. Holding my composure. I'm one of those people that squirm around on the floor and start crying and all sorts of stuff. 
Andrew Sample, he's not crying. He's smashing this. Asking very boisterous Pat Rafter crowd for a little bit of assistance earlier on as he got to the squat cleans. And he is done with the round of four. Now, Pip, in your professional opinion, your transition, your rep schemes are getting shorter. Your transitions are obviously the same time frame. Do you slow those down to compose more? Or do you start getting a little bit of a hustle going on? Look, I would have my mind set on getting through those dumbbell bench presses without any failures. And if that means being just a bit more composed on transitions, making sure that you're not getting onto that bench frazzled or a little too fatigued, then we're going to see these athletes keep their composure until they know they've only got a couple of reps left. Sample. Back onto the bench. Riley Martin in the foreground, as is Matty Gilpin. Ran into Matty earlier on this morning and he said he felt really good. Remember back to last year, he was leading day one of the 2022 Torian Pro. This year we see the 30th qualifier leading the male division, Zach Thomas from CrossFit Wollongong. I'm liking Andrew Samble's rack position for that barbell. Talk me through that rack position, Pip. Yeah, Andrew Samble doing a beautiful job on these squat cleans. He's got his elbows nice and high. He's got that barbell back in his fingertips, allowing his elbows to come up. Also taking the pressure off the grip. He's not vice gripping the barbell, relaxing the grip, opening the hands. And you talk about where you're going to start failing grip strength. We're talking about a deadlift from the floor that's relatively heavy. We're talking about a squat clean that's relatively heavy. And some probably more heavy dumbbells, which is going to tax your grip strength wherever you can get a break that's going to be perfect for you. That's right, keeping that grip as fresh as possible, if fresh is even a thing on this test. Fresh. And you notice some of the athletes that have been going through their squat cleans with one rep, single rep deadlifts. Is that a strategy you would imply here to make sure that grip strength stays intact? Look, unless the deadlift is a weak point for you on this test, we're not going to see many athletes doing single deadlifts. Most of them are going to be cycling the reps for multiples, if not unbroken on those smaller sets. It's not a particularly heavy weight for these guys. 295 pounds, 134 kilos. Sample. The crowd roars as he rolls his bar forward. Your Heat 3 leader. Finishing with an 18th in Test 1, but came back with a bang. With 37 burpee box jump overs in 7th position. And his dumbbell bench has looked exactly the same from the, re the reps of 10 all the way down to where he is now at threes. So strong. He's currently sitting in 12th after one day of competition. We saw that with Darcy Hancock, but when we got to the three twos and ones with Darcy Hancock, things started to fall apart in the previous heat. Samuel has maintained not just integrity of movement, but position of where those dumbbells are.
Cross might swing open as Sandal. Still Coast Cross from Newcastle. Yes, sir. Ah! 13.50. He looks like he could probably keep going back up to 10. His dumbbell bench press is just outstanding. No problem at all. He didn't look like he fatigued at all. Wingspan of James Newbury. And he's not going to be too bad. I don't think he's going to finish under time cap. As long as his dumbbell bench doesn't get in the way. Mitchell Case. Onto the twos. Now, one thing I've noticed, especially with the male athletes after yesterday, there's a lot more composure on the floor. It doesn't seem to be too much of the athletes getting flustered on the floor anymore. And that's probably something that they've been working on in the last couple of years. I think as well, day one, you always come out here with extra nerves. Day two, you get a good night's sleep, good recovery, come out fresh. Two reps remaining for Mitchell Case. They're going by the, where the barbells are on the floor. Intensity levels pretty high. And let's head down to Kayla on the competition floor with the man from the Steel City. Andrew, I don't think I've seen you without a smile on your face this weekend. How have you found the Torium Pro? It's incredible. It's a dream come true to be here. It's, it's everything I could ask it to be. And what's it like doing the tests out here compared to doing them at home in your box? I train alone inside a little square. like. This is incredible. I couldn't be happier. Anything that you want to say to the crowd? Thank you all for being here. It's all well and good to train by yourself year round, but to come and show what we do and show our hard work off is an awesome opportunity, so thank you all. One other thing I wanted to bring attention to is those pretty nails, and I think that you and I are sporting a very similar look. We've got the pink and black going. Was I your inspiration for that? Absolutely. <laughs> well, well done. Great job and good luck for the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Kayla. I missed the nail polish memo. Well, let's get into highlights for Heat 3. Heat 3 of the men. 
and Andrew Samble just showing that a strong dumbbell bench press on test three, Linda. It's really what you need to get well under that time cap. He really didn't slow down at all. He didn't look like he was gonna fail any reps at any point. You said he liked poetry and playing piano. I think he also does a lot of bench in his spare time. But the time to beat. Great first go at this floor for the rookie. Absolutely. And our results for Heat 3. 30-50 for Andrew Sample and 15-41 for Mitchell Casey. Our only two finishes. As our final heat has hit the floor. And things starting to heat up here at Pat Rafter Arena for day two of the Torium Pro. Presented by TWL. And it is Linda, individual test number three. 10 down to one reps of deadlifts, dumbbell bench presses and squat cleans. 17 minute time cap. The deadlift weighs 295 pounds, 134 kilos if you use the metric system. Bench presses with dumbbells that are 95, 90 pounds rather each, 41 kilos. And squat cleans are 145 pounds, 66 kilos each. A heat list for our fourth and final heat of the individual males. And eyes are going to be on our incumbent champion, Jay Crouch in lane five. But our overall leader, Zach Thomas coming in, in that backfield position in 30th position. Ricky Garrard steps aside with a shoulder injury. Ricky was the one who broke the news to him because they both live in Wollongong. And said, hey buddy, you're in the big show again. Pete Ellis, Will Carney, two athletes we are really looking forward to seeing and seeing their progress up the leaderboard. Days two and three as we get started. Now, Kayla mentioned it previously about James Jubry's length of his arms. Zach Thomas is also one of those athletes and succeeding in Linda is going to come down to efficiency of movement and the recipe is for success thanks to RP Strength. Avoid failing bench reps, smooth barbell cycling and fast transitions on and off the bench. Now we saw Andrew Samble in the last heat failed no dumbbell bench press and he just had so much time to move quickly on those barbells because he didn't spend too much time on his bench at all. My eyes are gonna be darting over to lane number seven, Jake Douglas. I think we're gonna see something special from him on this test. The man has some pipes on him. Jake Douglas, wowza. <laughs> what a physique. As I said yesterday, when I grow up, I want to be Jake Douglas. That stuff is a lot of hard work. Coming in last year to the 2022 Torian Pro, he finishes in 25th position. And gee, he clawed his way back well. Say you come into competition like that last year how do you reset and go hey let's just shake that off reset the leaderboard mentally and go again how do you do that as a competitor you really have to leave what's happened behind and not focus on it you can only focus on what's ahead if you're focusing on everything that's already happened and it's out of your control that's where it is going to start to eat in to the test to come you have to focus on one at a time Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Shop now, scan the QR code. And get shopping. Crouch, looking great. And I had a quick chat to Jay out the front earlier with Matty Sturt as well. And I said to Jay that you look so composed. And he goes, I'm just getting around and doing what I'm doing. 
It might not look like I'm pushing the limits, but I am. I spoke to him about the no rep he got on the muscle up as well. And he said, all part of competition, you've just got to be able to knock that out of the park mentally and just keep going. And that's why he's such a great athlete. He doesn't focus on the things that went wrong. It is part of competition. You have to move ahead and adapt. So before, Bailey Martin getting a test win, test number two yesterday. And barbell cycling, we talk about barbell cycling a lot. Bailey Martin is one of those athletes that absolutely loves it. We mentioned in one of the previous heats that this weight for the guys on the squat cleans and the deadlifts, not particularly heavy, but the dumbbell bench press is the main star of this test. And it's going to be in the back of their mind that they need to save their grip. Jake Douglas, see those veins in his forearms popping out. Fun fact, Jake Douglas, 2019, he was going to qualify for the Commonwealth Games as a weightlifter in the 96 class. Ruptures his ACL and subluxes his elbow. So he qualifies to the Commonwealth Games, but can't go because he gets injured. And something you did as well, qualifying for the Commonwealth Games as a weightlifter. What was that experience like? Oh, unreal. Home Games, something that a lot of athletes don't get to experience doing a home Olympics or Commonwealth Games, and a memory forever. We saw Tia compete there as well. We saw Alethea Boone compete there as well. So, branches of CrossFit that extend out to other realms and other sports. Weightlifting is one of those. Gymnastics, one of those other tough ones, which you've been a part of as well. The monostructural version. We saw a bit of that monostructural yesterday with the Echo Bike, the Assault Air Runner and the Ski Erg. Three different components. Zach Thomas from CrossFit Wollongong. Very impressed with his composure day one. And what an event that it is for him here at Torian. Look, he came in here as a qualifier last year. And the Torian Pro, as Andrew Sample just said on his interview, is just epic for those people that just train in their gym. We've got Zach Thomas coming in as a backfill. So you think your dream has gone you get the last minute call up. Here's the golden ticket, Willy Wonka ticket. You're in. How do you adjust? Because you're probably giving away that dream and then it gets given back to you. How do you refocus? Well, I don't think he would have stopped training. I think training is something that we just always do. But it also can mean that there's no pressure. He didn't think he was going to even be here. So the fact that he did get that backfield spot and he's here and it's like well i may as well just come out here guns blazing and show everyone what i can do and that he did yesterday so impressive and you know what he did it and it didn't even look like it was that hard i don't like that when that happens everything's hard for me <laughs> but then if you look back and you go hey Test record for me, great. I've beaten some of the fittest men in the world at this same test, including Jay Crouch, who's been to the CrossFit Games five times. Two as a team member, three as an individual. And we fast forward to the end of tomorrow, and we try and work out what's going to be the makeup of our podium in the Oceania region here. It's difficult to work out who is going to be on it. You might think the way Jay Crouch started competition that he's probably a very good chance of being one of those three. Who the other two are, I really can't tell you. No, I agree. I feel like this is the first year in the Oceania region where we don't really have a good prediction of who it's going to be because there is so much talent in the males and so much young, new talent like Zach Thomas that have come out here and surprised us. 
So it's going to be very exciting at the end of today to see who is on that bubble. Not out of breath, not struggling, not a hair out of place either. Very strong hair. And I reckon he brushed his beard this morning as well because he absolutely looks 100%. And as a youngster coming into the sport, his progress has been awesome. And if you're going to be guided by anyone in the space in the Oceania region, why not pick the master that is Rob Forte? Look, he really does remind me of Rob out on the floor with that composure. Rob would never give anything away with his face either. And Jay is exactly the same. He's obviously <laughs> learned well from Rob. Rob dropping a few hints to me yesterday when I spoke to him about his competitive future. And he was actually pretty humble as well. He goes, well, I wasn't good enough for the Masters division because I didn't qualify. But he hasn't discounted coming back as a team member. He said, individual, I'm done. But coming back as a team member could be on the cards and they were pretty close this year. Came in at the 23rd spot. Reebok cross it Frankston. So he was close to being on the competition floor, just not close enough. So maybe next year. Oh, give the people what they want, Rob. Come and throw <laughs> down next to Jay. point of our time cap and the people you we expected to do well in this test are doing it Jake Douglas just having a look around struggled a little bit yesterday getting a 12th on that sled pull thought he would have find found that a little bit easier to move all of that upper body strength he has but as Rob Watt said to me earlier about his quads blowing up a little after the sled pull it's a little bit surprising so maybe some other athletes are feeling the same thing I think that element of them not being able to use their feet on the sled pull and having to plant them they were probably doing more squats than they anticipated on those sled pulls Douglas looking like he is not dropping the hammer just yet. Just having to make sure his barbell stays in the right place. The athletes have to follow the standards. Bar in the box, in, the, in between the right lines. press still looking like they did in the set of 10. Jake Douglas, plumber by trade. And no surprise, have a look at those pipes. We love a pun down here. So 387 kilo clean and jerk. Jake Douglas held the record with that. 75 kilos. That's a lot of weight to get through a clean and jerk. And improving in his worldwide ranking, Jake Douglas from 226 last year to 113. Is this going to be his year? 12 and a half minutes. Sam Cornwayer's test record stays intact again. What looks like it is a PVC pipe. 
Down to the singles. Now this won't take him long at all. Samuels time of 13.50. Now time to beat down here in the Oceania region. And I have no doubts Jake Douglas is going to do that. 100 points for him here. He's going to propel him up that leaderboard. Jake Douglas. What a champion. And sitting in sixth, and he's going to bounce probably up to top three, four position. And second career semi-final test win. Jake Crouch, single rep. Talk about Mr. Consistency. Douglas 13.22 official time. Zach Thomas falling off the pace a little. He's in lane four in the black shirt. Will Carney now. Carney coming into today in fifth position. And what a result, Will Carney. That's going to put him in the fourth position. Bailey Martin, important result here for him as well. Bailey Martin will get fifth overall. into the lead after three tests of individual male competition. Riley Smith currently sitting third. A fifth and a tenth yesterday. Time probably going to beat the rest of these athletes. left on the floor. Pete Ellis, one of those from CrossFit Peak Flaxland. Jake Douglas. What a performance. We knew he was the one to watch on this test. He did not disappoint. Riley Smith is one I'm excited to watch in test four and five. Shella Bear Healy sneaking over the finish line. Same good result for him. Came in in eight. Second place finish on test one and an 18th on test two. Riley Smith. Oh, I'm going to love this top ten leaderboard after three. in the top 10. Zach Thomas is not going to finish. Uh, capped out. Zach Thomas, our overall leader after day one of the Torian Pro for 2023. Jake the Snake, Douglas. Oh. Signing autographs, kissing babies. <laughs> Thanks, Shelabir Healy. Doing himself some favours in test number three. Bailey Martin as well. Are the two guys that missed out last year? Bailey Martin. Gonna make it this year. Let's head down to Caleb Banfield.
Thanks, Jeremy. I'm joined by Jake and beautiful little Frankie, who I think is probably Jake's biggest supporter. And my first question is for Frankie. How do you think Dad went in that test? Good. Are you proud of him? Yeah. <laughs> is he the best dad in the world? Yeah. You heard it here first, guys. Jake, what's it like balancing work, family, and being an athlete? How do you do it all? Um, look, I've got just a great support network, to be honest. My coaches in the gym, people who work for me, my family, everyone supports it. Makes it really easy when you've got the right people around you. Absolutely, and you're looking so great coming into this season. A lot of your rankings have improved. What are you hoping to get out of the competition this weekend? Yeah, baby. Uh, I'm just trying to make myself proud. I'm trying to set an example for my kids, my community. Just having a dig, you know. Well, you're doing a great job. Well done on that event, and we'll see you later on. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> bye, Frankie. Thanks, Kayla. And fourth and final heats of test number three, Jake Douglas doing extremely well. Look, when these tests came out, we both said Jake Douglas was going to eat up test three, and that he did a really much needed 100 points for him on day two of competition. And Jake Crouch, though, just missed it consistent. Jake Douglas, though, no surprises from anyone. Loves the dumbbell bench. And 100 points for him on his campaign for a ticket to the games. The results after three tests of heat four results 13 22 about a minute slower than sam cordway a in the north american east semi-final last week jay crouch again another good performance and the shake-up it's going to be great with will carney jumping in there bailey martin another strong result after test two and three individual males test three in the books we have plenty more action coming from the Torian Pro day two of competition here. So don't go anywhere as we paint the pro pink. Support of small steps for Hannah. We'll be back soon. Individual females coming up.
everybody, welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena for day two. 2023 CrossFit Games semi-finals. Thanks to Noble. Victorian Pro, the official Oceania semi-final, presented by TWL. Test three for the team's done. Test three for the individual males are done. Now it is time to turn our attention to the ladies on the floor, Jeremy Austin, Pip Malone, Caleb Anfield with you. And this is individual test number three, benchmark Linda. 10 reps down to one of deadlifts, dumbbell bench presses and squat cleans, 17 minute cap. Deadlifts for the women are 200 pounds, that's 91 kilos. Bench press with dumbbells, 60 pounds each hand, that's 27 kilos. And the squat cleans are 105 pounds, 47.5 kilos. Heat list for heat number one. Four heats for our individual females. And unfortunately, Adrian Geary from CrossFit Cross Axe here in Brisbane has been drawn from competition. We'll keep you updated with that as we go along. But very unfortunate to not see Adrian on the floor for the rest of the Torian Pro. Ladies, ready and focused. And the benefits of being out the back, Pip, and watching four heats go ahead of you, even though it is the male division, you've got an idea of what sort of time you're looking at, transitions, how it's relatively going to feel in relation to the weight loading, which is normally about 70%. The recipes for success, thanks to RP Strength. Avoid failing bench reps, smooth barbell cycling, and fast transitions on and off the bench. And the males really did show us that avoiding failing those bench reps really is how this test is won and lost. Jaylee Mansi doing well taking it. Note out of James Newbury's book. Let's just not throw the dumbbells on the ground. Sam Cohen, newcomer to competition. Back of screen in the pink knee sleeves. Julie Hannaford at the bottom of the screen. There's Amber Cohen there. Cross it facilitate just north of Sydney. Part-time physio. What if you're a part-time physio or a physio of that nature? You look after your body a little bit more. I'd say she knows how to look after her body better than most do. She's doing a great job of breaking up these squat cleans early, saving her grip for the dumbbell bench press. Beautiful position with the bar as well. High elbows, fast out of the bottom of the squat. Spending least amount of time under tension as needed. It's Julia Hannaford, head back. Let's head down to Kayla Banfield. Don't have any audio from Kayla currently. We'll get back to her in a sec as Julia Hannaford continues on. Julia, quick chat in the warm-up area as well. She's feeling okay. And as you mentioned, Pip, your recipes for success, your bench reps are going to be the ones that are going to be the most crucial. And I expected to see that from the men, but we didn't see it. We just saw it from Julia just then. It was great. We saw the men using their knees to pop those dumbbells up to save their arms. Julia doing a great job of that. A lot of the athletes have been having to do a full rep to get the dumbbells to the top. They have to start and finish at the top. Being smart with your transitions on and off that bench are really going to save you on the forearms and shoulders. We cast our minds back to last week. Half of the female field did not complete test three, Linda. Are we going to see something similar down here in the Oceania region? 
Hannaford belting through those squat cleans. Amber Cohen, last two repetitions of the set of nine. Let's head down to Kayla now. I'm noticing a real difference of foot positioning when we're looking at our athletes across the board in this test. Julia Hannaford, for example, has quite a wide squat stance when she's picking up and dropping that barbell. And you have a look at Jaylee Manzi and her squat stance is a little bit more narrow. So from when she picks up that barbell to when she catches in the squat, she doesn't actually move her feet out, which tells me that she probably has some pretty good mobility because I know for a lot of people, jumping out into that squat stance allows them to catch that barbell nice and low, but her feet don't actually move. We are gonna see lots of different techniques used across these movements, all movements that I'm sure a lot of our viewers do in their gyms every day. Mobility being one of the things that we focus on in CrossFit, making sure that our quality of movement is the best it can be, hitting positions safely. Amber Cohen. Oh, you mentioned that clean before. It's so smooth. Less time under tension. We're talking about a lot of loading for these athletes for deadlift, for bench press, and also for squat clean. The less time you can hang onto the bar and be loaded with your muscle groups, the, obviously the better you're going to feel and the more energy you'll have later on in the test. That's right, and not just later on in the test, but for those dumbbell bench press, as we were talking about earlier, normally benchmark Linda is known as the three bars of death bench press done with the bar as it was in 2018. They're doing it with dumbbells this year. They don't have a rack. They have to use their arms to get the dumbbells off the ground. Amanda McKay. Jolly Mancy. Just down the road here on the Gold Coast, Bill Athletic with husband Adam, part of the CrossFit Urban Energy team that went to the Games for the last two years. Qualifying as well. Semi-finals of 35 to 39, Masters Division. Spoke about not failing dumbbell bench reps being critical in this test, especially this early on. All right, more. Let's head down to Kayla. Yesterday, we were talking about the one percenters, probably talking about it this morning as well. And our athletes are always looking at those small little ways that they can get more out of each test. And yesterday, we saw athletes with ropes in the mouth. We saw uh, Caitlin Van Zyl chalking up while she was on the runner. And in this particular test, I saw a lot of athletes chalking up their barbell before it started. So what that does is it saves them from having to waste time chalking up. In between transitions, they can head straight over to that clean, for example, and just pick up that barbell straight away. And all those little things really do count. Are you talking about one percent? It's like that's spot on. And cutting down your transition time, a lot of athletes wasting some time dropping that barbell, it moves out of position, move back in. If you can cut time down, let's do it. Another thing I notice as well is a lot of the athletes walking up to that clean barbell and they're picking it up straight away. And the reason I noticed it is because that's not something that I tend to do. I, you know, I love to look at the barbell and, you know, think about if I'm going to lift it up. But these athletes are incredible. They step up to that barbell, those hands go on and they lift. So they're resting as they transition in between movements. But as soon as they walk up to it, it's go time. Kayla, it's got to be water, chalk, do your shoelaces up again, take a breath, look at the ceiling, all that stuff. For me, there's grab a drink of water, look around the room, contemplate my choices, but not for these guys. But that's what separates us from them, right? <laughs> exactly right. Julia Hannaford, gymnast since the age of four. 
and doing very well. Another one of those athletes from Tamworth. Now, is there something in the water at Tamworth? Jake Douglas is there. Georgia Pryor is there. Amber Cohen still progressing very well. A bit over eight and a half minutes down. 17 minutes on our time cap. One thing you'll notice about a lot of these athletes at this level of competition is that their technique doesn't change when they're under fatigue. Their body still stays in nice positions. The squat clean, elbows high, full squat. Fatigue isn't affecting their form at all. Now, Pip, Julia and Amber heading down the floor here. Do you just walk that split second quicker and get a little bit of a strut on just to show your competitor, hey, I'm here? Is that what you do? Look, they, most for the most part, they're aware of each other. They, a lot of athletes will say they're running their own race, but there's eyes darting around the floor. <laughs> Amber, dispensing with the deadlift pretty quickly. Pretty impressed with these two ladies in particular, Julia Hannaford and Amber Cohen. Their dumbbell bench has been awesome. She's been really smart with her entry onto her dumbbell bench. She's got great positioning getting the tops of those dumbbells down to the shoulders, no problem at all. That's what clean from Amber Cohen. She's impressing me. Talia Jordan, Amanda McKay, getting through their squat cleans. Two different shoes and socks. I saw that yesterday from Julia Hannaford. It's messing with me a little bit. I thought she was just wearing one sock on one <laughs> foot. I didn't realize it was two different shoes. Hey, you gotta mix things up while you're on the floor. Hannaford taking a, another break. Central coast of New South Wales, Her husband Dallas, a little dog, Mara. She just turned 28 last week. So happy birthday for last week, Amber Cohen. It's funny, we've seen a couple of competitive swimmers. Amber Cohen is one of those, Grace Walton is another. Yet we don't see swimming at semi final level. Amber Cohen. Doing extremely well as we hit the 12 minute mark. Being an ex competitive swimmer, no surprise that she's really good at dumbbell bench then. A test record for Test 3, Linda, Linda Barnhart, wiping the floor with that one. 11 46. She must have been running between transitions. Insane. <laughs> A couple of test records falling yesterday here at the Oceania region. Van Zeel, wire to wire. Test number one, impressive. Amber Cohen, crowd really getting behind her now. Let's head down to Kayla. I think we've identified that, you know, one of the most difficult portions of this test could possibly be those dumbbell bench press, and it's probably getting them up into the air for that first rep. And I noticed with Amanda McKay, she had a bit of a routine to get it up there, and we'll see it again when she comes for that next round. She stands up, she sits down, she straightens her arms, and she looks like she uses momentum to get those dumbbells up, which is a little bit frightening. We don't want her to be, you know, throwing that 
dumbbell over the back of her head, but it's really helping her get it in a position where she's able to be strong in that starting position. Whereas a lot of other women are lying back and then pressing her up into the air. So lots of different ways to move around that dumbbell, but yeah, I've got my eye on Amanda McKay and her little routine. All athletes have their little routines, Kayla. They might be weird to some, but they often work. Emma Cohen, far away, her seventh year in CrossFit. Ah, uh, crowd really getting behind her now. And a newcomer to this space and this arena floor. That's all you want, just someone, one person to clap for you. She's got the whole crowd clapping for her. I'm loving that we're seeing this over and over again over the weekend is these Heat 1 athletes coming out, really putting up competitive times to beat Amber Cohen doing just that. We go back to yesterday with Zach Thomas from Heat 1. Test record at 21.51, that's amazing. Amber Cohen. Heats win. Test three, Linda for Amber Cohen. Wow. And for your first competition here on the floor, what a memory to take away. Hannaford, last dumbbell bench done. Doesn't matter where they land now. Two minutes left on our time cap. Julia Hannaford. Ex basketball Oztag and rugby union player. Not sure what Oztag is. Tag or flag football, I think they call it in the US. Great finish from Julia Hannaford. Rushing back, look at that, that's purpose. I got this. We have about 20 seconds remaining for the next ladies. Talia Jordan moving into picture on the far right. Julia's just gonna come down and hang out with Jaylee Mancy now. Ben Mackay. It's got just over one minute. We spoke about it during the men's. Trying to get through every set of the dumbbell bench press is probably the most important part of this test. Separate yourself from other people just by even one rep if it's that. The best performances on this test so far have been from athletes that have been able to get through all of their dumbbell bench reps without any no reps and failed reps. Just having to do any extra reps, adding to that volume, it really does make a difference. It could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak. Anna McKay with a, a pair of 24ths after day one. And the touch and go, I didn't think we'd see it, but with time running out. Oh, now we're going. Every rep counts when you know that not everyone is gonna finish the test. And <laughs> giving yourself every opportunity to get there for that last deadlift rep but just not able to get there in time and amber cohen <laughs> hey that's me great work from amber cohen to get through that coming onto the competition floor for your first time as an individual it's very daunting that's right it can be very intimidating but clearly not for amber cohen and Julia Hannaford on test three, Linda with dumbbell bench. Both ladies so strong on the bench. No problems at all with their transitions with the dumbbells. No problems with the lockout. Really smart from beginning to end, breaking up those reps into singles, saving the arms for where it mattered on the bench press. Amber Cohen, though, so dominant. 
And look, I don't want to speak too early, but I think that time is going to be competitive across these heats to come. Our results after our first heat of the individual females, Amber Cohen, 14.30, and Hannaford just over at the 15 minute mark. 23 females finished in North American East last week, none in the South African region. So this is a tough one. Today's the day we paint the pro pink here at Pat Rafter Arena for day two of the Torian Pro 2023. And the pink splattering you see of apparel around this awesome arena. So honoring one of our former competitors, Hannah Clark, and her three beautiful children. Unfortunate incident of domestic violence that we try and reflect on every year and raise great awareness of it, someone you knew briefly at gymnastics level way back when. That's right, Hannah Clark was a much loved member of the Queensland CrossFit community. As we get into P2 of individual test number three, this is Linda. Individual test three, 10 to one reps of deadlifts, dumbbell bench presses and squat cleans, 17 minute cap also known as Benchmark Linda. The weights for the ladies, 200 pounds on the deadlift, 91 kilos, 60 pounds each hand for those bench press with dumbbells, that's 27 kilos, and squat cleans are 105 pounds, 47.5 kilos. The heat two start list. A number of athletes, in particular Annika Roberts, I'm going to keep my eye on and in lane two. The former Games qualifier, Laura Clifton. A bit of a battle with the gymnastics complex yesterday afternoon in test two. Look for her to bounce back and bounce back big in test number three. daunting music waiting for the start. Had the athletes take a lot of deep breaths. Heat number two of test three. Day two here at Victorian Pro. And what a day. Beautiful sunshine out. In our open air arena here in southeast Queensland. Battling through Linda, our recipe is for success thanks to RP Strength. Avoid failing bench reps, smooth barbell cycling and fast transitions on and off the bench. And we saw Amber Cohen and Julia Hanford do just that and as did Laura Clifton. No surprises there and she's fast on oh, these wow. bench press. Have a go at that. I've been wondering if Laura was going to bounce back after yesterday. She is on a mission. Oh, she didn't even let that one settle. She's in a rush. She's actually forcing the bar to the ground. We spoke about that with the males, not letting that bar bounce around the floor, spending extra time and energy, putting it back into place. She's keeping her hands over the bar, pushing it back down to the ground and picking it up again. That's experience. Now Laura Clifton, affiliate owner, crossing our side, and her affiliate went to the games two years ago. Qualified here. Oh, she's focused, ready to go. She opens her affiliate. The pandemic hits a month after she opens. She's got to shut down for another seven months before she reopens again. Nightmare material. Oh, absolutely. And, and an unfortunate nightmare that a lot of gyms went through. 
And Laura got a bit of a wake-up call from coach Kramihana Mitchell that she wasn't training hard enough. So January 1st, guess what? Laura, you're running 5K a day. And guess how much Laura likes running? If it's on a scale of 1 to 100, it's about minus a million. I bet she likes a bench press, though. She, she likes running now, but she also does like bench press. Now, Amanda Barnhart's time. Something to keep in the back of your mind. 11.46 from the North American East semi-final last week. If Laura wants to have a go at Amanda Barnhart's record, she's going to have to keep this speed of barbell cycling up. I don't think that's going to affect her on the dumbbell bench at all. She's very strong on there. The weight posing no problem at all. It's 27 kilos each hand, which is quite heavy, but not for Laura. Laura battling through, and she's about getting close to that halfway point of the rep scheme. But let's head down to the VIP area. Kayla Banfield with someone very special. You got it, Jeremy, and I reckon this is my favorite seat in the house. It's awesome. It is right in front of the finish line. And you said it, I have found myself a VIP, a very familiar face in Cara Saunders. And I think I'll just ask, I'll start with a big picture question, and that's, can you give us a life update? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Um, it's amazing to see you all out here, firstly. Um, I haven't actually made it out here yet. I've been busy, super busy. But um, life's good. I can't complain. I'm pretty busy growing baby number two. That takes up most of my time and energy. Um, and looking after a four-year-old, of course. Um, and working my business in the off season, it's um, something that I don't have a lot of time for when I'm competing uh, or like training for so many hours. So I've really taken this time to really get into it and really build it and be a part of that while I have this extra time, which has been super fun and it's still allowed me to be like really involved with this community at the same time. And you mentioned you got a four-year-old. She had a birthday yesterday, right? And we were talking about how she thought that the Torium Pro was actually at her birthday party. How was the day yesterday? Yeah, yeah it was amazing. Um, look, we had a day. We did all of like the girl things and ate pancakes and wore sparkly dresses, you know, all the, all the stuff that you do when you're four. Um, but yeah, she's got such fond memories of being here last year for her birthday. Um, and thinking that all of the celebrations were for her. Everyone's saying her happy birthday, it was amazing. Um, so yeah, but she's been busy being a shopkeeper right now, but yeah, it's, it's been really cool. And you may not have thought this far ahead. I know you're six and a half months pregnant, but will we see a return of Cara the athlete? Look, I said this last time when I had Scott in, it really worked out for me, so I think with pregnancy and it's such an unknown journey and it can be so different every time that I kind of treat it like riding a wave and I don't really know what the wave's going to present. So number one priority is healthy me, healthy baby, life is good, family's good, that's always my number one priority and then I'll start training, I'll start rehabbing and I'll see where that takes me. Um, and I just don't know what that'll look like. I still love being on the competition floor. I love being in this environment, but I'm also super realistic about how much I have to give to my children um, and how much it really takes to be at the top. So um, I haven't written off the idea of teams or like some other avenues, but I'll take it one step at a time. I think that's a great approach to take. Now, our women are currently taking Linda at the moment. If you were to do this test, how would you break it up? Look, I think the main theme for this workout, I did say before, it's a very sneaky workout. It can also get in your head in the way of just the volume and just the constant repetition. It's easy to get lost um, and to lose focus and to take your eyes off the prize at the end. So... <laughs> Laura's crushing, clearly. Um, it's all about momentum. So the way I'd be approaching it is with a sense of momentum, never lose that momentum, 
with just enough to shift that momentum into urgency. So you want to be able to flick that switch and really hustle on the tail end. The reason you don't want to be too urgent too soon is because obviously there are a lot of repetitions. There's a lot of transitions and there's a lot of volume. Um, so you need to take that into consideration. But there's also a lot of time to be lost. You know, moving from that deadlift and then especially with dumbbells, you know, they take a little bit more to get set up. You know, you need to get them up onto your knees and get them up and make sure you're hitting that standard unilaterally, then having to get them back to the floor safely before progressing forward. So there's a lot of time to be lost. So you need to stay focused with that continuous momentum, just enough to put the, floor, the foot down at the end. And you mentioned Laura Clifton is absolutely crushing it. Who have you got your eye on for this event? Well, right now I have my eye on the cute ALC um, outfits that I can see from my, from my shop. Shout out to the girls. Um, but honestly, they all look like they're doing really well. They're keeping a good flow. Um, and you definitely need to stay in your own lane. Obviously, Laura's super strong um, and strong in that press horizontally. So she's able to just keep that urgency earlier. And I think you have to understand your own limitations. But so far, it looks like these girls are really doing a great job of staying in their own lane and moving at the tempo they can. I can't see too many heads getting lost just yet. They're running their race and doing the best they can, especially with that heavy-ish um, dumbbell bench, yeah. Thank you so much to you for your time, Cara. We'll let you get back to that crazy four-year-old and your stand. Thanks, Cara. Thank you so much for having me, and it's amazing to see all you guys out here. Have a great weekend. Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Carla, and thanks to one of the athletes we're not seeing on the competition floor this weekend, Cara Saunders. Tia, the other one we're not going to see this weekend, and a new female champ for the first time in a very long time, Pitt Malone, as Laura Clifton is, as Cara put it, crushing Linda, and we'll keep an eye on that test record time as Laura now fails her first rep. And that test record from Amanda Barnhart of 11.46 in the Southeast American semi-final last week is probably safe for another week. Tommy Gregory. Steady as she goes. Daisy McDonald to her left, and Al right on screen. CrossFit Wolfton down in Melbourne. That, no, you didn't miss it. It wasn't a blink. It was Laura Clifton hustling to that barbell. She just recovered really well off that last dumbbell bench. She failed a rep and then dropped the dumbbells on herself, but. She's made it back to the barbell very quickly. And it was as Kara said, there, it's a lot of volume on this particular test. A lot of reps, 10 all the way down to one. It's knowing when to flick the switch and speed it up, but not too early. You know your strengths and weaknesses as an athlete, the programming comes out and you look through that list and you go, yes, no, yes, no, maybe, yes, no. Laura Clifton looks at this and goes, this is good, but it's not just about flashing the pan, getting one good result, you need to make sure you're maintaining that across the weekend to the best of your ability. That's right, consistency is key in our sport especially when there's three tickets on the line to the CrossFit Games. You don't have to win every event. You do need to be consistent. Annika Roberts heading back. Daisy McDonald, 21-year-old. Gymnast, number of gymnasts do so well barbell movement or weighted movements just to that body awareness body awareness and also being able to get your body into the right positions
just out of screen getting started as Laura Clifton. This will probably be the last time she chalks up. She's only got nine reps to go. Laura's at that crucial point of this test where she's done a lot of work very quickly but it could all come tumbling down if she doesn't keep control of those dumbbells. Annika Roberts chipping away in lane number six as Laura Clifton heads back now for the sets of two. She's trying to hustle now. That test record from Amanda Barnhart. Wow. Super impressive. So fast. And for the men, Sam Cornway A 12 12. Go out setting the standard early. And Laura with that big hinge straight arm. Athletes having to start the movement from the top, not the bottom. Five reps now, Laura Clifton. Transition's key now, speed. going to stop her from finishing in the next 10 seconds. Laura Clifton. 14-10, unofficial time. And a great bounce back. A great bounce back. I was a little bit worried there a few sets back when she started to fail her dumbbell bench press, but what a recovery. Annika Roberts on the sets of three. She'll be done in about the next 90 seconds. 14, 10, official time through. Daisy McDonald. Started crossing in lockdown in 2020, how about that? Fast forward three years, here she is. And such a youngster as well. Her mum's also competing out the back in the community division in the Masters. Speaking of families, Annika Roberts, 18 year old son, Johan, competing in the individual male field, and I know you love this story. <laughs> Love it. Mum Annika. She's going to go very close to finishing this on the sets of two now. About 90 seconds left on the clock. Not an issue at all, Annika Roberts. South Island of New Zealand. She needs to hustle through these last couple of reps to get on the set to one under the time cap. We've got 40 seconds. The deadlift's not going to take long. The time is going to be taken getting set on that bench. Daisy bolting back as well. And here comes Beck Glenister into position. Annika, 30 seconds. She better move. She'll get all the reps done. Will she finish over the finish line in time? Oh, 
Yes, she will, with two seconds to spare. And I'm going to say it's super mum, Annika Roberts. Laura Clifton, that was a finish she needed on test three. That'll be a very competitive time, and Annika Roberts sneaking in. I knew it was close. Two seconds, I called, but about a second and a half. And it will come down to the number of reps completed by the rest of the field. As I mentioned earlier, 23 out of the 60 completing Linda in the North America East semi-final last week. None in the Africa region. This one proving to be very difficult. Two heats down, two to come. We'll be back with heat number three very soon. Competition continuing here at Pat Rafter Arena for day two of the Torian Pro 2023, presented by TWL. Part of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games semi final season. Jeremy Austin, Pitt Malone, Caleb Andrew with you. This is individual test number three. Individual test three, 10 to 1 reps of deadlifts, dumbbell bench presses, and squat cleans. 17 minute cap. It is traditionally known as Benchmark Linda. The variation being the dumbbell bench. The weights for the women, 200 pounds on the deadlift. That's 91 kilos. They've got 60 pound dumbbells in each hand, 27 kilos. And the squat cleans are 105 pounds, 47.5 kilos. Heat list for heat number three. Some athletes in this field that really need to get a move on Maddie Shelling in the top 10 after day one of competition. No doubt Olivia Smoothie going to relish this heavy dumbbell bench. Ryan Chalice coming in third place qualifier after the quarterfinals. Proficient weightlifter, very proficient as a gymnast. Tough challenge ahead of these ladies. Emily Atten getting in the groove. Uh, 
underway and Daniel Ford just rolling to the bar. Let's start things off for Linda. And that recipe's for success, all thanks to RP Strength. Avoid failing bench reps, smooth barbell cycling and fast transitions on and off the bench. All of the best times we have seen on this test so far have done exactly that. Smooth transitions on and off the bench. And also not going to failure on those reps. Now the two athletes I've got my eye on in this heat is Olivia Smoothie in lane number one on the sneaky outside lane. And also Katie Brock in lane number seven. Laura Clifton set the standard in the previous heat on how to get through efficiently, smoothly, minimizing your fatigue, grinding chalice, doing almost replica of what Laura Clifton has done in heat number two. That's right, we're gonna see majority of these ladies doing single reps to save their arms and grip for the dumbbell bench press where it all counts. Chalice, really efficient weightlifter, super fast out of book of that squat. Smoothie left of screen, grinding chalice to the right. <laughs> Emily Atten, one of our tallest athletes in the field. her knees and pop those dumbbells straight to the top of the rep. If you're able to do it, it is the best way to do it because you don't have to do that extra rep that a lot of the other athletes are having to do by bringing the dumbbells down to the bottom first. They have to start and finish the rep at the top, which for a lot of the athletes means that they're doing an extra rep to start. Almost like an 11 to 2, even. Just adds to the like. overall volume. And one thing you don't want on a weekend like this is extra volume. Bryony on the CrossFit Games competition floor as part of EXF last year. Some very happy memories right here. 12 months ago, Team members Henry Carlisle, who's in the demo team this weekend, versus Patello, who's injured this year, unfortunately, in coaching the EXF team, and Christy Hollard, who's moved on to Torian Mayhem. Katie Brock in the far right, smooth with her squat cleans as well. Matty Schelling. Games competitor as well the last two years as part of the team. 6-4 Army Gold and CrossFit Selwyn last year. In the individual competition this year while she finishes her thesis. And Ellie Hutchins. A snippet of Ellie Hutchins last year. It's funny how some athletes grab your attention with little snippets of what they can show. Ellie from the Mesomorph CrossFit in Adelaide.
played all of the sports, Ellie Hutchins. Basketball, tennis, rugby, athletics, netball. Surprisingly, she played netball. She probably, she was either goal shooter or she was goalkeeper, and she'd put her hand up. That was it, either the ball would roll in or the ball wouldn't get in. And those watching from around the world, in Australia and New Zealand, most little girls play netball at some point of their life. It is national sport for Australia and New Zealand for female athletes. Chalice still looking good. One aspect haven't really talked about in the last couple of hours is how badly those squat cleans affect you. The deadlifts, not so much. Bench press, you've got to take your time and you can recover with your breathing. Your squat cleans, you're probably moving the fastest out of all three. The squat cleans really increase that heart rate. And as we were saying in the, the previous heat, you don't want to have to flick that switch too early in this test. So even though the reps are dropping down, they drop down slowly. Really doesn't start to feel like the, the reps are dropping away until around the five mark. Uh, Gemma Hoke. An athlete we saw pop up last year. Doing some training with Ricky and Benny Garrard down in Wollongong. Keeping that speed on her barbell cycling. As we were saying earlier, the weights on the bars for these athletes is not heavy. But mix it together with heavy dumbbell bench. It's really important these athletes save their grip for the bench press so they're not having to do extra reps and add extra unnecessary volume. Hutchins battling. Great shot of two of our taller athletes, Ellie Hutchins and Emily Atten at the far end, both taking a quick break. Emily Atten moving forward. Banksy, they call her, Emily Atten. Too many Emily's in one team, so they call her Banksy. Mm. Ellie Hutchins finishing ninth at the 2022 Torian Pro. Emily Atten to the far right of screen. Finishing 14th. I'm loving how fast Ellie Hutchins is under her barbell. Fast elbow straight into the squats, wasting no time at all. As is Gemma Hope, so strong. These squat cleans haven't changed from start to now. Gemma Hope finishing up in eighth position last year at the Torian Pro. Couple of spots behind, very good friend, Bam Bam Bailey Rogers. Jim Hoke, can you say we're at the halfway point because she's in the reps of five, but she's not really at the halfway point. She's about two thirds of the way through it, considering the reps of 10, nine and eight, calculate 227 out of the 55 reps. <laughs> that just hurt my brain. So an easier, transition through to the end of this test for the athletes. And I don't mind that. <laughs> Kick the dumbbells up with your knees as they go into position. Fatigue starting to set in at the tops of those last couple of bench press. I think everyone who's done dumbbell bench press knows that feeling when you've got that last little sticking point, trying to lock it out. 
Hoke on the fours. No sticking there, that was easy. Again, another of those athletes with that composure. Don't show how difficult it is, even if it's difficult. That's one thing as an athlete you always want to do is you want to make hard things look easy. In the defense force for five years before getting into CrossFit. Joining a gym just in the north of Brisbane here. training with Ricky Garrard in the off-season. If you want to pick a training partner, I'd probably pick someone else. I don't know how much he trains and at what intensity. That wouldn't be pleasant. Ricky kicking around here this weekend. Kayla had a bit of a chat to him yesterday in the crowd. Who's who in the crowd this weekend? T is watching with Shane over in the US as well. An interesting chat to Kara in the previous heat. She's going to see how she feels. Might see her again. <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasts, ladies. Something about that mum strength. And Gemma Hogan now moving forward. And you can just tell as we get a little bit deeper into it, once the jog starts to happen, we know the reps are short. This should be the threes for Gemma Hoke. And threes it is. to Daniel Ford, who's just in the background behind Gemma Hope prior to this test. And it was not her favourite by a big stretch. I don't think she'll be alone there. Hope having no trouble with that dumbbell bench. Twelve reps remaining. Gemma Hoke. Is the weight heavy enough? <laughs> As a serious question, is it just something to get reps completed and be a bit of an annoyance? No one in this field thus far, male, female, has struggled with any of the squat clean load. Dumbbell, yes. Deadlifts going to singles, yes. The squat clean seems as though it's that movement that it doesn't seem to be as difficult as the other two. I mean, even on squat, the squat cleans on barbell, Linda, it's just that movement in the test that increases the heart rate for the other movements. It's not particularly heavy, but it's just enough to need to have to let go of the bar. But Gemma Hope's just started the touch and go as she gets onto her last Three reps, one on each of the movements. Laura Clifton's time, 14-10. We're about to hit that. This will be competitive from Gemma Hoke. Three minutes away from Amanda Barnhart's time of 11.46 last week. And Gemma Hoke with her final rep. Test number three. And the crowd appreciating all of her hard efforts. She finishes up in the sunshine. And how annoying for everyone else will be up the floor going, oh, you finished already. <laughs>
Brady Brock and Emily Atten. Still battling it out. Bryony Chalice making a little bit of a comeback. The dumbbell bench slowing her down in the midsection of this test. And Brock, she's got twos. harder than the usual three bars of death because normally on Linda with a barbell you get to those last couple of reps and you can really run home with it. On the dumbbells if something goes wrong you're just stuck sitting there hoping that it comes back. And moving to the bar as Brock heads back for her final three reps. Last minute Atten has to move. Katie Brock will get finished. Chalice back. Final deadlift. Atten moving to the dumbbell bench. Last rep for Katie Brock. Brisbane girl in lane seven will charge on. chance. Oh, the race is on. Whoa. And that's why we have chip timers. Have to get those results in a sec, but that one is going to be tight. And he brought a good results. Gemma Hope, exactly what she needed to do. Currently sitting in 12th position. And that didn't seem all that difficult for Gemma. Ah! Gemma Hope did not look like it was much trouble at all from start to finish. Squat cleans didn't change at all. Same speed the whole way through, but really the dumbbell bench press. She just did not look like it was strenuous at all. Emily Atten also really impressive this weekend. Important for her, sneaking under that time cap. But Gemma Hope, competitive time. A finish in this test that she needs on that leaderboard. Interesting and results of heat number three. Hoke in 1434, just 24 seconds behind. Heat number two is Laura Clifton. Katie Brock in the second. Oh, and Ronnie Chalice getting an extra four points over Emily Atten with a very close time between three and four. One more heat to come for the individual females. And we'll be back with our final heats of the individual females. Heat number four for test three, Linda, in just a few moments. Welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena. 
This place is going off. Day two of the Torian Pro, the Oceania semi-final, part of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games semi-final series. Jeremy Austin, Pip Malone, Caleb Banfield with you, and heat number four has hit the floor. For test number three, this is Linda. Individual test three, 10 to one reps of deadlifts, dumbbell bench presses, and squat cleans. 17 minute cap. The weights for the women, 200 pounds on the deadlift, 91 kilos. The dumbbells are 60 pounds each, 27 kilos. And the squat cleans are 105 pounds, 47.5 kilos. And there's pink everywhere today. We paint the pro pink on Saturdays here at the Torian Pro. Our heat list for the start. We had a bit of a shake up on the female leaderboard yesterday. We are going to get more today with three tests, 300 points available. Jamie Simmons, great in test number two. Catelyn Van Teel was great in test number one. Keep your eyes on young Emily DeRoy. Underway for our fourth and final heat for test three, Linda. And this is going to be a tussle up and down the competition floor. Best way to do that is with our recipe for success, XRP Strength. Avoid failing bench reps, smooth barbell cycling, and fast transitions on and off that bench. Last two heats proved very interesting. Laura Clifton, Gemma Hope, two in particular. And all trying to chase down the time set by Amanda Barnhart last week, 11 minutes, 46 seconds. And surprise, surprise, Ellie Turner out in front. position after two tests yesterday third and an 11th probably not the fanfare we we're expecting a brown ellie turner she's been in the games twice in the last two years very competent getting a win at the crossfit games last year as well but she's probably happy she's flying under the radar as well Justin, if you're listening on as well back home, welcome to you as well. Ellie would know coming to this weekend, she doesn't need to win every test. She just needs to be consistently up in that top five. And that's all she needs to do to make it back to the CrossFit Games. Let's head down now to Kayla Banfield on the competition floor. And I believe I've got the best seat in the house, Jeremy. I've got direct access to these athletes. I get to watch them while they're doing the test. And I also like to hang out behind the scenes backstage a little bit in between, just to see if I can hear anything about what the athletes are talking about, you know? And, and we think when we look at our elite athletes, they'd eat, sleep and breathe CrossFit. That's all they would talk about. And so I was, you know, trying to eavesdrop. And I said, oh, what are you guys talking about? And, and Caitlin Mark said to me, she's like, we do not talk about CrossFit. We talk about going to the beach and eating donuts. And, I just thought that was great. You know, when you're on the competition floor, it's it's game time. But Pip, I'm sure you can relate. Once you're off that competition floor, you've got to take your mind off it for once, right? That's right, Kayla. Obviously, training and CrossFit is the biggest part of a lot of these athletes' lives. Not the only part, but a major part. But it's important to have balance in life. It helps just with your mental game staying in control out there, knowing that you're going home to something else. Kayla, you had me at donuts. <laughs> 20% off Noble with purchase of any 2023 Noble CrossFit Games semi-final tickets. 
just scan that the QR code. This is week two, the semi-final competition. One week to come. Find out who is going to be at the CrossFit Games in Madison, Wisconsin in August this year. Hey, sorry I didn't answer you, Jeremy. I had my mouth full. I was just eating a donut. Well, You've got to find something to fill the time down here. We'll bring some up here later on then. You got it. <laughs> Ellie Turner on the charge. One thing that you really do see backstage here, and we've spoken about it all weekend, but is the camaraderie between athletes. They, they, they really are friends outside of competition. You know, they, they're versing each other when they come out on the competition floor, but the minute the test is finished, they're high-fiving each other, they're chatting about how the test went, and they're giving the, the athletes in the next, next heat any tips that they can. And it's one of my favorite part of the sports is just watching everyone come together after they finish competing. Pip, you can probably attest to that as well. I don't know, something about the Oceania region that's, we're just tight down here. I think at the end of the day, you're all going through the same thing. You're all feeling the same pain of these workouts, the stress that comes with it, the pressure. Everybody just wants to get over that finish line. And a lot of these athletes have grown up together, right? You know, some of these athletes have been out here for 10 years, so they've watched They've watched each other, they've been by each other's side as they've climbed through the ranks and they've got quite a history together, which is really nice. We hit the five minute mark on our 17 minute time caps on test three for Linda. Your name starts with E on the competition floor. You're in the lead. Ellie Turner, Emily DeRoy, two of the athletes earmarked to do well in test three, are proving us right, which is always a good thing. They are step for step, almost synchronizing their movements. 14.10, time to beat in this region by Laura Clifton. Gemma Hoke, the previous heat in 14.30. But Amanda Barnhart, 11 minutes 46. An incredible time in the South American East semi final last week in Orlando, Florida. We're going to see that beaten tomorrow in the North American West semi-final, which is currently going on as well. And the South American semi-final, Copa Sur, is on as well. Plenty of CrossFit action right across your weekend. For your official results, head to games.crossfit.com. Matty Sturt moving up as well. Three athletes we've spoken about a lot. Three games qualifiers as well, Matty Sturt. Caitlin Van Ziel and Jamie Simmons in lanes three, four, and five are probably going their own little battle as Ellie Turner and Emily DeRoy battle out. And Emily DeRoy just ahead. Far right of screen. Look, on this test three this morning, I think this is the Ellie Turner that everyone has been hoping to see this weekend. But Emily DeRoy, this young star, she is impressing me so much this weekend. She's just got so much grunt in her for a young star. She just attacks and I love it. Anyone who's not from Australia, New Zealand, who's tuning in, please <laughs> describe a grunt for them. <laughs> grunt is getting in there and having a go and, she, and not holding back. Having a dig. Now you talk about bouncing back for Ellie Turner. Last year she finishes with a fourth, tenth, fourth, second, fifth, and fifth. So nothing that's going to put a flag up and go, hey everybody, here I am. She's one of those great, well-rounded athletes that comes in. Ellie starting off yesterday with a third and an eleventh. Contemplating life for a little bit. Do I really have to pick these dumbbells up again? And that looks pretty easy for Ellie. We'll see different positions of those dumbbells 
How does a 45 degree angle relate to not a normal natural hand position as you'd find a barbell in if you're doing bench press? How does that differ? Well, with the dumbbells this weekend, the standard, they have to touch the top of those dumbbells to their shoulders. As opposed to with the barbell usually having to touch their chest. So it does change the angle of it. Ellie Turner very strong in the shoulders. She's able to flare her elbows out that bit more to touch those dumbbells to her shoulders. Ellie Turner starting to drop the hammer now. But still in second position behind Townsville's Emily DeRoy. All the sports growing up. Great at water polo. You speak about that grunt, that grit that you've got. That's a gritty sport. Rugby union as well. There's another gritty sport. So we know she's got a little bit of that under the hood and pull it out when she needs to. Keep in mind, three spots to the CrossFit Games coming up. Our podium gets presented tomorrow. There's 300 points on the line today, and you've got to pick your battle. Well, this lady right here, Ellie Turner, I'd say that is somewhere towards the front of her mind how many points she could grab herself today. The tests are very well suited to her. Still just moving so fast on that barbell. Uh -huh. Here we go. We got the jog happening now as Emily DeRoy just ahead. She's on her fours. Turner at that crucial point of test three, Linda. Making sure that every single dumbbell bench counts. A no rep at this point could be costly. Lisa Roy, touch and going now. She is three reps ahead. Ellie going single reps. The roll forward. seconds there that Ellie Turner can use to catch up. Emily DeRoy not moving her barbell into the right spot. And there's a reason for that. The barbells are staggered across the competition floor for safety. Therefore, they must be moved to the right positions. And now, does the door open just a little bit? for Ellie Turner to sneak in and grab the win for Emily DeRoy. Amanda Barnhart's time is happening in five seconds. These athletes still have three of their bench and the rest of the reps to go. Emily DeRoy just got on and off that bench so fast, we didn't even see it happen. DeRoy, two reps ahead. Both athletes in the field ahead of Laura Clifton's split time. We are going to be having to hold on our hats a little bit here. We've got a race coming. DeRoy still two reps ahead. Can she hold her lead? Still two reps ahead, Emily DeRoy. You mentioned Pip. Transition on and off the bench fast. It's faster than Ellie Turner. Touch and go. Emily DeRoy, second rep, done. Still with that two rep lead. Ellie Turner has got to run down the floor. Both are going to beat Laura Clifton. And 100 points here for Emily DeRoy. He's going to throw things wide open. Wow. Super work, Emily to Roy. One rep left. Emily to Roy. 100 points, which will jump her to 260 points. And Ellie Turner, she'll come away with 96. And now things.
things get interesting. That was a finish Ellie Turner needed. I don't think she knew Emily DeRoy was there until towards the end. Oh, well, I think she knew she was there. <laughs> but fourth and fifth on the leaderboard coming into today have finished first and second. Point split going to be interesting. Back to third place, Maddie Sturtz. Second place, Jamie Simmons. And first place, Caitlin Van Seel. Keep in mind, Kate, Laura Clifton's time is about to tick over. And Grace Walton is just outside of Laura Clifton time. That's a fourth for her. coming the way of Grace Walton, who's currently in sixth. Eight points between Jamie Simmons, Caitlin Van Ziel. And as you progress down the scoring table, four points per place until we hit that tenth position. Two minutes left on our clock. Damage control coming for athletes in the top three. Jamie Simmons. Last three reps. Jamie Simmons, an important result coming up for her if she can finish under time cap. Maddie Sturt also aware of where she is. She's dropped the hammer. Knowing that finishing ahead of Caitlin Van Ziel could help her point spread. Big time. And the closer we get to that 17 minute time cap, the closer we get to the capped athletes and we don't know exactly what the split's going to be based on reps after the time cap. Jamie Simmons. Currently in second, 180 points. Dad, Michael, Mum, Anita will be ecstatic with what they've seen in the first day and a half of competition here for Jamie Simmons. Husband Elliot will be pretty happy too. And here comes Maddie Stern, silent assassin. with 40 seconds left. Can Caitlin get done under cap? Yes, she can. I love a leaderboard juggle. And we're getting one here today, day two. The Torium Pro. Caitlin, it's okay. You feel better than you did yesterday. Lake and McClough absolutely outstanding yesterday in test two and under time cap as well. <laughs> Emily Teroy, the youngster from North Queensland. I love it when I say these athletes are going to do well and they do. Oh, like last year, she was one of our favourites as a youngster out there. We knew she was capable of big things. Wasn't a flash in the pan at all. But Caitlin Van Ziel, top of the leaderboard coming in with a first and a fourth. That's exactly the way you want to start competition. Where is that going to place her after test three? Not sure. Jamie Simmons, good result. But Ellie Turner and Emily DeRoy. Look out. They're coming in hot. Jamie Simmons, wonderful to see her back and fit. Let's head down to Kayla. Guys, before we get started, here at the Torium Pro, I want you to put your hands together because we have Emily's first ever event win here today. Guys, put your hands together. Now, Emily, did you come into that test with that as the plan or was that just kind of like a bonus? Um, 
I think it was like more of a goal, not so much like a plan or an expectation or anything. Um, these girls out here are so strong, so I never want to expect to win anything. But I think that being the goal definitely gave me a little bit more fire. And I was like, this is a good workout for me, so I'm just going to send it and see how we go. And you did amazingly. Now, you and Ellie were neck and neck at the end there. Did that change your plan at all, or did you just keep your eye on the overall goal? Um, I think having her there the entire time forced me to pick things up a little faster, go into my bench a little faster, things like that. Um, I probably would have been a bit more controlled otherwise. I was like, stop it, I'll just, just try and see if I can hold on. Why not? One of the benefits of competition. Yeah. Ellie, welcome back to Australia. Thank it's so you. great to have you back. You spent the last year under Adam Neifer and training alongside Justin Medeiros. How has that experience been for you? Yeah, it's been really good. I mean, it's definitely a big adjustment moving to another country. So I definitely had to take my time and, you know, work out all the little details that you don't even think about. But no, it's been really good. I couldn't ask for a better training partner and uh, coaches. So yeah, I'm really happy. And we haven't had 100 points yet, but that's not the end of the world, right? How do you keep your eye on the prize, knowing that it's a long weekend ahead of you? Um, I think it's just about doing an event, moving on from that event, and then focusing on the next one. Um, it's easy to sort of focus on the leaderboard, but you know I've got a good support crew, and they help me look forward and just put my best effort into each workout. And I know at the end of the weekend, that'll be enough. Absolutely, and we believe in you. Ladies, great job. Can't sit, wait to see you out here for the last Thank test. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Kayla. An exciting four heats of test three, Linda. And wow, we've got a point split happening. Wow. Uh, yesterday, we said we'd love a shake-up, and a shake-up we got on test three. Ellie Turner, no surprises there that she was dominant on this test, but Emily DeRoy, Wow, 22 years old. She is just physically so impressive. And you asked me what grunt is, and she said it herself best. She just thought, oh, stuff it, I'll send it. 100 points for her. How about looking across and seeing a two-time games competitor alongside and just strolling just ahead of them? Emily DeRoy, great result, 11-17, and Ellie Turner. 13-27, Grace Walton at 14-12. And we talk about bubble, we talk about tomorrow and how important it is to get as many points as possible in these tests. Two more tests to come today for these athletes. I'm excited to see what the points spread does for us. Massive crowd here at Pat Rafter Arena. And all wearing pink in support. The small steps for Hannah. And standings are coming through for our women after three tests. And looky who we have here. It's amazing what 100 points does for you. Our new leader. Our battle for second is, we well, couldn't get any tighter, with Caitlin Van Zeele and Jamie Simmons and Ellie Turner jumping in. Only four points back. Equal fifth as well with Maddie Sturt, Grace Walton. Bit of a, a bit of a gap back to Lakin McClough. Well, we've got six positions here, and we're going to get tight. We've got two more tests coming your way. Big balls fly around Pat Rafter Arena. Thanks for your company. We're going to be back with more competition day two of the Torian Pro in just a little while. CrossFit is long lasting. It's the best way to get healthy and fit. It'll also be the best way to produce the most well-rounded athlete, uh, the most athletic well-rounded athlete that you can be. Like it'll bring out the best physical version of yourself. Uh, and that's what I love about it. And that's why I compete. Um, and that's why I own the gym. Seeing what you're physically capable of, I think is something that I've always wanted to, wanted to push that limit and push that boundary. And CrossFit gave me the ability to do that.
I would tell someone that's intimidated by CrossFit to take the leap of faith and walk through the doors. Athletes you see on TV are the 1%. So you don't have to be physically fit to start. It doesn't matter what other folks are doing. This is about you. This is your fitness journey. It really is infinitely scalable to everyone. It's a gift to your kids for them not to have to take care of you because you can no longer function. And CrossFit will allow you to do that. You're going to feel better coming out of it than you did going into it. Just get inside the door and then we'll take it from there. And when we moved to town, man, we were family rich. It was great, but I had no friends. When I came to Auburn, everyone was friendly, but they all had their people. And so it was tough to find friends. And uh, that's why I came to CrossFit, actually. I believe that CrossFit is a great vehicle that brings people through the door, but fitness is everything. I mean, it's our emotional fitness, our mental fitness. And for a lot of people, I think they walk through the door of Auburn CrossFit for that hour, for that great hour of the day that provides them the release that they need. People at Auburn CrossFit are some of the most surprising parts. I, I didn't anticipate this. Man, we have a, a 92 year old CrossFitter here. Annie is famous. She's the one that inspires the entire box. My name is Annie Holmes. I am gonna be 93 in January. Um, she started CrossFit at 89 and had never really done any type of fitness that I'm aware of. Never in, in any universe did I think my mother would consider going to any kind of a gym. I just fall in love with the, the way my, my body was changing, that I was finding muscles I never had. That's one of the, the things that I think that people undervalue is the importance of we're all going to age and something's going to be difficult at some point, but things such as CrossFit make those recoveries or those difficult times more bearable because we have laid the groundwork. But in all cases, however people get it done, what matters is they, that they get these ideas in their bodies. They don't just keep it in their heads. They need to put themselves on the hook to do something that is just uncomfortable because when they do that, they discover benefits that you can't get from shopping to deal with your depression. You can only get from challenge. And challenge is this rare gift that increasingly, in a world that worships comfort at every turn, we, we desperately need it. Our kids need it. Our parents need it. I need it. And if I'm not actively looking for uncomfortable things, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna drift into comfort at at every turn, and we know where comfort leads us. Comfort leads us to places that we don't want to go. And what, we, what we're all craving is to be alive. It's not just about working out. It's about how do I deal with hard things everywhere in my life? And if I don't practice that, when hard things come, when I don't pick them, I'm not going to be in a very strong position to deal with it.
Welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena. We're painting the pro pink on Saturday, day two. Victoria Pro. And the 2023 Noble Crossing game semi-finals continues. Yes, Jenny is semi-final, Victoria Pro, presented by TWL. Exciting test so far, the last day and a half. The test for the teams is up next. Team test for one male, one female, five rounds for time of road for calories. Female, seven cows, male, male, 10 cows. 10 each, synchro, alternating dumbbell snatches. 50 pounds for the females, 60 pounds for the males. And 10 each on a 24 inch box jumps, alternating. 15 minute cap. And there's gonna be people flying everywhere. Heat list, heat one, team competition. Steel Coast, in three. Experience is gonna count for everything. Kate Gordon, the Steel Coast team. Be ready to rip stuff up with Jake Law. And Botany, so much experience. In their collective team. far away from getting started for team competition for the afternoon. Underway for heat number one. Three heats here in the Oceania region. The top 20 teams qualifying out of the quarterfinals. Our top three at the end of tomorrow heading to Madison, Wisconsin. CrossFit Games. Recipes for success for test four for the teams. All thanks to RP Strength. Communication and fast transitions. This test four for the teams. They've got lots of synchronization. They're also doing one for one reps. So they need to be moving quickly between team members. And test number four, a lot of moving parts. And don't worry, after the first round, you'll understand exactly what is going on. Starting with a 10 and seven calorie row at one end with one pair. The other pair starting a 10 and seven calorie row on the ski erg. Then they'll hit synchronized dumbbells. 90 pounds, 60 pounds, and for 10 reps, and for the other one, 20 reps, it is 70 and 50 pounds. And then 10 alternating box jumps for the skier again, and 15 alternating box jumps, 24 inch on the rowing end. There's a lot going on in this test, so communication, as we just said, in the recipes for success. Uh, team members, need to know what is going on and what the standards are. Hips open at the top of the box for each team member. And wherever you start, you'll be doing three rounds of that test. And the other half of your team will be doing two at that stage. Or if you started on the other end, you'll be doing three. And your other two team members will be doing two. So there's gonna be this mismatch all the way through Pat Rafter Arena. And all teams pretty much level pegging after round number one. You mentioned a 15 minute time cap. North America West semi final earlier this morning, Australia time, nine minutes and 45 seconds for CrossFit Invictus. But our test record went in week number one, 941, CrossFit East Nashville proven. So four seconds between the East and the West. On these dumbbell snatches, the dumbbell has to touch the ground at the bottom, both ends of the dumbbell. The athletes have to be locked out overhead at the same time. 
A big thank you to everyone joining us wherever it is. If you're around Australia, New Zealand, Pacific Islands, or if you're around the world, you've just finished watching the North America West semi-final. Click straight over, and here we are. We'll be here for the next five hours with test four for the teams and test four and five for the individuals. Let's head down to Kayla Banfield. You said it before, Jeremy. It's chaotic down here on the competition floor. There's so many things happening, lots of moving parts. There's bodies everywhere, there's judges everywhere. And I was out in the corralling area with the athletes before and, you know, as I do, I said, how are you guys feeling? Lots of moving parts. And Kate Gordon said to me, she's like, I had to ask the judge five or six times how many reps I'm supposed to do. And I just thought, what a great opportunity to recognize the judges and their, you know, help with it, help for the athletes as well in these moments of letting them know how many reps they had let, have left, especially in events like this where there's so many things happening, the athletes are thinking about so many different things. So having those judges there to remind them of what they're actually doing is probably a fantastic help. Couldn't agree more, Kayla. And speaking to Jono and Mike earlier, they said they had an influx of 540 applications to volunteer this weekend. And they had to start turning them away, which is incredible, but great to have so many hands. Definitely means we've got the cream of the crop here then. With so many applications, we've certainly got the best in the field. Hey, we know we've got the best in the field in every aspect. Victoria Pro, it rocks. Worth traveling to, I think. <laughs> Without a doubt, thanks, Kayla. And NCRS Picton getting back around to the second round of where they started. Say you're facing me, you do it with your right arm, I do it with my left. So it's the same position on the same side of the body, or you'd go the same arm. Does that make sense or not? I don't know what would be easier, if it's easier to do the same arm or replicate what your partner's trying to do. I think replicating the same arm doesn't really matter. It's more replicating the exact same movement, so the timing is right. You're hitting the top at the same time, and you're not leaving one team member waiting for the other. So we just saw there with Kate Gordon, she's having to hang out at the top of her dumbbell snatch. No problem for her because she's really strong on a dumbbell. Just Re yeah, Reese Papworth having to squat clean, a squat snatch, one arm squat snatch with a dumbbell, which is going to chew up plenty of time. That was a better rep that time from Reese. I mean, it's not a light dumbbell for the males. It's 41 kilos or 90 pounds. And then you double that to a barbell weight. We're talking like upwards of 81 kilos. And if it's in pounds, we're talking 180 pounds. And that's not pleasant either. So a lot harder with a single dumbbell. Steel Coast. Caitlin Matushka and Jake Moore waiting for East Papworth and Kate Gordon, the far left of the screen. This is where not so much communication, but synchronize your little pods of work that you're going to do in Perif to make sure you get that quick transition in the middle. That's right. It's tough though if the weight is really heavy for one of your athletes it is hard to game your transitions because you can only move as fast as they can and if it's heavy they're having to slow down a bit When 
you're talking about synchronizing these reps, cycle rate is really important, right? And, and the height of an athlete really depends, that's, depends on that cycle rate. So if you're taller, you're gonna probably take a little bit longer. And we saw that with Kate Gordon, where she is a tall athlete and she had to hang out with her hand in the air a little bit with that dumbbell. And Pip, how much do you think these athletes train together outside of competition to learn to read each other's bodies to make sure that they're in tune with one another? I think now, so many years into the sport now, all these teams and athletes, they know what's required at the top level and they have to train together. You have to start to learn each other and how you do things, your strengths and weaknesses. It's important that they're training together all the time and they're maybe not focusing on themselves as an individual anymore and training as a team. Do you think they're socially hanging out much together as well outside of the gym? Oh, of course. You've got to be friends with your teammates, right? <laughs> it would definitely help. I mean, if, if we're not here to have fun, then what are we doing here? You're not wrong. We should hang out socially, guys. More than once a year, you reckon? <laughs> I think so. See you at the games. <laughs> NTRX. Dylan Sealy looks like he's bouncing at some bell off the ground. Caitlin Porter. Looks like she's doing it a lot easy. they finished I love how fast they're moving through these reps though swapping that hand overhead really fast they're spending least amount of time at the bottom as possible just not having to load up their lower backs by standing over the top of the dumbbell for a long period of time Screen saw Dylan Sealy and Kayla Porter getting to work. Zach McInnes, Jennifer Vaughn, the other end. Zach, Jennifer, at the far end of that lane six. Judge is happy. And now a little bit of rest time. In five rounds required, and NCR has picked it. You mentioned the speed of that dumbbell, and it has paid off. And Muscle Cam is here. Consistent speed from start to finish. And as confusing as it sounds to read and to look at, very smooth from CrossFit picked an NCRS. And CrossFit Creative, they're just sending one home. If you're wondering why only one ran over the finish lines, because he has the chip timer on his ankle. Yeah, poor old Seb Vargas. <laughs> it's like the sacrificial lamb. Sorry, buddy. You got the timer, you got to go. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jack Dicker bringing the team home in his final competition, or so he says. Come on, Jackie, you got more in the tank. Two and a half minutes left on our time cap. Steel Coast CrossFit. Reese Papworth getting to work. Squat snatching to get it up overhead. 
not preferable for most people, but you've got to do what you've got to do to get the work done. But lucky he's partnered with Kate Gordon because we know she can snatch all day long. <laughs> Barbell, dumbbell, doesn't matter. And can talk in the middle of doing a dumbbell snatch. Giving Reese a little bit of advice. And I don't know if you remember this from back in 2012 when we were both next to each other in lane six and seven, I think, at Wollongong. And we had to go and do some alternating box jumps, and I thought that was the most miserable part of that event back then. Just having to alternate box jumps one at a time. You couldn't get into rhythm, you couldn't get your breath, it was weird. It is hard when you're coming to a dead stop on the ground and having to reinitiate that jump each time. Last 30 seconds now. Steel Coast CrossFit's. And they will get done. The Reese Babworth has done extremely well there. Tush just taking that in her stride. <laughs> Poor old Reese. He's been put through the ringer. Everyone else looks pretty fresh. He's been working super hard. Heat one on team competition. Now done. Well, Test well, number four. Look, there's a lot going on in team test number four. But what was evident from the start is that fast transitions, fast reps on those dumbbell snatches. And Picton CrossFit did just that. Great teamwork and synchronization. Start to finish. Coast getting through under that 15 minute time cap. A heat one done, we have two more heats to come. Plenty of action coming to you live from Pat Raft Arena, Torian Pro, day two, back soon. Athletes getting ready and plenty of pink 
shooting around Pat Rafter Arena today. Ray Yorson there getting ready to row. Eight two. Tribe, HQ, and Chocolate Box. Lane three and seven. I had a chat to the team from Chocolate Box in our break. They said they were very happy to win the Battle of the Northern Beaches. Their gyms are about one kilometre apart. There's a bragging rights on the line as well. We have one more to come. That will wrap things up. We'll find out the shake-up of the leaderboard on moving day, day two of the semi-finals and week two of the semi-finals as well. Last week coming up next week. Our recipes for success. All well, thanks to RP Strength. Communication and fast transitions for test four. There is a lot going on on that floor. As we saw in the last heat, Fast transitions between the stations. Communication on those synchronized movements like the dumbbell snatch. The athletes have to reach the top of the snatch at the same time, both being locked out. And interesting who you partner with. Different rep schemes, three rounds of one, two rounds of another. You've got to go through the process of going through everything. But this is where you can sit there and strategize and go, okay, we're gonna do better at this, so let's put you two here. We saw some teams in the last heat struggle with that dumbbell weight. The 50 pounds for females and 90 pounds for the males. got one athlete that struggles with it and an athlete that can just hang out there all day waiting for them to complete it, it does help. It's like a tennis game for these judges, they're going left and right. In middle, Aiden Poco crosses Papa Moa, Pare, Pare meaning Hammerhead Shark, Maori language. Current leaders. Sydney except with a switch and a chocolate box. So the Battle of the Northern Beaches in Sydney continuing. A chocolate box getting the jump as well, but Tribe not too far behind them. Our last team to head into position will be CrossFit Mecca and they come through now. Right on cue, Jolly Neville, Wani Job. We saw the individuals do a bit of skiing yesterday in their test one. But the teams get to do some skiing and rowing today. Much different distance though. The teams are only doing seven and 10 cows. So we're able to go a bit more all out on that piece of machinery. Tyus Woolley on the left. Tony York on the right. Representing CrossFit EXF, their team going to the CrossFit Games last year. A full roster rotation. Coach Mos Patello injured this year. I think he's having to watch on from the sidelines, unfortunately. Great community, CrossFit EXF, about 20 minutes southeast of where we are right now, southeast of Queensland. transitions the box jumps is where you can waste a lot of time you see the fastest teams really not pausing for long on the ground waiting for their partner to get to the top of the box they're getting ready to jump straight away EXF obviously have got a very good community. Pete Blacksland, great community as well. As Ryan and Kat come back to start another round. 
getting in support and seeing what Pete Ellis did in the individual competition last year, and he's doing so well this year, sort of spurs on a community to get involved more and, and push that team maybe, hey, let's see if we can have a crack and make it to the Torian Pro as a team. Of course, and I think that's why we see so many little cohorts of fans of teams and individuals here over the weekend. They get the support from their whole affiliate. Kim Biddle finishing up Aiden Poco. Taking the sunglasses off for this one. That's probably where he needs his sunglasses. Sun streaming in to lane number eight. EXF, still your leaders in lane one. Let's head down to Kayla. We're seeing lots of different snatch styles down here on the competition floor. In, in our first heat, we had some squat snatches happening. Most people are doing power snatches, especially for that heavier weight. But over near the ski erg side of the competition, there's lots of muscle snatches happening. And a muscle snatch is essentially where that dumbbell travels straight from the ground up into the catch without the second knee bend. And my assumption, and Pip, you could correct me if I'm wrong here, that that would be an attempt to potentially save the legs for those box jumps. Yeah, that's right, Kayla. But also, your stronger athletes just don't need to bend their knees underneath the dumbbell. They're able to pull it all the way up over their head in one go, not having to spend more time moving the rest of their body. All about efficiency as well. What is it? Partners who's trained together, stay together. Still on a Tegan Mitai. Great to see Dylan back on the floor after five years. Chocolate Box EXF. It looks like Chocolate Box are just ahead now at EXF. Tyus Mooley ripping the handles off that ski erg. Georgia Wellsman to the right. Competition individual competitor. Torian Pro 2022. Just missing out on qualification through to the semi final after quarter final stage. Jake Louder about to finish off his reps. EXF getting the jump on Chocolate Box on these sets of. Dumbbell snatch, and this is where EXF are really excelling. Halfway through our time cap now. A time to beat nine minutes and 41 seconds, which is coming up pretty soon. CrossFit East Nashville proven. Proving how dominant they were. We're going to go under time cap and you're going more than five minutes under a time cap. Capacity is pretty good. Lead changing. Bouncing back and forth, lane one and lane seven, which is this team here. Smith EXF, Tiffany Hunt and Alex Herowini there on the left. Chocolate box down there in lane seven. So depending on what round they're on, depending on what movement they're on, the lead is changing back and forth. So probably a sprint finish coming up. I think with this kind of test, if you've got both pairs of athletes, that have similar abilities, it works into your favor. EXF now are through four rounds. This is their final round. They won't be getting anywhere near that 941. But staying ahead in your heat and winning your heat, important.
Max Jolly. Mackenzie Woodhouse getting to work and a really good hip hinge from Mackenzie on that skier. Yeah, Mackenzie really using not just her arms but her hips as well to get in there. The more power you've got on the ski erg, the faster those calories are going to tick over. And if you think about 10 and 7 calories, it's not many and it's not a lot of time on there. It's more of an annoyance than anything. Yeah, except really going for it. Guys, we spoke about our athletes using the squat in the bottom of their snatch, but I'm seeing some athletes hit the bottom of the squat, both in the box jump, and now also on the ski erg as well. We have our athlete in lane two, CrossFit Mecca, seems to be hitting the bottom of a squat as he goes down for that ski erg, and he's just finished, but I guess he's using his whole body in this test. Dylan Mitai with so much experience. He knows exactly what he's doing. One of our smaller athletes, but he is throwing that dumbbell around like it's nobody's business. Just in the background, behind Tiffany Hunt and Alex Winnie from CrossFit EXF. Chocolate Box continuing on. Chocolate Box doing a great job at transitioning between those alternating box jumps. And EXF. And who's got the chip timer from EXF? <laughs> oh, communication. It's a killer. Alex Heroin is sending Matthias down the floor. He's going, what for? Battle for second, chocolate box. We've got some work to do. Jake Louder and Georgia Wellsman. will not win at the Battle of the Northern Beaches. That will go to Tribe, who finished second. Pete Blackson in third, and 6-4 Army Plan B. Coming over the line, Chocolate Box. The wheels fell off in the last couple of minutes. Papa Moa, they are done in our final two teams, and they're going to be well under time cap. Mecca are done, and our last team, CrossFit Townsville. Blake Hart with the chip timer in his foot. Streaks over the line. And a very quick heat. VXF could have gone even quicker. Tyus. Naya Tempany and Alex making up the team this year for CrossFit EXF. You've got to be happy coming onto the floor and winning. Not just your heat, but setting a pretty good time. Second of our heats for test number four. Heat two for the team at test four. It was a tight race between four of the teams. But CrossFit EXF, they just look strong from start to finish. Both pairs able to move fast through those synchro dumbbell snatches, muscle snatching them. Sprinting out that seven and 10 cows on the ski erg. But they were just consistent from start to finish, really wasting no time. And then when you realise you're the one who has to sprint over the finish line. Our results from heat two. Second of our three heats, EXF 11.03. They weren't in any drama in finishing first in their heat, but it is going to shake out if the other team's coming up. Anywhere either side of that tribe, good result for them in a second. And Pete Blackson in third for the heat results only. Chocolate Box with that great start ended up finishing in fifth. Uh, it's second heat of our team for test four complete. The sun. Oh, it's a beautiful day here in Queensland. Still streaming in, the crowds buzzing.
plenty going on right around Pat Raft Arena. We'll be back for heat number three of the team competition very soon. Welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena. The pro is pink today for Saturday. And we have got a VIP area as well. Chilling out right on the start finish line here at Pat Rafter Arena. Welcome to it, Jeremy Austin, Pitt Malone and Kayla Banfield with you, day two. We are nearly done with team competition for the day. Individuals to come later this afternoon. Let's have a look at Results for the teams after three tests. Crosshead 6 4 Army Endgame currently at 290 points. Torian Mayhem 285. PFC 3076. 270. Things get really tight in the top three. Heading back to Torian Black 245 points. And concept through 215 to round out your top five. All five of those teams in this heat, which is test number four, our last heat for the teams. Female one and male one are doing five rounds for time of row for calories. Female seven, male ten. Ten each, synchro alternating dumbbell snatches. 50 pounds for females, 60 pounds for males. And 15 each of the 24 inch box jumps alternating. While female one and male one are completing that, female two and male two are doing five rounds for time of ski for calories, seven for females, 10 for males. 20 synchro alternating dumbbell snatches, 50 pounds for females, 60 pounds for males, and 10 24 inch box jumps alternating. They've got a 15 minute cap. Neil is exhausting, saying it is doing it. Sounds confusing, but you'll follow along. Three rounds of one end, two rounds of the other. Complete five rounds and get over that finish line in under 15 minutes. A test records held by CrossFit East Nashville, proven last week at the North American East semi-final. A heat list for our third and final heat for the teams. I mentioned with the scoring, 20 points between first and third. And who has got what it takes in test four to keep hold of that lead? 6-4 Army Endgame, Torian Mayhem, who's going to be PFC CrossFit 3076. Underway for the final test of the day on day two of the Torian Pro, live from Pat Rafter Arena. 
We got a great crowd in here. The sun streaming through the brakes in the roof. And a recipes for success. All thanks to RP Strength. Communication and fast transitions for test four for the teams. Lots going on on the floor. Synchronize, alternating, swapping. Let's dissect that a little bit. Adrian Bosman comes out with test four for the teams, puts it out there. And you're the coach or the captain of the team, you go, oh, we've not just got to do stuff, we've got to think about stuff while we're doing stuff. This is the sort of test where these teams would have practiced it so they get in their heads just how it's working so they're not wasting any time on the competition floor being confused. But you say that, Matthias Samuli for EXF, you forgot he had to run to the finish line, trigger the tip, chip timer. So sometimes when you're on the floor, that thought process just goes out the window. How many times have you been in competition and your brain just goes blank for no particular reason? Oh, all the time. <laughs> So as long as you've got one person in your pair that knows exactly what's happening, and normally it's that person who's got a gauge on being fitter or stronger. And in synchro, Torian Mayhem, lane five, and six four, Army Endgame in lane four, hits round number two together. Take $10 off your first order Use the discount code TORIAN10. TNCs apply. Scan that QR code. Pick up your TWL bargain today. TORIAN MAYHEM done. Milliseconds before. Brandon Swan mentioned in his interview in the earlier test, two bags of fluid and looked like he needed it after test number one yesterday. But he looks back and he looks to get down to business. Close things out. Torian Mayhem still not in the lead. They're only five points back. Team placings, that is only one position. So if they finish one position ahead of the 6-4 Army Endgame, they will be going into day number three, level pegging. Something tells me that Team Tori and Mayhem are chasing East Nashville Proven's score. 6-4 Army, though, are going to give them a run for their money. Interesting programming from Adrian Bosman, adding the fact that both male and female team members have got to do the 30-inch box jump. Not many athletes out there, female athletes, like using the box. It's just so high. I don't like using it either. It is that bit higher for some of our shorter athletes. They're having to just use a little bit more power to get up onto the box. Sam Fowler, Abby Osborne. Jackson Pack, East Tamaki. Auckland, New Zealand, North Island. Sam, part of that very popular Fowler clan. Uh, let's head down to Kayla Banfield. Jeremy, as you know, I like to hang out with the athletes before and after the heats, and I was standing there waiting for this team, the, uh, sorry, this heat of teams to come down, and. PFC CrossFit 3076 had two Tupperware containers in their hands and honestly I thought they had some snacks with them and I walked up to them and I said, what have you guys got there? And they said, it's chalk. They brought their own chalk out onto the field because they said that the chalk that they get at competition feels a little bit different to the chalk that they had at home. So these guys have come extra prepared and you can see it sitting on the floor next to the ski erg and sitting on the floor next to the dumbbells, ready for them to grab and go. Kayla, I'm very specific with my magnesium carbonate when I go shopping. Let me tell you. I have no words, Jeremy. I have no words. I'm trying to sound smart. 
Jack Jeffrey, Lisa Campbell, Torian Black. A sixth, a third, and a fifth so far from the second Torian team. Jack's back East Tamaki. The best finish was in Test 2 yesterday. We're talking average ages. Jack's back East Tamaki. We're not talking a lot. Average age of 20. But if you're good enough, you're old enough. And they're out here kicking it with some <laughs> of our veterans. As long as your parents sign off on it, of course. <laughs> Marty Sykes, Roy Stun, Kelly Benfey, Clint Cole. Oh, loving the, the battle between the big units. I wonder if Royce goes, I wonder what Clint's on. I'm going to do the same or vice versa. I love that 6-4 Army are just applying that pressure and they're just not giving them much room at all. Tory Mayhem now getting a little bit of a lead on the 6-4 Army endgame. Hansen done with Kendall Peterson on the ski oog as they wait for Clint Cole and Kelly Benfey. Brandon Swan, Christy Hollard on this end. Concept crew, Jade Williams, Josh Santow heading back to the ski oog. Battle one and two, they are still battling one and two on the leaderboard. Three tests remaining. 300 points up for grabs in the next day and a half. Got to keep an eye on results as well. See where PFC are going to land. Currently sitting third on 270 points, chasing down 6 4 Army Endgame and Torian Mayhem. Things very tight, lanes two and three, and lane seven and eight. Torian Black, one of those teams that are currently sitting in fourth. 25 points back from their third place spot. A bubble position, oh so important, coming into day three of competition. Torian Mayhem. Steady from the get-go, but they have started to accelerate. Royce having no dramas, nor is Marnie for that matter. Breaking down those dumbbells a little bit slower. Changing hands on the bottom instead of overhead. Saving that grip. Now the dumbbell weights are different on either end of the comp floor. On the rowing end, the dumbbells are 90 pounds and 60 pounds. On the ski end, they're 70 pounds and 50 pounds. All right. Things are about to heat up. 9.41's our team from CrossFit East Nashville proven. Torian Mayhem team both on the boxes. <laughs> 15 box jumps. <laughs> required. For Brandon Swan and Christy Hollard. 10 box jumps of Royce Dunn, Marnie Sykes. Who has the chip timer? The time has gone for the test record. Chrissy, who's got it. She's going to have it down the floor for another 100 points. Depending on how things shake out here, they're either going to be your overall leaders or they're going to be equal leaders. With 6 4 Army endgame. Kendall 
Peterson over the line quickly. Time won't matter, but placements will. Torian Mayhem at 9.57 official. The battle is going to be who can get done quickest, and it's going to be CrossFit Geo Star Strength. Stephen Norman powering down the floor to bring his team home. Geo with two sevens and a sixteenth, sitting in eighth position. Torian Black, an important results. We're sitting in fourth and finishing fourth in this heat. Because it plays star strength are finished. Now, BFC 3076 are done as well. These end of day results are going to be crazy. Concept crew just about to finish up. Jack's back, East Tamaki had fallen off the pace. Coming in as our one of our top five teams after quarterfinals. Jack Laker bringing the team competition to a close for day two. What a battle we have got going back and forth with our two top qualifiers coming into the Torian Pro. And it's funny, you're competing against these teams and then all of a sudden, two months later, you're there side by side representing the Oceania region, competing against everybody else. Oh, we've talked about it yesterday and this morning, the camaraderie down here in the Southern Hemisphere, it's unbeatable. Liam Ford, very happy with his third place finish. The dream of Kelly Benfey sleeping at home at the CrossFit Games has become more and more of a reality. The deeper we get into the Torian Pro competition. PFC will have to see how the official results shake out. Holly Heidi. Always happy. Let's head down to Kayla. Thanks, Jeremy. I'm squished between a very sweaty Torian team. And Marnie, this is not your first time on a team, but it's your first time with Roycey and Brandon. How are the men holding up this weekend? Oh, not too shabby, but uh, <laughs> I think we're a lot better after their um, first event. Um, but no, it's been awesome. Um, being in this team, feels like I've been in this team forever. Um, we, <laughs> we get on so well, so. And that's really important, right? Now, Christy, what do you think makes a successful team? Because it's so much more than just being good athletes, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously, first of all, you do need to have the physical capabilities, like, so we balance each other's strengths and weaknesses. Um, but personality-wise, you need to be around people <laughs> like Swanee. <laughs> Maybe not all the time. Well, you need resilience, right? <laughs> yeah, you do. And I mean, like, yeah, so you need to be around people because you're training with them all the time, spending a lot of time with them. So you have to be friends first and then teammates next. So like yesterday, um, the way that we push together as a team, especially in event one, to get through that and then to come back on the floor in event two and do what we did, that shows, um, I think, our strength as a team and our connection. Absolutely, and relationships matter so much with teams. Guys, great way to end day two. Good luck for day three. We'll see you out here tomorrow. Thank you, Thanks, Thank you Kayla. And an exciting battle all the way through our two days of competition so far. And this was heat number three of test four. Torian Mayhem and 6-4 Army. The battle continues. They were neck and neck at the beginning of test four, but Torian Mayhem coming out and redeeming themselves from their start of competition yesterday. They just took off. Once they accelerated, they could not be touched. And Jeremy, as we heard Torian say, their 
friends first, teammates second, and that matters when you're riding the roller coaster of competition. Big time. Results of our third and final heats of team competition today between Mayhem. Sub 10 minutes, so very respectable. 16 seconds back from CrossFit East National Proven's test record from last week. 6 4 Army, end game into second. And Geo, star strength, important result for them. Torian Black and star strength CrossFit play. Round together in the top five. We go to placement number six, PFC, currently sitting in third. They've got a bit of a buffer. Back to the concept crew, which were, they were well ahead of. Jack's pack, East Tamaki are the next best back. So it might look like Tori and Black are going to jump into third. And our standings after four events for the teams. As expected, level pegging at the top. Tori Mayhem and Six for Army Endgame. PFC holding on to a slight 10 point lead. Then we have a massive gap from Torian Black all the way back to Concept Crew. And it looks like it might be a four-way struggle for three spots tomorrow with two more tests and 200 points up for grabs. More action coming to you live when we paint the Pro Pink on Saturday, day two of the Torian Pro, live from Pat Rafter Arena. Teams can go put their feet up. Individuals, not so much. We'll be back with the individual competition very soon. CrossFit is long lasting. It's the best way to get healthy and fit. It'll also be the best way to produce the most well-rounded athlete, uh, the most athletic, well-rounded athlete that you can be. Like it'll bring out the best physical version of yourself. Uh, and that's what I love about it. And that's why I compete. Um, and that's why I own the gym. Seeing what you're physically capable of, I think is something that I've always wanted to, wanted to push that limit and push that boundary and CrossFit gave me the ability to do that. I was diagnosed with breast cancer the night before the Open started last year. So last year's Open was very emotional for me as well. So going through the year that I had had. To be so grateful, to see how far I had come, and to be surrounded by people who love me, and to know that I'm not where I was, but I'm on my way back. Last year at this time, it was so daunting. I didn't really know what my fate was. I've been dealing with some issues in terms of uh, um, some untreated PTS, uh, you know, post-traumatic stress, and some other. I suffered from major depression. Um, I was hospitalized when I uh, admitted to a coworker of mine that I was uh, suicidal, and my colleague had told me that I needed help and um, I was self-admitted into a psychiatric facility for 10 days. Um, I've been diagnosed with major depression, with alcoholism. Uh, it really was to the point where I had given so much of myself to my work and everything else that I'd let myself suffer. Uh, I, I walked in one day and that was the hardest thing I, I think I'd done was actually walking through the door. Um, I remember my first day there sitting in the back and didn't say a word um, and just kind of looked around and took it all in and it was frightening and, and you know frightening and motivating and thrilling at the same time. CrossFit allows me to clear the cobwebs out of my head when it starts to get dark and, and things. You know, it's always there, it just doesn't go away. Um, CrossFit allows me to come in, work hard, suffer a little bit and, and realize that it'll, it'll pass. Um, you know that, that, that 22 minute wad is going to be hard but at minute 23, it's gonna be over, and it's just kind of like life, you know, like there's gonna be dark days, but that storm passes. For me, it's been a huge help, and it's really kept me regulated, and you know, definitely know the difference when I don't go. Eat, 
Yep, I'm done with my treatment. Um, I'm definitely not the same person that I was. I don't know if I ever will be physically. Um, and I've accepted that and I'm okay with that. Um, I work every day at that, but I'm f um, much better now than I was. And every week is better, every month is better. And if this is as good as it gets, well then I'm pretty lucky.
And this is why this is the best event in the world, the Torium Pro Day 2 competition. And how about that, Jeremy Austin, Pip Malone, Caleb Banfield with you. Pip, I've not seen anything so good here at Pat Rafter Arena. Ah, uh, I'm speechless. Outstanding. So good. And if you're viewing from right around the world, this is what it's all about. Australia, New Zealand, the Pacific Islands all coming together. And we have such a great community. And every single person in the stands right now has a smile on their face after that. I can't get the smile off mine. And thank you and welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena, the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games semi-finals and the Oceania semi-final presented by TWL. And what a day we've had. We need to repeat that tomorrow. Oh, more of that. That was outstanding. <laughs> Massive crowd in here as well. And we are painting the pro pink. And small steps for Hannah, the charity that we're looking after today. They look after so many people. And the crowd absolutely buzzing after that. And I cannot wait. Team competition done for the day. And we're about to get into heat one for the men. But before we do that, let's look at the standings after three tests. And the Prince of the Pacific, Jay Crouch, not winning a test so far. We see him at the top of the leaderboard. 276 points, 40 point gap back to Jake Douglas. Will Carney in third, Bailey Martin in fourth, and Riley Smith with a great day and a half in fifth position. And our wonderful volunteers and judges hitting the floor. And it is very hard, Pip, to replicate this atmosphere anywhere in the world. It's just amazing. I think we hear it time and time again from not only the athletes, volunteers and us, but this it really is the best event going right now. And speaking to one of our commentators from last week, Chase Ingram, and he said he's so jealous of what we've got down here and we've got fire. We have fire. <laughs> Heat one for the men hitting the floor now. And it is the start, but it is test number four, a two-parter. We'll get to test number five a little bit later, but this one is going to be short, sharp and nasty. Individual test four, 800 metre run and max snatch weight in the time remaining. The time cap is six minutes. And we have some heavy hitters already in heat one. Athletes preparing. As you mentioned, Pip, we've got a bit of a run to get through first. As we look at our heat list for heat number one, before we get to our heavy barbell. And unfortunately, John Champion withdrawing from competition, and that is a shame. But we look forward to seeing him back again on the competition floor next year. Jaden as a party. Lane number two, Nico Tarangi Curtis, lane four. I think he's going to enjoy the second part of this one with the heavy barbell, Luke Fowler. Different competition to last year, coming from team competition and at the CrossFit Games. As we await the start, of the fourth test for the individuals for the weekend. 200 points still up for grabs in the next couple of hours. Harry Cavalli. Harry with a 13th in test number three. Jake as a party. Bit of a battle with the dumbbells in the previous test. He'll look for some redemption in the next 14 minutes. We 
are underway. First part of test number four. Day two of the Tory Pro. Assault air runner by. And the 800 metres on the Assault air runner. We normally talk about getting a good quality run done, but we need some recipes for success. And RP Strength have got them for you. Our recipes for success, watch your clock and get a good lift on the board. And when we're talking about watching your clock, they've got a six minute cap. And they're not gonna wanna go too full out on this 800 meter run because the score for this test is max weight lifted. So they're gonna wanna give themselves a chance to lift the heaviest they can. But they also need to bear in mind that you need some time to do that. Minute down. Got Tarangi Curtis. One of our newcomers to the Torian Pro for 2023. And one of our young athletes as well. Finishing sixth at the CrossFit Games in 2019 in the 14-15 division and third in the 16-17 division in 2021. Harry Cavalli and Team Taurus, coached by Michael Gillum, one of the great coaches in New Zealand. Coach of Bailey Rogers, who is not here either this weekend, unfortunately. Hope to see Bailey back on the floor next year. And expecting Dad Jaden as a party. Very happy to be here this weekend. Credits his dad to getting him here today. Dad's in the crowd. Very vocal early on. The buzz of the crowd now, Pat Rafter. That Polynesian dance, that was just outstanding. You won't see that anywhere else in the world. Oh, great to represent many nations that make up the Oceania region. Ticking over 550 meters. It's Harry Cavalli's display. Athletes will move straight to the barbells and in the remaining time to six minutes, will try and lift as much weight as they can. Rangi Curtis, not too far away. And our weights to beat, Pip Malone, 305 pounds or 138 kilos from Jason Hopper from last week at the North American East semi-final in Orlando, Florida. The 38 kilos is fairly hefty. 138 kilos <laughs> after an 800 meter run is very hefty. <laughs> Time on the run, not that important unless you are under pressure to get more lifts in the bag. Now, Pip, we're going to a test like this. How many are you looking at, two or three? You'll be wanting to get a good lift on the board, just like that. So you get a number and you, you've got one in, in that time cap, because the score is you wait. And if you don't get a good lift in, then you get a zero. So you'll be wanting to get a weight up over your head that you know you can do, but that's gonna be fairly competitive. These athletes would have warmed up out the back to a decent weight so that when they come off that run, they had pre-planned idea of what they were gonna lift. That's some 90 seconds now for these athletes. Probably two lifts left. Jaden has a party, that previous lift looked very good he's got a great overhead position great mobility get another look at it now for his second lift 275 pound oh smooth nice 
He's so fast with his elbows and his turnover, getting into that beautiful overhead position. He's got no problem at all with lockout. You can see his elbows are dead straight. from Hiko. And he's pumped. Curtis moving on now to test number five and a two-parter and completely different tests individual test five eight snatches at 185 pounds for the men straight into an 800 meter run they've got a six minute cap or 800 meter sprint if you will about time caps another six minute time cap coming up jeffrey adler last week needed half of that expect to see some super fast times cycling that barbell is going to be paramount and now we just saw with the max weight they were squat snatching we're not going to see that this time. We'll see these guys power snatching. They won't be dropping into that full squat. But 84 kilos, that's still a fair bit of weight to move. You'd expect most of these gentlemen on the field play to be able to do that unbroken. But obviously it will come down to that cycle rate and how quickly they can get it done. Underway and things going to ramp up very quickly. As I mentioned, keep your eyes on that clock. Three minutes is our target, our test record. Harry Cavalli having a break. No rep. He got Tarangi Curtis. Then has a party looking good. He needs to get on the assault air runner and start sending it. A recipe for success thanks to RP Strength. Smooth and fast snatches, which we just saw as a party do, and sprint, 800 meters. As a party, overhead, wow, fast elbows. where the sprint comes into it because all these guys were fairly even onto the assault runner within seconds of each other. It's gonna come down to the sprint. It's probably gonna be hard not to get a little bit excited. You've just smashed out eight reps really quickly. You go, oh, I gotta to get to the finish line. But you've got 800 meters to deal with. And when you're talking about 800 metres, you never want to hear it in the same sentence as sprint, <laughs> or for me personally. There's very few individuals and they're a special breed. So 90 seconds in. Jeffrey Adler, he's over halfway already on the run. If someone's able to take that test record off Jeffrey Adler this evening here. 
Victorian Pro, I will be very impressed. What I love about this test and how it was written is that you have to be both proficient in heavy barbell, technical barbell to a snatch, but you also have to be able to run and sustain it for 800 metres. See the tape lines, Harry Cavalier on the right, he called Tarangi Curtis on the left. You can see how quickly the tape lines are going around. Yeah, those tape lines on the belt, that's how quickly they are turning it over. You can get a bit of an idea of who's running faster by how quickly that tape's passing under their feet. Jaden has a party, hand in the air, and he is starting to rock. Jeffrey Adler's time. Has gone. He got Tarangi Curtis. Hand in the air. Oh, this is getting tough. All four hands in the air. It's going to be Jaden as a part of your first in lane two. Bottom of screen. No! He got Tarangi Curtis. Hello, sir. Just gotten Jaden as a party and Luke Fowler. He's done to finish off. Heat number one, test four and five. Wow. That's what's in store. I'm excited. He got Rangi Curtis. Oh, amazing performance. He just got on that runner and hammered it. That is why. He has been to the CrossFit Games twice as a teenager. Thank you. <laughs> as a party, arguably the most beautiful snatches on the floor just then in heat one. But as a party, the snatches, they were nice, but by the time he got to the end there, it really came down to the runner. 275 pounds for test four, just on the buzzer, and then into test five. As a party was first off the barbell, first onto the runner. And you've got to think, his hand Judge's hand was in the air first. Just may have run out a little bit of a stem at the back end because he got Tarangi Curtis. Oh. And absolutely pumped to get a heat win here. Test five. Harry Cavalli slides in. But he got Tarangi Curtis. 342. That will kick things off. Look how tight it was. Jane has a party just getting ahead of Harris. Harry Cavalli. Yes, we do call him Harrison as well. Luke Fowler, under four minutes. Athletes not needing the extra two minutes, but we just see how hard it is to get that test record that Jeff Adler got last week in the North American East semi-final. Test four and five, two completely separate tests. And 200 points up for grabs in a 14-minute time frame. I'm not sure if the athletes have thought, thought. I'm sure they've thought about it, but I've thought long and hard about the middle section of the Torian Pro and where there is 300 points up for grabs. And if you're proficient enough on four and five, you are going to do very well. You win both of these as a proficient weightlifter. 200 points going into day three of competition. That's got to be beneficial if your sights are set on the games. Oh, for those bubble athletes, it would be super beneficial. But that's what I love about the programming of Test 4 and 5. It 
it's like, yeah, you can lift a heavy barbell, but you have to run for it. I'll tell you what, spirits are very high here at Pat Rafter Arena. A little bit quiet yesterday. I'll tell you what, things have ramped right up today. And not too long before we get a full house here. <laughs> So dance cam is not on, just to let you know. They're just really happy to be here. There's the Hikotarangi Curtis cheer squad. The cheer they did. Great community down here at the Torium Pro. Oh, CrossFit Dubbo represents. Oh, wow. You know when you had no words before? I've got none now. I'm lost for words. <laughs> And if you're tuning in from around the world somewhere, look up CrossFit Dubbo. They've got actually got a great zoo out at CrossFit Dubbo. <laughs> and let the dancing continue. As heat number two comes onto the floor. Individual test number four. Individual test four, 800 meter run, max snatch weight in the time remaining. They've got a six minute time cap. Athletes loading their bars in readiness. One guy who is going to shift some weight is that man just there, Isaac Newman, lane number two. Two guys, keep your eyes on Isaac Newman, lane two. Darcy Hancock in lane four. Actually, I'm gonna add another one to the list. Betty Newland, lane seven. All three can lift a lot. There's rumors flying around. Victorian Pro, Darcy Hancock could in fact lift 140 kilos. We're talking 308. Should be three pounds more than Jason Hopper last week and would be an exceptional lift if you can do it. It's funny. When you're in an athletic career, you're looking for that place to absolute shine and show exactly what you can do. Athletes like guys like Newman, Darcy Hancock, and Benny Newland, this is the stage right now. Yeah, that's right. Look, everyone loves a max lift at a CrossFit event, especially a snatch, because it is so impressive to watch when it is done well. And we have so many good lifters down here in the Oceania semi final. George Rigas. So unassuming. Darcy Hancock next in. James Thomas as well. James Thomas sitting in 12th. Get underway for first portion of the test. Number four, two parts to this test, two parts to the next. We're gonna wrap it all up in 14 minutes. Our recipes for success, thanks to RP Strength. Watch your clock and get a good lift on the board. All right, I'm gonna retract my previous statement. There's not three big lifters in here, there's four. Because Johan Roberts is sitting there as well. Very good lifter. There's 
be a good battle. Yeah, probably the benefit for Benny Newland. Benny's second in from the far right, Reese Machel at the top. Benny can have a look down the floor and see exactly what everyone else is lifting. If you're the athlete in the front, like Johan Roberts, you've got no idea. Even though you want to stay in your own lane, it's important to know what other people are lifting, because if you go a couple of pounds, a couple of kilos more than someone, you're going to obviously get the jump on them. That's right. A lot of these athletes would have a plan in place, but you know what? When you're out on the competition floor and we're talking about places being points, if the guy in front of you has just put an extra pound on the bar, then why not? It could pay off in points on the leaderboard. Jack Clark. Jack Clark and Betty Newland. Both CrossFit underway. And lift often together. Going tip for tat. With weight. Must be good to challenge someone of a similar ability as well. Bit of healthy competition. Oh, gotta love it. down three and a half minutes left on our clock for test four before we have a two minute transition into test five now for those watching at home their time on the runner doesn't count towards their score but they do need to watch the clock and make sure they have enough time to lift a good amount of weight. If they go too slow on that runner, they might not leave themselves enough time. And if that first lift's a fail, you need time to be able to... Compose yourself big time. That's right. <laughs> but as you mentioned in Heat 1, you've got to make sure you hit a lift that you know you can hit, regardless of how tired you are, to get a score on the board. They'd all have about like an 85% to 90% that they know they'd be able to hit with a high heart rate. How close they can get to that 100% is gonna change each athlete. Two minutes on our clock. Johan Roberts taking a lot of time. Darcy Hancock, 275 already. Joanne Roberts. Benny Newland with 275. I see you, Darcy Hancock. And I'm going to go the same. Keep in mind, Oceania region, we're used to lifting in kilos, not pounds. The athletes know, need to know exactly the conversion rate what the plates look like. 295 Darcy Hancock with lots of time left. Benny Newland taking plenty of time with this one. Reese Machel in the back with 230. Oh Benny. Bit of a stumble forward but an easy lift for him. Oh 290. Five, Darcy Hancock. So much speed under that bar. Are we going to see the record fall? Three oh five is the target. Does he want the record? What does he want? Points up the leaderboard. Three oh five. He's three pounds away from Jason Hopper's total from last week. Newland with 300. Machel's gonna move, he's done 245, he wants some more. 285, Johan Roberts. Darcy Hancock for 305. Yes, sir, was that a power snatch? At 305 with easy 
bigger than his 295. Was that a power snatch at 305? It was close. 138 kilo power snatch. Are you joking me? We knew it was going to be good. He just got better each lift. That adrenaline <laughs> wow. kicking in at the right time. As we now move into test number five, we can catch our breath for two minutes. And this one, a whole lot different. Individual test five, eight snatches at 185 pounds for the man. That's 84 kilos. Straight into an 800 meter run. They've got a six minute time cap. Now runs a loosely thrown around term. It's more of a sprint to the finish. And if you've ever had to sprint 800 metres, and you know how much this is going to hurt. Now, I've just got clarification that Darcy Hancock has indeed equaled Jason Hopper's test record from last week. Amazing. And we're only in heat two of our men. <laughs> no. Darcy Hancock making a splash. Now, can he back it up? Darcy currently sitting in 18. Just to note for our viewers at home, the weight on the bar has changed. They're all going to be lifting 84 kilos and they won't be squat snatching like we just saw they will be power snatching 185 pounds as well for those joining us from overseas underway for test five eight snatch 185 pounds 84 kilos Three minutes, the test record, Jeff Adler, North American East semi-final last week. Jack Clark, very quick to move. And Jack's in a hurry. Second from the top. And our recipe for success, thanks to RP Strength. Smooth and fast snatches and sprint. I think it's important to note that we just saw these men do a max weight snatch. Some athletes are better at cycling a heavy barbell than they are doing a one rep max. So we might see a difference in the winners of test four as we would to test five. Because not only that, they have to sprint 800 meters. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> James Thomas looking very good center of screen next to Darcy Hancock. Major to the right, Benny Newland. Good weights for him. him. Jack Clark. What? What? Bottom of screen, we can see Isaac Newman really striding out, and that tape line moving super quick. Now don't be surprised to see Isaac Newman first off this assault runner. tape is moving very fast a good indicator of how much faster he's moving than the other guys you can see some look like they are running really fast but their tape just not passing as quickly under their feet Newman almost at a sprint 40 seconds to beat Jeff Adler's time of three minutes flat. You can feel the electricity here in the air. The buzz is real. Let's hope it's coming through the broadcast. Oh, Newman. He's got a chance. Ten seconds. 
for Isaac Newman to get down the floor. Oh, he's gone close. Just not close enough, Isaac Newman, 304. Wow. Yeah, he knows it. Darcy Hancock backs it up. What an incredible job from Darcy Hancock. He can snatch and he can run. <laughs> Normally you waited one way or the other. Reese Mitchell is in. Johan Roberts. What a first couple of days of competition for him. Jack Clark is done. Benny Newland, the last to finish. Newman, I knew he was running fast. Jeff Adler esque, if you're going to go in the same sentence as Jeff Adler, you're doing well. But what a sprint! shortly for heat number three of the men. shy with his weight either, nor will Bailey O'Brien. Interesting to see what is going to happen in mid-pack with 
the likes of Riley Martin, James Newbery and Luke McMahon. And James Newbery on screen. We go back 10 years to Wollongong Regionals. And standing alongside him is Luke McMahon. getting their first load lifted. You can see the athletes starting weights. Saw a 245 starting weight down there. Matty Gilpin. Doesn't look like he's having a good time, but he is. <laughs> Said he had a great day yesterday when I ran into him this morning. And Matty Gilpin can run. Yes, he can. <laughs> then again, so can James Newbury. We've got endurance athletes that are looking forward to sprinting. Probably not their jam, but they can do it. We're not talking about a 100 metre sprint, Jeremy. It's an 800 metre sprint. Exactly. And test number four gets underway for our third heat of the individual men's competition. An enthralling day two here at the Torian Pro. And it's not finished yet. Recipe for success thanks to RP Strength. Watch your clock and get a good lift on the board. Test four is all about the max weight on the bar. You do not want to get a donut. That's a zero. <laughs> Stop talking about donuts. <laughs> and the very casual first 800 meters. If you look across, James probably looks the most comfortable. Matty Gilpin's in there as well with comfortable factor. But James very well balances the runner in the center of the field with a hat on backwards. And if you're going to be running distances like he does with the Ironman triathlons of 26 miles or 42 kilometers, you're going to have to make sure your running style is top notch because of efficiency and nothing else. James just looks so comfortable running. It's almost a majestic trot. I like that trot. <laughs> I don't think trot and 800 metres go in the same sentence, but that's okay. The second lot of numbers up from the bottom. They're currently at about that 400 metre mark. That is... Mitchell Case in lane one. <laughs> and just a reminder, six minute cap here. Athletes will get through the 800 meter run and go and lift as heavy as they can in the time remaining. Hey Pip, I've got a question for you. I saw in Heat 1 some of the men changing their shoes between Test 4 and Test 5. They went from lifters to runners. Obviously you've got to weigh up you know, what you want to do for each of these tests. If you were an athlete competing, would you be wearing your lifters or would you be wearing your runners or would you go between both pairs of shoes? Uh, I would ditch the lifters because they're not preferable to run in. Especially on an assault runner, you'll end up on your face, I'd say, with a heel shoe. I'd, I would go for a shoe in the middle, probably a, a functional shoe that's a bit flatter so you can hit that bottom of the snatch with flat feet, but also run fast in it without being uncomfortable. Riley O'Brien, Matty Gilpin, James Newbury now, your first three. It's your case joining them. In lane one, bottom of screen. You flagged Matty Gilpin early on, Pip. At 3.30 on the knocker. 
Bailey O'Brien heading back, pitching the shirt. Athletes with a touch over two minutes. It's not just getting to the bar, it's been able to put a lift up, but it's been able to put a lift up that's competitive. That's right, getting a lift up under that high heart rate, getting some of the jitters out. Riley Martin, 245. Sam at 245. Just telling him which way to face. Daughty, if you're on the crowd, I'm sorry, on the competition floor for the first time with the crowd in your face and you're trying to lift or you're trying to pick a point on of where to focus on to get your lift. Is that something you focused on as a weight lift up? Focusing on a position on the floor on the platform enable you to get that lift? Oh, focusing on something just out in front of your gaze that's not moving, just to help with that balance. Riley Martin, yes, 265. Both of their lifts just before the buzzer. That last lift from Riley Martin, wowza. As we move in now to test number five, a two minute break. We're gonna reverse things a little bit and up the intensity. Individual test five, eight snatches at 185 pounds for the men into an 800 meter run, six minute cap. It's fast and furious. 85 pounds, about 84 kilos. Mitchell Case lifting well. He's sitting currently in 10th. Andrew Samble not successful with his last two lifts, so that may hurt him. Darcy Hancock is going to be bumped way up that leaderboard after heat number two. Sitting in 18th, getting an equal test record with Jason Hopper from last week. Riley Martin lifting extremely well. And what I love about this test five is that athletes that might not be the best at a one rep max, but can cycle a barbell are rewarded, and we are going to see them cycle that barbell very fast. And the race commences. I can't wait to see James Newbury get on this assault runner and start to send it. This is where he could make up an easy 100 points. Oh, and the cycle rate from James Newbury is exceptional in lane number four. Riley Martin, Mitchell Case, and now James Newbury get to the assault runner. This is where you 
and attract the heart rate and then bring it back down to get a little bit more comfortable and get into your rhythm. And I saw James Newbury cop a sneaky no wrap as well, which slowed him up a little bit. The recipes for success, thanks to RP strength. Smooth and fast snatches and sprint. Well, we just saw that. And most of those snatches, all eight, make that nine for James Newbury. All very smooth. James, 10 years experience on the floor. He gets a no rep, no worries. Instead of touch and go eight, you're gonna go touch and go nine. not just a matter of cycling that barbell quick and getting to the assault runner you need to run one of your recipes to success is to sprint 800 meters is an uncomfortable sprint distance very uncomfortable Matt Gilpin striding out very well it must be something in lane number two Isaac Newman doing exactly the same thing in the previous heat Maddie Gilpin is a perfect example of someone who isn't one of the heavy hitters on his max rep lifts, but he's fast on a barbell cycle and he can run fast. 3.05, our time to beat from Isaac Newman. Look how fast the tape is moving under Maddie Gilpin's feet. James Newbreeze is up there as well, and Luke McMahon is striding out very long to get that belt around as fast as possible. The judges' hands in the air will tell a story and they'll be coming up soon. Newbury, he's up the ante. Lane four, he is sending it now, James Newbury. Oh, wow. Look at the speed of the man. The crowd responding. James Newbury, oh, here we go! Are we looking at another test record in the Oceania region? James Newbury, who said you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Here we go, come on! <laughs> there we go! And with an extra snatch. And an extra snatch as well. Valley O'Brien's in. Matty Gilpin is in. And that's why we love you, James Newbury. Mitchell Case finishing up. Luke McMahon in. And I don't think he got Isaac Newman's time. I think it's a 3.05. It's a 3.06, in fact. So behind Isaac Newman, you take out that other snatch. He's currently in the lead. Riley Martin finished. Samuel, it hasn't been the test four and five that he wanted. Far out, that speed from James Newbury. He's like a roadrunner. The last hundred meters for Andrew Samuel. We'll call him Smiley. He's having a good time. As is the crowd here at Pat Rafter. Wow. Saturday night, here we are. Oh, they're getting close to Jeff Adler's test record of three minutes, seconds away. But Andrew's uh, Smiley's there, but we'll head down to Caleb Banfield. Thanks, Jeremy and James. Incredible job. You on that last run, you picked it up a couple of gears. What was going through your head and how did you hang on to that? Well, honestly, I could hear a couple of cheers from the crowd and every time I heard, go James, I was like, oh, I better go harder. So I owe that one just as much to the crowd as I do my legs. You heard it here first, guys. You've got to be loud for these athletes. Keep them going. Now, James, we know you've got lots of other things on your plate. Business is taking up most of your time. What keeps you coming back to competing? Honestly, I just love getting on the floor and throwing down with a bunch of buddies that you know, I get to see once a year and you get to come in front of the crowd. These guys put on such a good show. It's just uh, 
make it fun, and that's actually a, a PB snatch on competition floor, so I can't complain. Semi-retired PB snatch, how about that? Was that the plan? Uh, it was the plan, yeah, it was the plan, but uh, yeah, I'm stoked and I'm just happy to be here. Well done, James. Great to have you back and good luck for day three of competition. Thank you. Good job. Ah. James Newbury, what a legend. Absolute legend. We saw, some, we saw some heavy lifts early and really Riley Martin set the standard. Oh, Riley Martin. Just the speed under that bar. Super impressive. But it was test five that was the crowd pleaser here. And James Newbury just popping a no rep in there. He had to do an extra snatch. But when he drops the hammer, oh my god. Crazy. And the hardest part is actually running to the finish line. And that's the stuff you want to bottle and take home. And James Newbury, 306.19. Six seconds away of Jeff Adler's test record. But still, that will put him into second position. And we got one more heat to come. Rob Watt doing very well in 309. Great result from him and Bailey O'Brien, 313. As we welcome to the floor. Fourth and final heats. Test four and five are upon us. And are we going to see some more amazing weights shifted? And if you're sitting at the back corralling and you hear that noise, wow, it's got to pump you up. <laughs> Individual test number four, first off the cab rank. 800 meter run, max snatch weight in time remaining. Six minute time cap. We've seen some big lifts already in our previous heats. And the run times are fairly comparable with everywhere else in the world. And it's about three and a half minutes for an 800 meter run. To give themselves two and a half minutes to possibly get three, maybe four lifts if they can. That's right. Test four is all about how much weight you're shifting. Our heat list for our fourth and final heat for the individual men for day two of competition at the Torian Pro. Jake Douglas, look out. <laughs> Bailey Martin will be there joining him. So those two lanes in particular, six and seven, are going to be the ones to really look out for. Jake Crouch is no slouch either. I love it when they're setting their weights up early. You can see exactly what we're going to go start out with. And 245 for Bailey Martin. Just to make sure he can get that in the bag. Getting a lift on the board. Making sure you don't get a zero on this test. And it needs to be a decent lift too in case you miss your next lifts. 250. Wow. This is where Bailey Martin is going to shine. He loves getting under a heavy barbell. He's going to start off with about 113 kilos. Not far away from our start. Jake Douglas in seven. Bailey Martin in six. Away for test number four. Now, interesting coming into this of how they attack the run and how to succeed fully in test four. And for those, the recipes for success thanks to RP Strength. Watch your clock and get a good lift on the board. Watching the clock, very important. I don't watch your clock myself, I watch a sundial. <laughs> but you've got to know exactly where you are in the test at every stage. And take $10 off your first order. Use the discount code TORIAN10 
T's and C's apply, just scan the QR code on your screen. Athletes running to the Assault Air Runner to get the 800 meter start. So it's almost an 830 meter run. We haven't seen any athletes hammer this first 800 meter run. They're all just sitting at a steady pace to give themselves enough time to get off, compose themselves before that first lift. Will Carney, second athlete from the left. Pete Ellis is on the far left. Will Carney currently sitting in third. Currently only six points back from Jake Douglas in second. With an eighth, a ninth, and a fourth. Very respectable results coming in. That's our second place qualifier after quarterfinals. This is where the business is going to happen in the next 15 minutes. Jake Douglas on the right, Bailey Martin on the left, and they both, you look at the both of their frames and they both have a similar max snatch. That's what I love about the weightlifting element in CrossFit. I obviously love weightlifting, but I love the weightlifting element in CrossFit that you see so many different variances in size and body weight and what the human body is able to do at those different sizes. You're going to see some small people lifting some really big weight. And some big people lifting some extra big weight. Bailey Martin, a former junior long jumper not that that's going to help him much here but the explosiveness that comes from long jumping translates to weightlifting pete ellis zach thomas riley smith your first three jay crouch the fourth zach with a great day one your leader overnights coming in Will Carney strolling back. Will Carney going back to his days training at CrossFit Gladstone with Shane and Tia. He'll be the first to lift the bar. Conservative 225, making sure you nail one, get a score on the board. Riley Smith with 2.55, and that's a fail. And that messes with your head a little. Yeah, it does. You have to make sure you don't let that panic set in. Better he's, that time. He's <laughs> fine. He's <laughs> fine. Maybe a few nerves. Less than two minutes. Still chasing. 305. Darcy Hancock. Jason Hopper. 138 kilos. Jake Douglas at the back, far right of screen. Successful with that one. Bailey Martin comfortable with his. Oh, here we go. 295 with over a minute to go. Jake Douglas snatches. He's got such big shoulders, but man, does he look good overhead. He has the mobility I dream of, and the muscles as well. Here we go. This is for a worldwide test record. 310 pounds. Jake C. 
settling himself. This crowd is going to go off if he nails this. Test number five coming up now. We're going to start to settle down a little bit. Eight snatches at 185 pounds for the men into an 800 meter run, six minute cap. That six minutes went past really quick. This six minutes is going to pass, going to go past even quicker, considering they're only getting just over the halfway point and trying to chase down Jeff Adler's three minutes flat. Now, we just saw Jake Douglas lift monster weight, grabbing himself 100 points, but there's some other guys out here that are very fast runners. We know the barbell cycle from Jake Douglas is going to be quick, considering it's about just over half of what that, sorry, just under half of what that was he just lifted. So this should be pretty easy for him to cycle eight reps. But can he sprint 800 meters? I've been keeping up on socials. He's done a lot of running. <laughs> Test five underway, eight reps. Who's got it? Jack Douglas looks good, and he's going to be the first off. Now, recipes for success, thanks to RP Strength. Smooth and fast snatches and sprint. Guess what? Jake Douglas is 310 pounds just then. Ties him for the fourth heaviest snatch of all time in the CrossFit Games season. That's including the entire year. Fourth best ever, and plenty more in the tank. Take ten dollars off your first order. Use the discount code Torian10. T's and C's apply. Scan the QR code and get your TWL bargain today. Can you imagine the roar of this crowd once Jake Douglas's judge's hand goes in the air? have said it, Jeremy. There is nothing like a Torian Pro crowd. And Jake Douglas, he is 40 points back from Jay Crouch. He is six points ahead of Will Carney, who is two points ahead of Bailey Martin. Results from the previous test import, but this one now is going to set these athletes up for success day three. Jay looking really good center of screen. But eyes, all eyes, you can't miss him either. All right, Jake Douglas. Pete Ellis is moving past in lane one. He's on the far left of screen. He is really hammering down Pete Ellis. He's done a James Ubery. Wow, Pete Ellis is really going for it. And it seems like it's early as well. 
20 seconds to Jeff Adler's record of three minutes. Jake Crouch, we knew he was moving quick. Will Carney's in contention, as is Zach Thomas. Pete Ellis is sprinting. Wow, Jake Crouch. That looks like a 304 as well. Will Carney, Pete Ellis, Zach Thomas. Bailey Martin, a great result. Riley Smith getting the jump on Jake Douglas. Zane Shalabir Healy will be our last. Jake Crouch, official time, 3.06. Oh, we have a sit down. What a great event Victorian Pro has put on. There is pink everywhere. The crowd is just electric. They've come to see something amazing and they've seen it. Jake Douglas in test number four. Jay Crouch in test five. And we have fire. And we have fire. Take a leave out of Tom Hanks's book. And this is exactly why we pack out Pat Rafter Arena every single year for moments like these that people can take home with them. Jake Douglas, he's first for clean and jerk worldwide crossing game season. He's now tied for fourth in the snatch. Impressive. Will Carney continues to impress. Is he going to be the one that sneaks into that top three tomorrow afternoon? Will Carney just keeps doing what he needs to do. Sneaking in there on that bubble. Jake Douglas and Jay Crouch. See how those times pan out on the other four heats. And what a magnificent lift Jake Douglas brought the absolute house down. Let's head down to Caleb Banfield. Peeling the athletes off the ground. And I pretty much had to peel Will off the ground to force him into an interview. So I don't know how many words you've got for us, Will, but you went into a really dark place, I'm guessing, in that last test. Tell us, what got you through that? Uh, I don't really know. Um, I, I just really want to, I, I just really want to go to the CrossFit Games. So. I mean, that'll do it. Yeah. I just, uh, I just think that, well, I'm just trying to give my best effort on each workout and hopefully the results come. And what's it like training with Shane and Tia? <laughs> well, I, I do know Shane actually messaged me before this event and just uh, told me that I had to sell myself a little bit. Um, so if you watched, I hope I did. I hope he thinks I did. Um, but I it's, think we all think you did. <laughs> but honestly, it's, it's amazing. No, I, I, um, I sort of count my blessings with all of the stuff that I've been given from them and the people I meet every day. So I'm, a, I'm always very grateful for it. Well, great job, Will. We're so glad to see you doing so well in that test. And Jay, defending champion, how does that feel coming into an event like the Torian Pro, knowing that you've got, you know, a year behind you of winning? Yeah. Um, no, it's super special and it's like uh, just confidence that I try to bring into this year for sure. Um, I feel the pressure a little bit and uh, as like everyone, I'm, uh, I'm nervous for every event. So no, I just try to yeah, carry the confidence and um, momentum for me is a big one. And with an event like we've just had then, there were so many different elements. You had lifting, you had running. How did you break it up to make sure you got the most out of each part? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think like the max snatch was um, a bit of damage control for me. Um, I hit sort of a number that I wanted, so I was happy with that. Um, and yeah, honestly, I think the hardest part was like running to the runner. Once I was on the runner, <laughs> I was pretty happy. So um, yeah, no, nah, overall, I was happy to um, yeah get, get the win on that second part. and. Uh, to make up for the best part. Well done, boys. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Kayla. We started test five, sorry, test four with the heavy snatch, and we moved on, but to a great lifting from the boys. Oh, I think great is an understatement. Jake Douglas.
just so impressive. And I want to see what more he can do because he looked like he had so much more in the tank. That 310 pounds was easy. Jake getting to the assault runner first. But we know how good and consistent Jake Brown just Pete still sold his soul as well. Jake just cruises over the line. <laughs> Will Carney, Pete Ellis crawling over the line. <laughs> Test four and five in the books and our results after heat four. 306. So very competitive times. It, across all heats, in fact, James Humery put a 304 up as well. So Shakeout's going to be very interesting. Will Carney beating Pete Ellis by milliseconds. That's going to be great for Will Carney as well. Yeah, Will Carney, as he said, he wants to go to the CrossFit Games. Okay, what do you want for Christmas? I want to go to the CrossFit Games. Well, you've got to work hard for it. Probably turn the lights off in a sec. Let's get to our standings now. After four tests for the men, the shakedown's going to be awesome. We've got a Mexican wave going on here with people's phones. Jay Crouch. 368 points, how good is he? Will Carney now into second with a little bit of a buffer back to Bailey Barton who jumps into third. Zach Thomas level pegging with Jake Douglas. So this last day of competition coming up is going to be awesome. Pete Ellis still hanging around as well, only four points back and 10 points back to Riley Smith. Oh, he's gonna be mad tomorrow. been loving about this weekend so far is how many big results we've been seeing in the early heats of our individuals. It's been giving our top heat something to chase. I've absolutely loved it. The tests that Adrian Bosman has put out haven't just suited the top heat like they normally have. There's people jumping up and going, oi, don't forget about me, which is causing a big jumble on the leaderboard. That tightness of the leaderboard builds a stronger community, better competitive pack to go to the CrossFit Games each year. Can only be a good thing. That's right, and it makes it very entertaining for everybody watching from home and in the crowd. We are not too far away from the last four heats of day two. The ladies will hit the competition floor. And please try and replicate what just happened. Oh. That was awesome. Look, these females have not been disappointing over the last two days. Julia Hannaford, the girl from Tamworth. Are you surprised? I am not. I love it. This is individual test number four. 800 metre run, max snatch weight in the time remaining. They have a six minute cap. And we have cowboy hats out there now. <laughs> and fire. Oh, she took it off. I wanted to see her snatch in the cowboy hat. Probably knock it off. If you're getting the bar close enough. A heat list for heat number one. As I mentioned earlier, Adrian Geary unfortunately having to withdraw. Julia Hannaford knows her way around a heavy barbell. I'm excited to see what Amber Cohen can do after a great test three earlier on today. Athletes preloading their barbells. 
Once they do get off that Assault Air Runner after the first 800 metres, they'll come back and try and lift as heavy as they can. So the idea is to put as many plates as you can on the bar. <laughs> and the In layman's terms. And the bigger the plate, the better. The more plates, the better, depending on their size, I guess. And, and more blues is better. <laughs> and if we had reds out there, we'd, reds are better. Because <laughs> you can't just put those little plates on there. 160 pounds. Preloaded 72 kilos. Let's talk Commonwealth Games. What are you lifting in a snatch? It depends what weight class you're in. But I'm talking about your weight class. High 90s. High 90s. So 72. That's a good steady one to hit. If you're going to probably hit 90, you'd probably start off if you were doing this test. Would you hit around a 72, 75? I'd probably start in the 80s. Something around. It's about 176 ish. An 85% effort just to get a score on the board. Make sure you don't get a donut or a zero. Oh, yeah, Jordan Air as well. Big shout out to his son Ethan over in oh, Western Australia. Should be going to bed soon. Julia Hannaford, look at the focus. The first of our four heats of the individual females underway. She's swapped shoes and swapped socks again. Recipes for success, all thanks to RP Strength. Watch your clock and get a good lift on the board. Now these athletes would have pre-warmed up out the back, some heavy lifts. They're not just getting off that runner and picking up heavy weight for the first time today. Probably want to warm up to about an 85%, maybe more depending on the athlete. Some athletes thrive off lifting with a high heart rate. Others need a bit more composure. Eight hundred meters. We see it at the Olympic Games, we see it at the Commonwealth Games. Those joining overseas who don't know what I'm talking about in regards to Commonwealth Games, very similar to the Olympic Games, and comparable events, which is Commonwealth countries involved. That happens the alternate years, two years to the Olympic Games that rotate every four years. And 800 metres is one of those distances that's just nasty. It is nasty. It takes a special kind of athlete to be an 800 metre sprinter. Not, should, not just physical ability, but mental ability as well, because that is a dark place you need to go to if you're going to go a super fast time. Oh, it's just pain from start to finish. None of these ladies would be sprinting this first 800 metres, though. Just running at a steady pace to get it done with enough time left on the clock to get some decent weight on their bar. Just to give you a little bit of reference, our world record for 800 metres, Jamila Krasilova, back in 1983, did a 1 minute 53 800 metres. Athletes on the floor at the moment. The males are hitting about three minutes 30. The male record, David, what is he? David Rashida at one, one minute 40 for 800 meters. That was in 2012. Yeah, that's why we're CrossFitters, <laughs> not 800 meter sprinters. When you take away the specialist versus generalist, we want to be a generalist. We don't want to specialise in one particular thing. Hey, we want to be good at running. We want to be good at heavy barbell lifting. We want to be good at the gymnastics elements as well. So let's wrap everything up in a nice little package as opposed to having some sort of sway either way if it's running or if it's weightlifting or it's gymnastics. One thing I love about how 
how the tests have evolved over the last few years. In the early days, we saw a lot of specialists. Now, you need to be good at everything if you want to succeed, and we see that with our fittest on Earth. Tia Claire Toomey, she can lift a heavy barbell. She can also run and swim fast. And everything else. The list is growing. <laughs> She's creating the list. Charlie Mancy, 145. About 66 kilos conversion. Talia Jordan heads back for her first lift, starting at 160. Emma Cohen at 155. Now we talk about speed under the bar. Amber a little bit slower, probably steadying herself a little bit. Hannaford, 185, 84 kilos. That is a solid lift, and as you said, speed under the bar. She wasted no time getting under it, fast elbows over her head. Talia just not lifting that bar high enough to get underneath. That's right, you do have to pull the bar high enough to be able to get under it fast and have your timing right between the two. That's where we get our hip speed from and hip extension reference. Talia Jordan going again, better this time. Those were some faster hips. Charlie Manti at 165. 75 kilos, here's 190 now. Stepping back from the bar and stepping in. 86 and a half kilos. Julia Hannaford. Oh, wow. And it's easy. Emma Cohen now at 175. Just over 10 seconds. It's about 80 kilos. Needs to get under that bar quick. Just losing it out in front. Talia Jordan sneaking in. Amanda McCoy not successful with hers either. Coming out the front. You mentioned, talk to me about coming out the front. Coming out in front. We'll get back to that. Let's get into individual test number five. Athletes don't want to put this out in front either. Individual test five. Eight snatches at 125 pounds for the females into an 800 metre sprint. Six minute time cap. So thinking about putting that barbell in the right spot and you put it out in front, there's probably a very good chance it's coming down and not staying where you put it. That's right, losing the bar in front usually happens because you've either tried to get under it too early before you've pulled it high enough. Oh, wow. Again, no words. I can't talk seriously about <laughs> things while that's happening. That's outstanding. She's having the best time. Amanda McKay, a little bit more reserved. Amanda, where's your cowboy hat? Maybe Jaylee Mancy, different experience this year. The contention for CrossFit Games spot in the team Last year, this year, individual. We've got three more heats to come. Tell you what, the crowd hasn't gone anywhere either. Fast cycle rate for the far eight. Fast. Power snatches. Amber Cohen in lane five. That was some fast barbell cycling. 125 pounds. 
77 kilos and a recipe for success thanks to RP Strength. Smooth and fast snatches and sprint. And they're not sprinting yet. They're not doing it James Newbery or Pete Ellis, but they will get there. Jolly Hannaford, she's coming to screen in a sec on the left. Looks like she's motoring along quite well. All chasing down the time of three minutes and nine seconds. Performed by Sydney Wells last week in the North American East semi-final. Week one on semi-final competition. Week three next week. Sees Europe and Asia going at it. And this week it is North American West, Oceania. And the South American competition down there in Copa Sur. balancing programming for the three components of our programming which is weightlifting gymnastics and monostructural this rolls into the monostructural element we've just had some weightlifting gymnastics is coming for the individuals tomorrow in test six how do you make sure you get through each of the components and make sure you get your balance right to make sure you're not only attacking your weaknesses but maintaining your strengths well, that is the secret sauce, isn't it, I guess, of the sport, is how do you become so well-rounded at all of them? And that is the fun part of training CrossFit, is not being a specialist and training all, all of the things. Hannaford's still looking good. Far left in the pink top black pants. And without the cowboy hat. She'll put that on later. Amber Cohen in the centre. The pink headband on. Can she maintain? Julia has looked great since she hit the assault runner. 309, the test record, Sydney Wells. Sydney Wells coming from a track and field background and a very proficient sprinter. And no surprise to see her do a time like that. Julia Hannaford. It's got to give you a boost, surely. Well, when that crowd screams, you are sprinting, and you are sprinting fast. Amanda McCry, Talia Jordan, they're in touch. But it's going to be Julia Hannaford to get off first and sprint to that finish line. Here she goes. The girl from Tamworth gets just ahead of Amanda McCry. Talia Jordan getting in. Less than a second, I reckon, between Julia Hannaford and Amanda Mackay. Jaylee Mansi in under four minutes. Amber Cohen not too far away now. Amber Cohen. Also facilitates. Gets home. Well under time cap as well. Test record after heat one. Still intact from Sydney Wells. Cowgirl, she's ready to party. She can go and put her feet up now. Test four and five are done. Another one of our mums, Jaylee Mansi. On the floor. We head back to test number four. Test number four for the females in heat one. Julia Hannaford, wow. I'm so impressed with her. She came out here, snatched 190 pounds, like it was nothing, but then she backed it up with test five. Fast barbell cycling, and she got on that assault runner and did not slow down. She put her money where her mouth was with that 190 pound snatch, and then she showed she can sprint as well. Characters of the Oceania region, Julie Hannaford, one of those 338s. 
Yoshi only had time to beat. And Makai, so second and a bit. Talia Jordan in third. And Adrian Geary. We're just joining us. Unfortunately, withdraw from competition earlier this morning. Wish her all the best. So, Pip, the heat one's done. Give me your expectation on what's happening in the three heats to follow. And who have you got your eye on? Oh. <laughs> oh how long have you got? <laughs> All night, in fact. Well, as we said before, with the men, the thing about this weekend, with not just the men, the females as well, is that these athletes in these early heats are coming out and doing some amazing things. And they're just raising that bar for our top heat and just going, hey, we got it here too. I'm a bit concerned, Pip. I'm just seeing a beanie in the crowd. I don't think it's that cold. I do. <laughs> but we have got some heavy hitters coming up in the likes of Laura Clifton. Annika Roberts, happy to throw some weight around as well. Olivia Smoothie's in that list. Ellie Turner. Grace Walton. Some big names about to hit the floor. As we welcome heat number two. And it is individual test number four. 800 metre run and max snatch weight in the time remaining. The time cap is six minutes. 190 pounds from the previous heat is the max weight to beat Julia Hannaford, the cowgirl. For heat number two, keep your eyes on Laura Clifton, number two. Remember, she's done all that running. Tony Mitchell goes, you need to run every single day from January 1. Let's see how much improvement she's made on her running. Laura Clifton is the sort of lifter as well, where a run really isn't going to affect too much how much weight she's going to shift. Athletes starting to get ready. Laura Clifton's got preloaded 165 pounds on the bar. Very happy to be here. So we go back to 2021. Laura Clifton in the clean and jerk ladder here. 110 kilos. £242 pounds for a clean and jerk. Let's see what we can do with a snatch. Erica Plasti. Gregory on screen before coming all the way from Vancouver. Uh, Underway for test number four. The two part at test four and five within a 14 minute window, six minutes apiece, and a two minute break in between. And our recipes for success, all thanks to RP Strength. Watch your clock and get a good lift on the board. I think most of the athletes have been doing a really good job of getting that first solid lift on the board. Just getting a few of the nerves out of the way. And then loading it up and having a good crack at it.
Clifton. Games qualifier 2021. So a big field of athletes, no T and no Cara. We still have five past CrossFit Games qualifiers in our region. And for only three spots, people are gonna miss out. Laura doing very well. Test three, Linda. This where she's got a chance to make a move. When we refer to Saturday, it's always moving day. And this year is a little bit different. Normally it's 100 points per test every single day. And you've normally got two. This time we've got three in the middle. Saturday, 300 points. That could cause a massive shift. Yeah, it could. And Laura Clifton, if she wants to move herself into that top heat for the final day of competition, then this test is where she's going to do it. Rachel Tottenham, Falmoina, Rachel Palasti from Crossing Ball, Gulga, Annika Roberts. Lannister, Daisy McDonald, Chloe Gregory, Laura Clifton, and finally Alice Scott. Alice, youngest qualifier coming into the Touring Pro in the female division. Baby at 18. Out of the lot, Chloe Gregory and Daisy McDonald. Lanes three and four. Looking very good, comfortable, nice and upright. Talk about tallest athletes as well. <laughs> Daisy getting a bit of a taste of team competition last year with Wolfton CrossFit. All the way down in Morton, Mornington Peninsula. If you're looking at Australia, they're all the way down the bottom. Very close to our compatriots Tasmania over body of water down there and Laura Clifton one of the first hands in the air how about that something about practicing stuff and getting better at it seems to work question will be what weight is going to go over her head Clifton starting with 165 pounds. Laura, that one nearly popped out the front. She managed to hold onto it. 75 kilos for those metric system users. Rachel Totamu, Tamawina, 145. It's about 66 kilos, touch under. Back to Lannister, 61.5 kilos, 135 pound. That was an easy conversion. 180. Nice, Annika Roberts. That looks almost a little bit too easy for Annika Roberts. Think about the time they've got left. It's only just over a minute. Oh, Laura Clifton. That looked more comfortable than her first lift. As we were saying earlier, some athletes just get a bit of jitters before they do that first one. Getting that confidence from getting a rep on the board. And Annika Roberts, easy 175 pounds. And you see why your son Johan is so good at weightlifting. Look what mum does. Do Gets this. It from mum. <laughs> Laura Clifton's just loaded her bar to 195 pounds. <laughs> Love to see it. 88.6 kilos. Talk me, talk me through that lift. 
Look, she was a bit slow to try and get under it. The elbows just not turning over quick enough. 84 kilos, 185 for Chloe Gregory, just as the buzzer hits. Successful with that 195, Laura Clifton. Yeah, she just could not stabilize that bar quick enough to lock the elbows out. So we move on to individual test number five. Eight snatches at 125 pounds for the females into an 800 meter run. But more like a sprint from what we've been watching. Six minute time cap. Julia Hannaford, previous heat, starts off pretty hot and kept the same pace. We've seen some male athletes start relatively conservative and really speed up like Pete Ellis and James Newbury. What's your strategy going in? Do you just go hot and try and hang on? The problem is when they get off the assault run up, they're sitting in one spot, then they've got to actually progress themselves down the floor to the finish line. I think you just have to go. You have to go and you have to hold on for dear life. And hope that lactate threshold is at a point where you can still finish the test. You've got to risk it to get the biscuit, Jeremy. <laughs> biscuit, cookies, donuts. Daisy McDonald. One of those youngsters starting CrossFit during the pandemic. What a way to get in, to learn everything there is to know when you can't do anything, you've got to stay at home. Chloe Gregory, no doubts. All of her team back in Vancouver are watching. He too is about to get things started. This is test five. Barbell cycle important. Annika Roberts doing it easy. Wow. She may be one of the oldest in the field at 35 alongside Jaylee Mancy. But that is not going to stop her. Recipes for success, all thanks to RP Strength. Smooth and fast snatches and sprint. Well, they've done the first bit. Now it's time to do the second bit. Now we're talking about how you attack this sprint. We saw with the men a lot of them sprint at the end. Let's get a thought from the competition floor. Here's Kayla Banfield. I got more than a thought for you, Jeremy. I got a vibe check down here on the competition floor. And I tell you what, the Torium Pro on a Friday night and a Saturday night is absolutely something else. I reckon if you could bottle this up and sell it, I'd honestly buy it. It's incredible. When those athletes are out there lifting, the flames are throwing, people are yelling from the audience. It's just incredible. And you know what? It's giving me vibes from Carson, California at the tennis stadium. It's that open air, that fresh air, the, the night feeling. It's just, honestly, it's something else. And if you haven't been here, you have no idea what it's like, but it's incredible. Now, Kayla, please tell me about Julia Hannaford's vibe and her cowboy hat, please. Oh my goodness, she was bringing it in the last heat. She was dancing all around the floor. And you know what she reminded me of? Of Tia Claire Toomey bringing the YMCA. Do you remember that? <laughs> Oh, the men, they're so good. The vibes are going to continue all night here at Pat Rafter Arena. So it's heat two. We've got two more heats to go of the individual female competition for today. Two more tests tomorrow. Then we're going to find out exactly who's headed to Madison, Wisconsin in August later this year to represent the Oceania region. And the female competition, Pip, I'm sure you will agree is wide open and potentially some newcomers punching their first ticket. Day three of 
the female competition is going to be the best we have seen in years. And not to say the performances from Kara and Tia weren't special. They are just so dominant. 2023, it is a whole new field and it's just so tight. And that's why it's so exciting is we're gonna, we just don't know who's gonna do it this year. There's so much talent. Catalora Clifton back up her first run, Daisy McDonald. And now, Chloe Gregory, your first two athletes. And Laura Clifton, the third. Erica Palasti in lane number seven, he's in there as well. Daisy McDonald will do it. Oh, the legs are heavy. And a heat win from Wolfman's Daisy McDonald. Erica Palasti, Chloe Gregory. Tied over the line, Laura Clifton in four. Alice Scott. Collapsing over the line. It's good that it's not any further than how far it is. Rachel Tolomua Famoina. Glenister is in. And Annika Roberts to finish things off for heat number two. Great race between Daisy McDonald, Chloe Gregory, two of the runners we earmarked early in test four, <laughs> probably the best four. <laughs> yeah, that's right, it really did come down to that sprint at the end. Laura Clifton and Annika Roberts off that eight snatch barbell set really quick, but we started out with some heavy lifting in test four. Annika Roberts making easy work of 165 pounds. She's been dominant each year on a barbell. These ladies just keep raising the bar with these weights on. Literally. 185 <laughs> pounds for Laura Clifton. On to test number five. Laura and Annika off their snatches first and onto the assault runner. But it was Daisy McDonald off first. Taking a heat win. And two years post knee surgery as well. Obviously been doing her rehab well. There's a heat two results. Daisy in 346. Chloe Gregory just getting ahead of Erica Palacio. Knew that was tight as well. 352 for both of them. And Laura Clifton, 3.55, respectable for her. And you can tell she has been working on her running. So coming, Hannah Mitchell, you know what you're talking about. Now, weather getting a little bit cooler, Pip. The lights have gone down at Rafter Arena. competition and to Roy in the lead with a great test number three 260 points Caitlin Van Ziel and Jamie Simmons battling it out for second back to Ellie Turner in fourth position and Maddie Sturt and Grace Walton battling it out there for fifth and sixth tight battle and you mentioned Pip the most exciting female competition we've seen in a long time that's right and Obviously, missing two big names, but that has left it wide open for some new talent and some old talent. We have some very exciting female athletes on the floor right now. One in particular I cannot wait to watch on these tests. In 
individual test number four. It's the first of our tests for this evening. 800 meter run, max snatch weight in time remaining. They have a six minute cap. Now that one athlete I cannot wait to watch on this test and the next is Emily DeRoy. Emily DeRoy, the pressure is on. We'll get to Emily in just a sec as our leader coming in. 260 points, great effort from her. Don't look any further than Heat, sorry, lane number one, Olivia Smoothie. The prior name was Liv Kelly, and yes, she is still a weightlifter, and she's got a PR snatch of 90 kilos, which is 198 pounds. And if she can pull something like that off the floor tonight, this crowd's gonna keep getting louder. Bryony Chalice in the field as well, another very good lifter. And there's Olivia Smoothie there. Don't Google anything to do with Olivia Smoothie because you won't find much. Because she's just got married and changed her name. <laughs> well, with her previous name, Olivia Kelly, she was Australian representative in weightlifting. Knows a thing or two about a barbell. Loving this outside lane, she can just sneak along and do what she does. Second last heat of this evening. Before we break, we find out who is going to lead us into day three of competition at the Torian Pro. Our recipes for success, all thanks to RP Strength. Watch your clock and get a good lift on the board. Important for these athletes to not spend too much time on this 800 meter run allow themselves enough time to get the biggest snatch in that they can we have some impressive preloaded weights on the floor jeremy i'm liking exactly what olivia smoothie has put on the bar because there's a blue plate and a green plate as i said before the more blue plates you put on, the better. Olivia Smoothie on the far left of the screen now. Definitely one to watch in Heat 3. We talk about trying to stay calm, consistent on your running. And a lot of runners that I do know talk about their head position and how important that head position is. Ronnie Chalice, lane three, that head not moving much at all. Yeah, Bryony Chalice looking very relaxed. I mean, when you're running, you don't want too much unnecessary movement burning up your energy. Bryony, Going to the CrossFit Games last year with Team EXF, Christy Hollard, Rose Patello, and Henry Carlisle. And again, choosing to forego team competition. I want to have a crack at individual. Patty Schelling in the center of screen as well in the black and pink. Part of CrossFit Selwyn. She's on the left of the screen now, next to Danny Ford. Both New Zealanders. Crowd's getting a little bit more vocal. And 
it's interesting athletes journeys as they go along and they're choosing to go individual and then they go into team later some athletes are going team they're coming back to individual which we don't see too often we don't see it too often we usually see it the other way around the individual first and then on to a team but why not if you can why not have a go at both Olivia Smoothie, Ellie Hutchins, Gemma Hope, Paddy Brock, your first four. Five and six now is Danny Ford, Maddie Schelling, and now Bronny Chalice. Now, Olivia Smoothie giving herself more time on this barbell, and we know she loves it. 175 to start things off. Just under 80 kilos. Ellie Hutchins with a 150. About 68 kilos. Oh wow, power snatch, great. Wasting no time getting a score on the board. Olivia Smoothie just missing her first attempt. A little bit too far out in front. Just not getting her head through. successful at 170 you've got to think you're on a platform you're doing three lifts as a weight lifter. you're not running 800 meters before it no you're not and you have all, you have a lot of time in between as well these ladies don't have much time left on the clock at all so probably something that Olivia smoothie is going to benefit from short time frames because once you get on that platform that clock is ticking Jump to 86 kilos at 190. Oh, oh. She's found a groove now. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit of complacency as a weightlifter on an easy weight for her. No way. I don't believe it for a second. I reckon I could do that easy. Oh, Maybe not. Whoops. Let's try that again. Ali Hutchins at 170 now. Jeremy, I can... Kilos. Sorry to interrupt you there. I can see Olivia Smoothie. She's talking to possibly a coach or maybe someone there in the crowd who's helping her choose her weights. And I, I, honestly, I feel for the athletes there not only having to choose weights, but probably do some conversions in their head as well from pounds to kilos because we're so used to lifting in kilos here in Australia. Yeah, the pounds are confusing, especially if you're a weightlifter. But Olivia Smoothie, 205 pounds. She's only got 10 seconds to get it done. Oh, I just rushed it a little bit. And I think she knew exactly how much time she didn't have. And I think maybe just a little bit too quick off the floor. It seemed like she buckled a little underneath. Just rushed that pull a fraction too early. But in CrossFit, we don't have the time. Great competitor, though, I will say. She, you could see the frustration in her face, but it immediately turned to a smile. Just gratitude, probably, for being out here. Individual test number five coming up soon. Eight snatches. Females have 125 pounds on the bar into an 800 meter run. Time cap is six minutes. Now we see the same movement, but a change of pace. Getting ready. It's funny, you've been on the CrossFit game stage twice in two years as team competition. And the nerves are still there. I don't think they ever go away. The nerves never leave, even when you're watching. I've been nervous all weekend. <laughs>
Things ramping up just a little bit quicker now for test number five. Nelly Hutchins just behind Olivia Smoothie. Ninth place finish last year at the Torium Pro. Olivia Smoothie in 13th. Always want to try and improve on the position from the previous year. And now Smoothie, Hope, Emily Atten going at it. Ali Hutchins, Bryony Chalice, Katie Brock. Let's head down to Caleb Anfield. Jeremy, Olivia Smoothie has a fire in her eyes. The way that she jumped onto that air runner, she is chasing something and she looks absolutely determined to get to that finish line. Fast barbell cycle. Not something you often see from weightlifters and not something they've really practiced. Crossfit weightlifters, you do. You know, we do big sets in weightlifting. But they're not touch and go like that. Olivia Smoothie, she is no stranger to a barbell. I imagine coming into these two tests, she thought, yeah, these are mine. Well, we always know there's going to be a weighted element coming into an event like a semi final. Happens at the CrossFit Games, it happens at semi final, happens at quarter finals. Not so much in the open, which is where this all started. February 16, to find the fittest man, woman, and team on the planets. We'll find that out in the first week of August. In Madison, Wisconsin, later this year. It'll be Smoothie, currently tied with Julia Hannaford for 190 pounds. Tiebreaker is the test five time. So we'll keep an eye on that clock. 3.38. Is Olivia Smoothie's time to beat if she's going to jump over the top of Julia Hannaford? Two and a half down, Olivia Smoothie was off. And at 3.35, this one's going to be a little bit quicker. Gemma Hope in the purple and black. Three in from the far right, really starting to motor. Gemma Hope starting to pump the arms. front on her own, her judge's hand in the air. Gemma Hope now, but it is going to be Danny Ford off first. 323 4 5. Oh, what a result! Danny Ford. And I say, pick your battles, and she did. Gemma Hope with the lead legs. The lactate threshold is there. Ellie Hutchins in, Maddie Schelling in. Katie Brock making up some time on the assault runner. Olivia Smoothie will not get that tie break time of Julia Hannaford, so Julia Hannaford will move ahead. Bryony Chalice done. Finishing up. Get a bigger smile on your face. Now, Danielle Ford told us earlier she hasn't touched a barbell in three months. Well, she has now. <laughs> She's been touching fishing rods. She's been very busy. Lots of floods over in New Zealand recently. She's a firefighter. So she's been doing very, very good work over there in New Zealand, cleaning things up. We'll go back to test number four. Test four for heat three of the women. Olivia Smoothie, the weightlifter who does some fitness as well. Impressive lifting, 190 pounds. 
No problem at all. Also no problem on the eight touch and go snatches. She was first onto the assault runner. But it was firefighter Danielle Ford. Danny been sitting up next to us all weekend. And no happier person, Danielle Ford, right now. 328.03. Gemma Hope, Ali Hutchins rounding out the top three in heat number three. We are nearly at the end of day two of competition here at Victorian Pro. So not just about lifting that barbell in test four, lifting it fast in test five and then running fast. And so picturesque, Pat Raft Arena. They normally have got tennis games going on here and it is the perfect arena to put on a show like we are seeing this weekend. And we see every year. Our standings after three events. Emily DeRoy, 260 points. Anna Van Thiel and Jamie Simmons equal second. Ellie Turner back in fourth. Not too many points in that either between her and Maddie Sturt and Grace Walton. A bit of a jump back to Lakin McClough and Gemma Hoke. Gemma Hoke with a fairly decent result then. Let's see what is going to happen in heat number four. We'll find out in a few seconds time. Saturday here, Victorian Pro We prank the Pro Pink for Hannah Clark. Competitors here a couple of years back. <laughs> the VIP area. We might go and set up over there, Pip. It looks like a lot of fun. I want what they're having. We welcome our heat four athletes onto the floor. This is individual test number four and our final heat of the day. 800 meter run and max snatch weight in the time remaining. Six minute time cap. her and Grace Walton for test number four. Very proficient in lifting. Ellie Turner's going to lift okay as well. And point spread. 200 points up for grabs. A lot of 165s preset pip. 155s. It was the top heat, bit of pressure. We want to get a score on the board. We saw Laura Clifton start at 165. Laura Clifton's currently in third in 185. Olivia Smoothie and Julia Hannaford both at 190. That's it, it's a party up there. It's a party up here, it's a party in the VIP area as well. And hasn't Grace Walton grown in confidence from last year? I'm excited to see what she can do on this test. We had a good chat to the coach Costa Illich earlier. He gave us a few little nuggets of info. See exactly how test four and five are gonna roll out.
the way and that laughing in the background you heard was actually Danny Hill Ford. She's ecstatic with another heat victory. As heat four gets underway and the recipes for success all thanks to RP Strength. Watch your clock and get a good lift on the board. Quieter than she was last year. Georgia finishing in 10th place last year. Very respectable. Take $10 off your first order. Use the discount code TORIAN10. TNCs apply. Scan the QR code and grab TWL bargain right now. Talk about pressure and who can eat it up. Number of athletes in the field right now. Jamie Simmons, Caitlin Van Seel, Maddie Sturt, Ellie Turner. All previous CrossFit Games qualifiers. Tell me about the pressure going from semi-final regional level and how much it ramps up when you get to the States and you're up against the best in the world. Look, everyone handles it differently. Some people can get really intimidated by it. Others thrive off it. We have seen athletes from Australia thrive off it and obviously do very well. But in a test like this, you really cannot control what others are doing because you can't control how much they can lift. All you can do is put your best effort forward and have a go at what you can lift. There's no point worrying about what others can do because you're just not in control of it on a lifting test. Two and a half down. Danielle Parra, 210 pounds, 95 kilos. That's not a bad weight to hit. What the girls are chasing right now. It was in the North American East semi-final last week. Jamie Simmons, Caitlin Van Ziel, no surprise, and Maddie Sturt, the first three. But they don't really need to rush this first one. It's the second one that's the important one in Test 5 coming up pretty soon. That's right. Traditionally, Maddie Sturt, Jamie Simmons. Not the biggest snatches out there, but they can run and cycle a barbell, which we'll see in the next test. But for now, a very easy 135 for Maddie Sturt, getting a score on the board. And that's another advantage. She's been in the CrossFit Games four times. She's used to this kilo to pound conversion under pressure. Some athletes not ready, not used to that. Jamie Simmons, a good lift. Ellie Turner went big. Van Zyl with a 165. Now Grace Walton has her bar loaded to 175. Wow. 80 kilos or thereabouts. 165 Emily to Roy. It's funny. Athletes doing the snatch, they get to the bottom position and you know straight away because they've got a smile on their face, they're going to stand it up. Ellie Turner again. Jamie Simmons, 175 pounds for her. Not too shabby off the back of some shoulder surgery. Done. 
45 left on the clock. To Roy, successful in the background. Now, also in the background, Grace Walton successfully lifted 185. 180 for Ellie Turner. Very wide with her grip as well. 195, Grace Walton. The last 10 seconds. Oh, too much. There's so much more in there. Equaling Julia Hannaford. Ellie Turner needed that. And equaling Olivia Smoothie. Now the important thing about that is the tiebreak time is going to be the run. 3.38 is that time to beat from Julia Hannaford. It started off a little bit conservative on that first one, but wow. Bam, bam. Had a plan. It paid off for her. She got rid of those jitters on the first lift and... By the end of that six minute cap, her 190 pounds was smoother than her first lift. Wide grip. <laughs> Won't repeat what she said. There's children watching. As we move on to individual test number five. Eight snatches at 125 pounds into an 800 meter run. Six minute cap. Now this is where we can see the likes of Maddie Sturt, Jamie Simmons do some damage. They might not have the most weight on the bar, but they can cycle a barbell and they can run fast. Oh, we're getting close. We are less than six minutes away. From seeing what is gonna happen to this leaderboard. Fast run here from Ellie Turner. She's only 12 points back from the lead. She's only four points back from Jamie Simmons. Wow, the anticipation. Head judge Michael Berg holding them. Got to be ready. Grace Walton, fast. Wow. Oh, Kayla. And she's off. Ellie's going to have to run to catch her. But he's third, he's on. And this is going to be a great finish. Kaylin Van Ziel was dominant on test one on the assault runner. But how bad do the other girls want it? We go back to the final heat of the men and interview Will Carney. And he says, I really want to go to the CrossFit Games. That's how much. And a recipe for success. Well, thanks to RP Strength. Smooth on the barbell. And honestly, the sprint, it's all or nothing now. You can't conserve any energy. You can't wait any longer. It's got to go. No, and you can't be scared to hurt either. You have to be prepared to go to that dark place. Grace Walton looks like she's doing that. Maddie Sturt. Now, we know Maddie's going to do relatively well in test number six and seven tomorrow. The lift wasn't going to be super heavy. But this is where she nearly, really needs to break out get a top five spot. Take $10 off your first order. Use the discount code TORIAN10. TNT supply, scan the QR code, and grab a TWL bargain. Two down. 
Ellie, eyes on the prize. She knows what it takes to get there, and that's an added advantage. Jamie Simmons knows it, Caitlin Van Seel knows it, and Maddie Sturt knows it. Now, if we're looking at speed of belts, Caitlin Van Zeel, Emily DeRoy, and Grace Walton moving fast. The roar of the judge's hand will tell the story here at Pat Rafter Arena. Grace is really going for this. And she needs to. She wants a spot top three. She needs to empty the tank. Caitlin. And Grace is there as well. Caitlin needs this to bounce back. Sydney Wells is tied with 309 has passed. And Ellie Turner next in line. Then Maddie Stern. Jamie Simmons. Caitlin Van Til. Grace Walton, here's the result. Ellie Turner is doing herself all the favours. Maddie Stern as well. Has she minimised the damage? Jamie Simmons is home. Georgia Brown, Emily Teroy. That's going to be an interesting result for Emily Teroy. talk about when you're together you're equal on the leaderboard but you're out of breath <laughs> thank you, thank you. I think it's just a, we survived that thank you, good job. what an amazing end to competition here day two Jamie's still in contention sitting in third on 252 points Caitlin Van Til will jump ahead now Emily DeRoy will jump down. Grace Walton will jump up from sixth into what we don't know. Exciting times are coming up. But Grace Walton, a great lift and a great result on five. And if you're going to turn the tables and change the narrative of what it looks like on the leaderboard, your destiny's in your own hands. That's right. Tonight was the night to do it. Let's head down to Kayla on the floor. Everyone, don't let Ellie Turner forget her drink. She just said it in my ear. Don't let me forget my drink. I'll, I'll remind you at the end of the interview. But before we get on to that, Ellie, 190, great job. You look like you hit it within about five seconds. What was the plan leading into that test? Um, I knew the numbers that I wanted to hit, and I just had to have confidence that when it came down to it, I would hit it, trust my fitness, and paid off. And how did you game the run to make sure that you were able to execute the lifts? Um, the first run is all about, you've got to give yourself enough time, obviously, to lift, but you don't want to get all the juice out your legs. But that second run, it's just <laughs> literally all you've got, whoever wants it the most. Great job, Ellie. And Caitlin, yesterday we spoke and you said, coming into the individual side, you wanted to test your potential. And where do we feel the potentials are after two days of competition? Um, to be honest, my biggest hole has always been um, a mental game for me. Um, obviously, physical comes into play, of course, but I think for me, I've just been trying to run my own race this weekend, and so far it's paid off, so I'm really happy with myself. And what's the plan for day three tomorrow? Full send! Woo! Full send! Ellie, don't forget your drink bottle! Well done, ladies. See you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Back to test number four. Our final heat of ladies did not disappoint. Grace Walton with some lifts that she needed. Caitlin 
Van Ziel. Respectable heavy lifting from her as well. But Grace Walton really needed to propel herself up that leaderboard tonight. But Ellie Turner sneaking in the last five seconds, 190 pounds. Then on to test number five. No surprises that Caitlin Van Ziel literally ran away with that. She loves a run with that lady. We've got a great cardio base. It's going to pay off. 319 for Caitlin Van Ziel. And important results for the makeup of what we're going to see at the end of tomorrow. Grace Walton, she's put herself in a really good position. Ellie Turner will climb up the leaderboard with that 330. And third place in that heat, Maddie Sturt, Jamie Simmons are still in contention. But Emily DeRoy, what sort of damage has that done to her chances of making the CrossFit Games as one of our top three qualifiers? And what a day, Pip Malone. We have painted the pro pink today and it's just been an incredible atmosphere. And well, what we have seen here on the competition floor in the last couple of hours has really blown my mind on the potential of the athletes here in the Oceania region. Oh, it has not disappointed at all. We just saw some amazing things from our individual males and females on our snatch tests. I'm so excited for tomorrow. We break that up with a bit of Polynesian dance. It really got the crowd involved and just representing the Pacific nations. We're not just Australia, New Zealand, we're also the Pacific nations. And that's an important part of the culture down here in the Oceania region. That's right, it is really important. And I think anyone who was tuning in could see just how passionate we all are down here. It's been a party all day. The team's competition kicked things off first thing of this morning. And we had some pirouette handstands. Lisa Campbell from Torium Black showing us how it's done, but it all came down to that dumbbell snatch. The dumbbell snatch this morning. Yesterday it was a sandbag, this morning it was the dumbbell snatch. The handstand pirouettes really impressed me across all the athletes. Really no problems at all. But 6 4 Army and Victorian Mayhem are the two dominant teams down here this weekend. They're just showing exactly what they've got and the potential they've got to take. Should they make it to the CrossFit Games tomorrow afternoon? And are we going to break the droughts on the podium in the team competition? Sorry, Mayhem. Brandon Swan in particular. Finding it quite difficult yesterday, but a couple of IV drips in his arm and he is good to go. And he really pushed the boundary today and showed what a true competitor he is. He showed all that experience he has. 6 4 Army giving Tori and Mayhem the push that they need to keep propelling forwards. I'm excited to see the fight between those two teams tomorrow, but also the third spot is wide open between a few different teams. Well, that is the important factor heading into tomorrow. We know our top two teams, and they're probably going to continue their progression up that leaderboard. And it's level pegging with Torian Mayhem and 6 4 Army Endgame, but the important one on the bubble right now PFC 3076 and Torian Black. How does it unfold tomorrow? Well, that's going to be the interesting thing. It's a fair hike back to fifth place and CrossFit Concept Crew 260 points. And Jack's Pack is Tamaki rounding out the top 10, coming in as one of our top five qualifiers, but dropping down to that 10th spot. They've got some work to do tomorrow, and team competition is going to kick things off for us tomorrow with test number five. What was your favourite moment of the team competition? Oh, look, too many, but 6-4 Army and Torian Mayhem going neck and neck in that last test of the day for the teams. When we had a look at it on the competition floor, it looked pretty confusing. We are probably explaining it not the right way. A lot of bodies moving, a lot of things happening on the competition floor. But they were level pegging for about halfway through and then Torian Mayhem just started to pull away a little. They were, and Torian Mayhem coming quite close to that event record within seconds, I believe, and just showing their experience. Yeah, about five seconds back, and that's an important thing heading into the competition. And let's have a look at the women's competition. 
An exciting start all the way back this morning, and it was Linda, and certain athletes had a bit of a benefit heading into the dumbbell bench press. Oh, the fight between Emily DeRoy and Ellie Turner on dumbbell bench, Linda, was just outstanding to watch. Ellie Turner really doing what she needed to do today on day two of competition. But this young lady, Emily DeRoy, 22 years old, she's out here making a statement this weekend and I'm here for it. I love it. Seventh last year in the Touring Pro 2022, really showing how it's done in Linda. And then we got to the exciting part of the evening. That's right, some heavy hitters. Grace Walton, she needed good results in Test 4 and 5 tonight. And Caitlin Van Ziel also wanting to stay at the top of that leaderboard. Grace Walton, 185 pounds like it was no one's business, but Ellie Turner sneaking in 190 pounds in the last five seconds. Into test five, Caitlin Van Ziel. Well, she showed what she could do yesterday and she backed it up tonight. <laughs> the standings after five tests for the women. And what a change we have had. Ellie Turner jumping into the lead, Grace Walton into second. Caitlin Van Ziel into third now, Emily DeRoy, a little bit of damage done, but level with Jamie Simmons, Maddie Sturt, dropping back a little after test number four. I knew it was gonna be interesting with 300 points on the line today. I didn't expect that. That is jumbled. I haven't been able to keep up with how jumbled this leaderboard has been, or it's only day two. Yes, I know. And we've got day three tomorrow, and we've got another 200 points with two more tests coming up. More of a jumble coming up, I reckon, as well. Men's competition was just as exciting as well. That it was. This man right here, Jake Douglas, we knew today it was going to be his day. Coming into day two, we got heavy dumbbells, heavy barbells. It's got Jake Douglas's name written all over it. something about having a massive frame and shifting weight, isn't there? There is, but Jay Crouch, Mr. Consistent, he did not disappoint today either. Keeping his spot towards the top of the leaderboard. Jake Douglas, he really needed the results he got today and he earned them. Crowd favourites here. From Tamworth, CrossFit Snake is his affiliate. Bailey Martin, we knew he was going to lift heavy. Riley really looks good under that barbell as well. Riley Smith having a great weekend. Well, we can lift down here in the Oceania yeah. Rift. We've got some really nice lifters, but Jake Douglas with 310 pounds takes the cake for most impressive today. And time fourth for the all-time snatch lifted by a CrossFit athlete in any competition. And didn't they send it on test five? Oh, the men really did not disappoint on test five. All ah. emptying that tank and leaving absolutely nothing to chance. Now standings after five tests for the men, Jay Crouch well in control once again. Bailey Martin putting himself in position. Jay Douglas doing the same. An important result for both of them. Will Carney is still in touch. 15 points back. Riley Smith rounding out. Darcy Hancock, the big mover today into eighth position. And look at that top 10. It is Mr. James Newbury. Look out for day number three. James Wait, Newbury. Oh, James Newbury is just exceptional. I've loved watching him today and I can't wait to see what he can do tomorrow. He was in his element today. Watching him sprint out the end of test number five was one of my highlights of the day. Well, lapping up exactly what the crowd was giving him as well. And he just responded and gave it everything he had and proved what a true competitor he is in his 10th year of competition. Now, heading into tomorrow, we've got two tests coming up. One's going to be gymnastics based and the last one is going to be nasty with test seven. We expect James to do well there as well. Yes, we do. T James traditionally very, very good at body weight movements and 
a rope climb, of course. But I'm really excited to see what some of these athletes on the bubble are going to do. Will Carney in fourth position. I can't wait for that as well. Let's head to our Rogue Don't Weaken moment of the day. No mistakes here from Jake Douglas. Well, don't weaken. There's nothing weak about 310 pounds over your head. Absolutely not. An exciting way for Jake Douglas to finish day two. Day three action coming up here at the Torian Pro. Things are getting really exciting. And we find out in less than 24 hours who our three qualifiers are going to be from the Oceania region at the CrossFit Games later this year. On behalf of Caleb Anfield and Pip Malone, I'm Jeremy Austin. Thank you for your company. We'll see you all tomorrow. Korean Pro, an official 2023 Noble CrossFit Games semifinal, is brought to you by The Wildlife. Discover what you're capable of at thewildlife.com. Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Rogue, don't weaken. And Go Wild, the mobility app designed for athletes.